In the world of Radio Shock Jock, the biggest are Opie and Anthony. These people say shocking things that border on offensive uh, in order to entertain their audience. I refuse to sit here and it think that radio up. has to be nice. Why? Why does radio, out of shock any shock. other medium, have shock to shock. be nice? We are being shock now shock. held to a standard where we have shock to be shock. nice and make people feel shock good. Shock. Go screw! Radio bad boys, Opie and Anthony. Controversial radio personalities, Opie and Anthony. Infamous DJs, Opie and Anthony. Talk show radio hosts, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Radio shock jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Opie and Anthony. Shock jocks, Opie and Anthony. 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 Opie and Anthony. Who thought you were dead? The people you were partying with? Dealers, yeah. Dealers and stuff. And they just threw them in a dumpster in London. Oh. Well, you know, I, I left I, them there. I think it's pretty funny. And no one wants to get rock stars. This is where entertainment is going. I shot my computer. You can't shoot guns in suburbia. And I fully expected the police to show up. This is showing responsibility. Opie and Anthony. I think worse than having sex with a man would be, as you're kissing one, to feel his man hands holding your head <laughs> like the sweat of a man hand right on the <laughs> nape of your neck. This is the worst. <laughs> this is the worst show I've ever been on. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Monday. 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 I don't know. Who needs a reminder? Monday. I know the second that alarm goes off. Hey, it's Monday. Yeah, when the alarm went off this morning... It's one of those weird days where subconsciously I'm thinking, wow, what's that noise? <laughs> Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. The Mondays. The Mondays. You ever do that, though? You don't recognize your own alarm clock, even though it's the same alarm clock you've been using yeah. for the last what? two or three years? What is this? That's a weird noise. Is that the fire alarm? Huh? Did I leave the TV on? I have, I have to set, like, four alarms now. Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, my regular alarm clock and then three on my iPhone that I just kind of pop on at five-minute intervals just in case I, I fall asleep. They just keep going off? Yeah, I'm usually up by the alarm clock one, but that's if, you know, I'm really beat. A little safety backup. Well, Ant, um, great football picks over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kicked ass. Made my football watching um, quite enjoyable. Yeah. Two for seven. You're the two for seven kid. I, You and your stupid animals suck. I was trying to, um, to, to you know, logically uh, reason it out, which names of which teams would beat another name of a team based on what they're named after. And uh, I had a little slump this week. A little. Last week you did four for seven, so I'm thinking, all right, you can do my football picks again. Two for seven. And one of those games, I had to tell you that a Viking cannot beat a Packer. Or yeah. you lost that one, too. I basically said, dude, ugh. Packer, I it basically was, was hinting Packers aren't losing that game. There's no way in hell. Well, that's when I came up with the Packers could throw the Vikings into their machinery, their meat packing machinery, and yeah. it got a lot of a lot of laughs. But um, well, thank God because uh, that was one out of the two wins you had this week. Well, what about the Giants? I, I really thought the Giants were gonna uh, crush the Cowboys. <laughs> well, g- gigantic Giants. people should be able to beat Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with you there, but it didn't happen. It didn't. <laughs> I was very upset about that one. So enough with your dumb idea. We're we're done with you and your football. Yeah, pick. I, I tried for a couple of weeks. I'm just I I stink at Let's it. See, you were six four fourteen <laughs> in two weeks. Nice. Yeah. All you had to do was pick home teams, and you could have done better than that. Well, I I tried a system; it didn't work. <laughs> I'll have to come up with a new system. I, I'm sitting there, you know how you're, you know, you watch, yeah. you you see the scores go by, and I'm just like, oh god, oh oh oh, oh this is just a catastrophe. Loss after loss after loss. Yeah, it was bad. And then it's not fun to watch football anymore. You, you ruined it for me. No, it's a lot of fun watching me just tank. And Sam, who knows nothing about football, by the way, yeah, uh, the big winner this week. The big winner. How did that happen? He doesn't even know how many like downs there are per team, yeah. and he's he's clueless. But he won the football picks by just <sighs> guessing. 
No, yeah, you put nothing behind it. At least I put something behind it. The names of the teams. Right. Versus the other names. Sam, congratulations. Logical. Thank you. Big week for football. You have no That's idea awesome. who won even. Yeah, my picks. Which? All right, who won? Uh, the Giants lost. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Who's the quarterback of the Giants? I don't know who the quarterback <laughs> of the Giants is. Who was the star receiver for the Cowboys? I don't know the answer to that question either. Hmm. Who became the second quarterback to throw for, how much was it, 60,000 yards this weekend? I think, uh, was it Brett Favre? I saw that in the email Travis sent out last night. Oh, God. All right, so. All right, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. Well, congratulations, Sam. You Thank don't know you. nothing about football, but you won this week's uh, football pool, and you're a little richer because of it, right? Yes, I am. What Thank you, Dish Network. It's time to get more TV from your TV. Sign up for Dish Network today. They uh, supply the football picks, and my brother's going to have to come off the bench. It's going to go back to Elmo. Really? Oh, yeah. You, you picked the Giants or the Cowboys? Yeah. Which one? No, he, be, he picked the Giants because they're Giants. Because they're Giants. Arr, giant people squashing Cowboys. You that was a bad pick, though, because Cowboys have got... I told you that. Yeah, but... Listen but, to me. But how are Cowboys going to beat a Giant who could just step on them? I don't know. They did a good job on the Indians. There's a lot more of them. They have guns. <laughs> you know what? My football picks go mm. to Jimmy this week. Really? Yes, he's 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 uh, showing a little knowledge right now. Yeah, a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, a little bit of that knowledge. Everybody knew the two-three yeah. defense was never going to work against a uh, pick and roll. <laughs> <laughs> How was Boston, Jimmy? It was really good, man. It was. Uh, Jimmy did comics come home. Uh, Dennis Leary's thing he does every year. Yeah, for cancer. Uh, Six thousand people. Sixty-three hundred. Yeah, that was wow. the capacity. And, uh it was at Boston University, this new venue they're doing it at, and uh, it was really good. It was a Cam Neely Foundation, and it's weird, like, because Boston's such an aggressive place, and I'm like, this is, you know, are they going to be, are they going to be rough? Are they going to be great? And in between jokes, they were just silent. They were lovely. Yeah, they were lovely benefit people. Oh, no yelling. No, <laughs> one Marine was yelling Semper Fi to Dennis. That was it. Hmm. It was great. It was a good time. Yeah, it was really good. Very good. All right, and how was your weekend there? Ah, great. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice, uh, drunken night on Friday. That was fun. Went out to, uh, to Iggy's, little karaoke bar. Oh, really? Yeah. A little karaoke? A little, had a little bit of fun there. And, uh, a little bit of, uh, Guinness and Jaeger. Ah. Uh -huh. It's nice. Spent Saturday, um, pretty much just, uh, doing nothing, watching bad movies in bed. Just, just trying to recoup. Aren't you, Can't uh. Can't do that anymore. But you're not you're not old enough to be like spending all day in bed. That's like that's like an old person thing to do. No, not after Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty it was pretty uh it was pretty bad. Yeah. No throwing up, which is good. But I had quite the uh headbanger uh on Saturday. And then Sunday I went to the movies for the first time in a long time. I actually went to a movie theater. A movie theater. That's not like you. No, it's not, but it was uh, a good experience. Um uh, no, no problems, and by problems, I think you know what I mean. No problems. Uh, saw that Thirty Days a Night, uh -huh. the vampire movie. It was good, right? Yeah, it was all right. It was one of those. It seemed more like a zombie movie than a vampire movie because mm -hmm. it's like you know you get a bunch of people, uh, they have to hide, and um, then they have a certain amount of time, and then they got to get away. <laughs> it's pretty much. It's pretty much it. Group of people slowly getting picked off, but it was it had a more zombie feel than uh, vampire feel. Vampires were they were pretty creepy. Uh, little kid vampires always creepy, mm -hmm. but um, some nice graphic violence, you know, axing off some heads and stuff. So that was pretty good. Overall, uh, uh, two and a half to three. Give it that. Two and a half to three stars. Yeah, yeah. Out of what? Ten stars on my actually a hundred stars out of a hundred <laughs> stars. <laughs> Do you follow the traditional five-star review? Never. No? Never. I change my star rating based on movies. Sometimes this uh, movie's only got uh, two stars to right. work with. And I say, I give it two stars, and it's great. Well, big surprise. Everyone thinking. The big, uh, the big movie over the weekend was uh, the B movie. Yes. Who saw that coming with all the advertising and marketing? <laughs> and Seinfeld's name on it. Right. I, I I thought I was actually watching the B movie on regular TV over the weekend, and just Opie. realized it was just commercial after commercial after commercial. I think it's just called B movie. I call it the it's B called movie. Called the B movie. 
Uh, Larry King called it yeah, that. Jerry got very angry. Well, that's why we're going there. <laughs> the B movie. The B movie. Beating out that gangster movie. But the gangster movie was already two weeks in. Yeah. Very good movie. I saw that. Huh? American Gangster. You like it? You like yeah, it? Yeah, it was good. It was really yeah. Good. Denzel was great. Russell Crowe was great. Ronnie said, because uh, I heard his review, and he uh, he was saying, it was all right, but uh, they could have left out more of the uh, parts with the uh, the white guy. Because it was kind of cool just to have the black gangster thing going on, and you know, and then they were throwing too much of the cop thing and his family life and all that crap. Yeah, they did throw in a little too much. Yeah. yeah it, was still, it was still enjoyable. Mm. Yeah. All all right. Right. Denzel was great, and uh, one of the guys from The Wire was in it. Oh. Uh, I'll just say there's one scene in it that's really good where, uh, let's just say, one of the gangsters in front of a whole group of people puts the gun against the other gangster's head. He goes, what are you going to do, shoot me in front of all these people? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really, well, really well done. Nice. <laughs> Nothing better than watching somebody collapse on a sidewalk in front of like a bunch of witnesses. Very, very cool. <laughs> and then, of course, we got Veterans Day today. Yes. So big uh, hello to all the veterans out there listening to the Opie and Anthony show. Actually, they're not listening. They're sleeping. No, they're listening. Right now, you think? We're they're always, always on guard. For the, always on duty. Oh, no, that's the Canadians. Mm. You were right, by the way, I think, about that stupid Tom Cruise movie, because we, we saw Redford, Meryl Streep, and Tom Cruise all on Good Morning America together. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, that must not be good. They like, knew. It really hard. And, and what did it make? $300 at the box office? <laughs> they knew it was just a lemon. Yeah, you could tell when a movie's going to suck. Uh, Lions for Lambs, right, or something like that. What's the name of the movie, even? No, yeah, no one even knows. It's uh, it got twenty six percent positive reviews on RottenTomatoes dot com. What did Lions for Lambs? Lions uh, for Lambs. Yeah, the B mm. movie actually got fifty one percent good reviews on RottenTomatoes dot com. Brother Weeze back in the day turned me on to this website. It's the only place to go for movie reviews because they took they take all the movie reviews from all the major newspapers across America and give you one solid review. Like uh, American Gangster, for example, 79% good review on uh, RottenTomatoes.com. And, oh, wow, Dan in Real Life is doing that well. 64% good reviews. And which one did you see at? Uh, 30 Days 30 and Night. 30 Days and Night. 51% uh, good reviews on RottenTomatoes.com. Oh, okay. Uh, Saw 4 getting 17%. Yikes. Yeah, that Saw franchise is strictly for, um, I don't know. Horror buffs. No, you you go on like uh, cable, or you see it in a hotel when it's on there or something. You think? Yeah. And then uh, Fred Claus. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Does it, one of these crap movies have to come out every Christmas? That's the slapstick, wacky Christmas movie. You have to do it every year. Well, and, and especially since Bad Santa, now it's got to be the like the twisted Christmas movie every year. Yeah. This year it's Fred Claus. Fred Claus. <laughs> Fred Claus, uh, 23% good reviews. It looks funny, though. <laughs> Thus far. Vince Vaughn is always entertaining. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, well. Oh, and then I, uh, over the weekend, also watched An Inconvenient Truth. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I saw that because, you know. Oh, no. Here we go. Hubbub and hullabaloo about it. Here we go. Go ahead. Um, I uh, completely believe in global warming now, and we have to do something about this because we're doomed. As a world, and that is based on me watching that movie. Okay. No, oh. <laughs> he's so stupid. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> why, 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 why? Oh, you really thought <laughs> it's guy. my acting chops, Jimmy. Very good. My acting chops. Do you believe there's something going on at least? Uh, yeah, I think there's something going on. I think you know when 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 you have uh, uh, facts like like he had, uh, they took the, you know a bunch of core samples from. Uh, the uh, North Pole, and they're able to dig down far enough where they could actually get air that was uh, on the Earth or over the Earth from thousands of years ago. So they could test it for um, carbon levels and, and whatnot. And uh, it was a lot less back then than it is now. And in recent years, like just about the 1900s and when we started our industrial era and stuff like that, it, it really shot up like ridiculous. They showed the graph line, and it just ridiculously shoots up. Eh, so what? Like, who cares? What uh, difference does it make? A lot of people out there care. <sighs> a lot of people. When they sh when he sh started showing, uh, the and then it contradicts itself. Is it getting cold or is it getting hot? Well, it's kind of cold. No one knows. Is like, that... he t he's talking about a second ice age coming if we don't watch out. And then he's talking about things burning up. But doesn't a second, doesn't the ice age take a really long time, though? No. 
10 years, Europe can be frozen if if uh, uh, the, uh, the polar ice caps melt. No. And screw up with the conveyor system, which is no. the... Uh, yes, the currents in the ocean. No. You know, warm water on top, cold yeah. water on the bottom? Sure. Bunch of cold water comes in, it screws up the flow. All of a sudden, this engine that's kind of turning in the North Atlantic and, and getting warm air, pushing it over Europe, will stop turning. And uh, all of a sudden, Europe, frozen. Just frozen the Europe, ice age. Just the water part? No, the whole land and everything. Crazy. Wow. How, <laughs> how do you get stock in ice skates? Uh, yeah, <laughs> European ice skates. I will sell them for 50 euros. But don't the Europeans have weird ice skates? Don't they have like 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 I don't know like like curly toes on them? Yes, or very curly Hans Christian Andersen like <laughs> right. um, ice skates. Right, where do I get that company? <laughs> I need stock in that company. Bye bye. It's uh, not, it, it was done very well. Uh, Al Gore seems like a nice, sincere, likable guy. I, I really don't have any problems with him. Uh, it showed part of his background and upbringing and stuff as a little farming family. And, and it was done very slick, very well. He did these presentations with huge screens behind him at colleges and um, envir environmentalist meetings and stuff. So it was done very well. Right. I can understand how it got so much attention. It, he added some humor to it, uh, which, you know, you don't think of humor when you think of Al Gore. But it was kind of uh, there were some funny parts. But um did he, you know, he's taking it very seriously. Did they explain why he got so fat or how he got uh, so fat? No. Actually, uh, they did not explain that. <laughs> I think it's called not having to run for office and look uh, presidential. I think it's called supporting the fast food industry. You think he's doing that? Of course. And, and then when he's on tour, I guess, doing all this stuff, uh, the, the speaking engagements, uh, you know, you eat like crap on the road, so... It's probably what he's doing. Free meals on the arm for the rest of his life. You kidding me? He eats oh whatever yeah. He wants. Yeah. Whatever he wants. How nice that's gonna be. It's crap. But then they did. They showed him on planes and stuff, doing a lot of stuff. And those those things I think kick out a lot of exhaust. If you yeah, ask me, they're burning up a lot of fuel. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Here in New York, uh, I personally breathe a sigh of relief because uh, it's cold. Yeah. We were all kind of looking at each other like late October, early November. Eh, it's still. Still pushing eighty every day. What's supposed, this about? It's supposed to be colder, and um, it's it got colder later. See, this is still. But, he would say it's still the effects. And by the way, um, Manhattan will be underwater in um, about fifty years. Fifty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or at least a lot of it. No. Uh, Florida's gone. Uh, that just forget about it. Uh, right up there till to Lake Okeechobee, it will just be gone. Yeah, but um, when when is it supposed to have like? You know, start eroding drastically. Uh, I, I I think it, it'll start going faster and faster. See, you know what happens? The ice caps are melting, Opie. The ice caps, and Greenland is melting. By the way, Greenland's just melting. And when that happens, uh, the sun reflects off of the ice. Reflects so that heat from the sun reflects off the ice, and it's absorbed by water. So the heat gets absorbed by water. The more uh, uh, or the less ice there is, because the ice is melting the less sun's reflected. Makes more water, more heat's absorbed. So it kind of, you know, builds up a head of steam as time goes by. So uh, I'd right. say by the day after uh, tomorrow, we're pretty much uh, done. No, because I go to Florida, you know, ever since I was a kid, and uh, in the last, let's just, nope. call it, let's just call it the last 20 some odd years, a little over 20 years, go to the same beaches, I don't, I don't see much of a difference. No, what you do see a difference in is uh, a snowfall, Things like that. You don't see as much snowfall. Uh, and then they show always showing pictures of glaciers. It's like, this is a glacier from 1908, and here it is today. Yeah. Not the much glacier different. pulled back. What do you want from me? Not much different? <laughs> no, it's big difference. <laughs> oh, great. Big difference. Huge glacier gone. And then they show uh, mountains, you know, snow-capped mountains. And uh, then they show them now. Ah, there's no snow. Eh, well, maybe they didn't feel like uh, having snow in their mountains anymore. We're, we're, Maybe they wanted plant life. One lifetime is a very insignificant amount of time on this planet. And if weird little fluctuations happen in a lifetime or generation, uh, I don't put much credence in the fact that it's the end of the world. You give 10 generations and you start seeing some problems, all right. Now you're talking a, a little flick in time instead of a little speck. We're, people are so self-important. They like Al Gore. He's self-important. Everyone likes to think Armageddon is right around the corner in your lifetime. It ain't. 
Ow. Ow. You're going to be laying in a hole somewhere, rotting away as people play on top of you. It's just going to happen. And, and, and if, if this global warming thing does catch up with somebody, it's going to be a little further off than I think everybody uh, figures. Let's talk to Mark in Ohio. Mark, what's up? Uh-oh. We're talking about the end of the world, oh Mark. God. All right, Mark, what, what do you want? What do you want, Mark? Tell me what you want. Anthony, I don't want Professor Anthony anymore. What do you want? Anything but Professor Anthony. What do you frigging want then? Instead of just me discussing something for a few minutes. I just want it to entertain me. Don't but by what? Me. Give me a friggin' exp- Give me an example of what you want, douche. Go ahead. What do you want? Oh, no, you don't have to be. Hateful. You want a dick joke, huh? You want a dick joke? Will that will that do it for you? Jesus Christ, go bury your head. Go shoot yourself. Jump off a friggin' bridge, you douche. Just leave. In that order. Oh, f- fuck you. Wow. God, I'm sick of these ass. Ugh. <laughs> Enough of him. Christ on a pony. <laughs> okay, forget it. Ah. <laughs> Two Jews walk into a bar. <laughs> We got nothing. What but do you want? What do you want? Ah, dick jokes. We'll do some dick jokes after the break. They own Fine. It. Ugh. The, the bar? Yeah. Yes. God. <laughs> Good. Fans holding up the break sign. Good break. We'll make Mark happy. Well, Mark doesn't understand. If you listen to this program at all, uh, Anthony doesn't believe in any of this crap. So he finally not. finally sees inconvenient truth. It's kind of interesting to uh, a lot of faithful listeners out there. Like, oh. wow, the guy finally saw the movie. What does he think? Because it affected a lot of people out there. Yeah, a lot of people went green because of that movie. No, oh, don't talk about it, Ope. No more. Oh, we don't want to put uh, him to sleep. Douche. Uh, I wish Ant would become a flaming liberal environmentalist. <laughs> that, would <be> <laughs> that would be really <laughs> good. Epiphany? Uh, epiphany? Wouldn't I? You know, a thing epiphany? with an e. Something e. <laughs> <laughs> he gets so into the movement that he officially wants the show to go green, and we yeah, can't we have to go green. We can't broadcast anymore because it uses electricity. <laughs> I ride a little scooter in to work. <laughs> you have to do an Ed Begley Jr. Ed Begley Jr. on a bicycle. Just ride your bike to work every day. Ew, does he ride his bike? Oh, yeah. Of course he does. To where? I love how they say Ed Begley Jr. rides his bike to work every day. What's he doing? He doesn't work. Why isn't Ed Begley? <laughs> to his mailbox and back. No script. <laughs> hey, I think this guy. <laughs> Let's go to Seth in New York. Seth. Hey, what's up, guys? How are uh, you? By the way, uh, to Mark out there, because I'm sure he's still listening, the phones are completely lit because people do want to hear this crap. Oh, I hate Mark. Uh, Seth, go ahead. This Mark would die right now. You're absolutely right. We do want to hear it. But uh, what I think personally is that the seasons are eventually going to change. You know, winter's going to get longer. Summer's going to stay later. Winter's going to be summer. Summer's going to be winter. Yeah, I think uh, what's going on is the rotation of the Earth is is, is happening in such a way that it's just kind of reversing itself. So you know how, like, what Australia has? Where are they right now? In spring, uh, they're heading towards they're spring. Heading towards summer, really. Summer, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna be like eventually heading towards summer this time of year. The Earth how does that work? The Earth is slowly rotating <laughs> it's as it spins, tilting on its axis. It spins like this. Woo, woo, whoa, woo, woo, woo. But as it does that, it's also like. No one's noticed? <laughs> Slightly. No, not yet. Oh. It's happening very, very slowly. I, I agree with that guy. The seasons are just going to change. All right. Because the woo, 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 woo also has just a little bit. A little. It might take about, uh, I'm going to say, a, uh, two more generations of this. That's it? As woo, 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 woo continues. And then uh, it's going to tilt on its uh, axis, okay. Yeah, it slowly just oh, tilted. That's scary. And you got the two axis. Axes. So they're just going to change uh, places. And, and then eventually. Wait, they're just going to be upside down relative to what it is now? Yeah, that's what I mean by that. Oh, upside down. And woo, woo, woo. And then we'll just go back to woo, woo, woo for a few, like, I that's don't creepy. know. creepy. A few hundred years. And then it'll, the process will start again. We'll spin back around. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's we'll Pot Talk that. Monday, everybody. Yes, it is. Uh, and when we get back, we got to stay on this subject because uh, there's a great, great news piece out this morning. Hybrids could take 17 years for consumer to make back extra cost. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So people like Steve and, and Bill Burr can get their hybrid car. Uh, and I, we can explain that. It's just, you know, they're taking advantage of the people that of are, course they are. Are, are trying to 
do the right thing. It's also uh, what? We got free uh, ringtone Monday mania. Oh, Might give you a few ringtones today. It's also Feel Good Story Monday. We got that right in front of me. The Feel Good Story of the day is right, right here. And also, we're going to give away $1,000. What's the sound? Do we remember? Uh, yeah. It you was, had it. It was me, right? Yeah. Which one? It was that oh, fun it was one. That one. It was okay. fun. I heard it on a promo over the weekend, and I was laughing. All right. Uh, sometime between 7 and 7.30, we're going to play this. Yep, 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 and yep, yep, that, yep, yep, yep. Be the tenth caller, eight seven seven two one two O and A, and you will win one thousand dollars from your pals, Opie and Anthony. Yeah. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. On a Monday. Yeah. What's up, veterans? My pop was a veteran. I I'm am. with you. I'm with you. I miss my dad's uh, friends. I got to go see them. The old codgers. You're with them in, in spirit. What? Not, you know, you weren't a veteran yourself. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Just, I'm with you. The only, I think the only reason uh, there's no veterans or, yeah, no one that was in the military in, 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 in our world, in our radio. Like our, yeah. Our, microcosm. Our circle here is because we were born in a lucky time in between wars and stuff. Hmm. What's up, vets? I got to go to Kings Park and check out uh, the boys at the VA. Ah, yes. Not the VA hospital, the uh, veteran, what are they called? Uh, VFW. VFW, that's what yep. I meant to say. Sit around and have a few beers and, and listen to them make fun of every single race. <laughs> Amazing. Like, like real men do. Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll make black jokes right in front of the black vets. I, I've, I've, I've said this many, many times. Well, I guess they've been through stuff that's a little more serious than just a uh, couple of jokes. The Italians make fun of the Irish there. The Irish make fun of the Italians. The Polish guy's the bartender, and they all make fun of him because yeah. you know, he's stupid. <laughs> it's amazing what goes on at the VFW halls. Freedom of speech, I say. Of course. And they exercise it thoroughly in those places. By the way... I was catching up on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm over the weekend. Love, love, love that show. Yeah. We don't talk enough about it. They did a whole show where Larry said uh, the N-word about four or five times. Really? And I was just like, wow, what balls. What balls? You get a lot of balls and you got that Seinfeld money. Just look at Kramer. <laughs> now, if we say it right now, they'll dump out of it. Yeah. Even though we're trying to do an entertaining, uh, you know, program for everybody. Yeah. Why not? Why, if, if we came up with a way to say it, why couldn't we just say it on the radio? Because we'd mean it. <laughs> <laughs> People we, get very offended. Well, Words we're, hurt. Well, we're looked at differently. I was, I was, it, it just came up again, because we've discussed this many times on our show, that you're just looked at differently if you do a radio show where the main focus of the radio show is to entertain and make people laugh. Mm -hmm. But if all of a sudden you know, one of our jokes goes uh, wrong or we say the wrong word, we're fired. Yeah. Why isn't Larry David uh, fired for having a whole episode uh, where it kind of revolved around the N-word? Um, why Why does South Park uh, continue to do what they do without any real problems? Good, good question. So effed up. I have when no idea. When is that going to change? Never, ever. And then ever. I'm thinking, maybe we could start our show every day with some massive disclaimer. Just a massive, this is what we do. How come for some reason disclaimers don't work in radio? That's what I'm saying. It is so effed up to me that entertainment yeah. in general, you could get away with stuff if you're doing a TV show, if uh, you're doing a movie, if you're doing a cartoon. The following program contains graphic language. You know, that, like, all of a sudden, you're freed up to say a few things that you know, might be off color. I think we're in our own genre. I really do. You uh, explained in an article recently, like... Uh, when you do a talk show, you're in the uh, news talk genre, so you have to have a little more responsibility. Yeah, there's got to be this, uh, y you got to be like a, a newscaster and have that type of uh, ethics. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't wash with me. Can't just be entertainment. What about the old days when they used to put on radio shows and you'd, you know, have a script and read it? And Those people aren't held accountable for, for what they said. 
Because they were playing characters. Yeah. Maybe if we did characters like Mr. Amis. Right. Oops. <laughs> no, even if we do that in character. Yeah, I know. We'd be screwed. We're, we're screwed. It is just, I was just thinking about it over the weekend. It's just so weird. I think yep. we're in a very, very small group of radio shows, a tiny little group of radio shows that doesn't really, mm -hmm. we don't fit in any categories. We don't fit yeah. in the news talk category, obviously, although we do show our intelligence every once in a while, and we'll talk about news and things that are going on in the world, you know? Yeah, and then, and get zzz, and then, zzz from the emails. And, and then uh, what is the other phones. category in radio, really? Wacky morning shows that are so stupid and silly, we're not in that genre. And even they can't say anything. And then the rest of them are just playing music and doing, like, top ten lists. Yeah. And the Q of the D. <laughs> we're a sexy show, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're sexy. <laughs> I was telling these guys during the break, maybe uh, maybe uh, Whack Bag or one of the fan sites could help us out. Uh Everyone's doing their we're going green thing mm -hmm. these days. Yeah. I was watching Biggest Loser recently, and they had to have their, uh, their green episode where everything was revolved around, you know, green, yes, recycling. Gr green is a very big catch word right now. And turning off the electricity and just eating organic food. And I was telling Anthony, we have to do our official green show, whatever that means. We don't, we don't know what that means yet. Do we like to do this in front of everybody? Like, we, this is an idea. Hash we, it out. We just don't know how we're going to make it our own yet. Mm -hmm. We have to give it the Opie and Anthony spin, obviously. And, and it would be pretty silly to do our green show as we talk through, you know, these things that are giving us all brain cancer. Microphones and a lot of power coming out of the <laughs> transmitter of this thing. You know, it takes a lot of juice to keep these things going. But I'm thinking we could do our own green <clears> show. I should turn my lights off more. That's what I could do. I could turn my lights in my house off a lot more. Yeah. I have I have giant floodlights that come on and just make the outside of my house glow like it is it is made of a light bright. <laughs> Why? Because I want it to look palatial. Oh. Yeah. It's just they're just floodlights that shine on my house. And I drive up, like, uh, last night I'm coming back from the movies, and they're on a timer, you know. So I make the corner, and I go, wow, that is really lit up. No reason whatsoever. All the other houses, dark. Mine's got to be lit up like it's uh, like the alarm just went off at a POW camp. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn down the heat and close my windows. Um, my thing is to keep my windows open and keep the heat on so I get some fresh air coming in. I don't like the heat in the bedroom. I, I like that turned off cuz uh, I like I like the bedroom being cold cuz in the middle of the night with the blankets and stuff you could kind of regulate your temperature. But I'm I, I, the the lights, I have a problem turning lights off. Like I'll go to bed and then shut the light off in the bedroom and look and go, "Oh boy." I just see a glow coming from downstairs. I know I forgot to turn the light off. Do I get up and turn it off? No. Well, I'll just let it burn. Well, that doesn't, burn, baby, burn. That doesn't use a lot of electricity anyway. So. does all the time. Nah. Big floods Let's, in the ceiling. Let's go to Robin. Horrible. I'm a waste. Are you scared of the dark? Um, yeah. I'm not scared of the dark. You are, though. I prefer a little bit of light. Why? Because I like to see my surroundings. That's a yes, by the way. Of course. No, um, no, no. I'm, I'm not afraid of the dark, per se. It's not like this. I sit in fear. I like having... Uh, if it's dark, I'm not going to freak out. I'll go to sleep. But I prefer to have a tad bit, like a TV-type light on or something like that. Oh, I like it pitch or black. Or a distant light. Pitch black when I sleep. See, How do you that? sleep with a TV on? You've been talking about this for years. Well, Anthony the sound's off. And a lot of time, I'll put a music uh, channel on. And uh, let that play. And, but there's a little light from the TV. I like that. If I hear a little sound, I don't want to be creaking my neck wondering what the hell it is. Know what the problem? In the darkness. Know what the problem is with those trippy uh, stations? They got a few on XM. They got a few on regular radio. They got a few on uh, the TV choices, right? Yeah. And you'll get into a nice groove. It's real mellow, almost like massage music. And you hear the water and the, the nice piano and very light guitar. And all of a sudden, this is how they wreck it. You're listening to the sounds of the season. Ugh. Right in the middle of it, they just will have to make their stupid announcement what you're make what you're listening to, oh, and no. it takes you right out of that dumb tr whatever trance you were in by listening to this music. Now I'll just put on a rock station or something, and like turn it really low, but go to sleep to that. All right. So and, I, and it, it's off the TV, so there's no DJs; it just plays consistently. Let's go to Rob in New York. Rob, what's up? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. hey. 
I love this show. I've just had an epiphany myself as I'm driving to work. Mm-hmm. We have atom smashes. We have satellites in space that could watch you pick your nose. And we're now at the apex because we've reached woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, the combination of the Look, rotation man. and... <laughs> First of all, it's Pot Talk Monday, but I'm trying to explain why the seasons are slowly changing. And it's because we're still doing the woo, 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 woo right. as an Earth. But there's also a... As the as the Earth itself is slowly turning flipping upside over. down, flipping right. To do is watch Discovery Channel and we're moments from death at any point. Oh, I know. I, I gave up on uh, the Discovery Channel. I understand that it's a little weird out there, but I don't want to know how weird. That's how I. Uh, that's how I roll. Thank you, I'm sir. Few, I'm one of the few veterans that's got to report to work right now. I'm at Randall's Island. So, guys, have a great oh. show. I enjoy the show. You guys are the best to keep my mornings going. Oh, thank Gotta you, Got to work sir. for it. It's his day. Have, have a good day, guys. All right. Uh, hey, can we play Drew Boogie Steve's hybrid remix? This is very, very oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Then we'll get into that hybrid story we teased before the break. Hit it there, uh, E-Rock. Day? All right, we got the idea. <laughs> Thank you, Drew Boogie. Uh, really fast, we got Louise on the line here. Uh, Louise, what's up? Right, I'd like to know the phone number I'm supposed to call after I hear this morning sound. Ah, all right, you got a pen down? Um, I'm visually impaired, but I use a slight oh. silence when I get off. All right, I didn't Aw, how'd that happen, darling? I, n- I never had eyesight. I was born without it. Oh, would you rather have been born without it or have it and lose it? Oh, that... I- I'd it, rather have been born without it because I don't know what it's like anyway, so. That is so oh. weird. Mm. I hate these conversations. Wait, are you visually impaired or totally blind? Totally blind, that's what I mean. What okay, do you see? Yeah, just big difference. You see just like blackness, nothing? No, I don't even see nothing. But she doesn't know what yeah. seeing is. Nothing is black. Do you even understand Miss. the concept of seeing? No. Do you see something? Do you see stuff in your dreams? I, I, I see in my imagination, yeah. <laughs> Boy, things must look really screwy. Oh, how yeah. cool would that be? It's like yeah. a sci-fi movie. <laughs> I just picture everything all goopy and not really together, running. Yeah, but even if I don't see, I, I go out and do for myself as if I never, you know, uh, I never lost. God love you, dear. How, how do you picture? How do you picture things like uh, when someone says the color red or hair is blonde? What does your mind do? Well, if it's um. If I hear red, it reminds me of, you know, like red if you hurt yourself and you turn red, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. It's more of an emotional thing. How, did, uh, kinda... how, how did the people around you explain uh, black people? Um, they punch her in the face. <laughs> oh, God. No, I never really got into that conversation. I, what, uh, I, would, I would like the phone number. Yeah, uh, we know. We're interviewing you. Would you, um, wait, what are your ears okay? <laughs> Pushy blind. Yeah. Do you, uh, do, do you think you have a good understanding of what people look like based uh, on, you know, the years of just kind of touching and. No. You, you really don't think you have a good idea, a good line on it? No. Nope. Do you make mental pictures in your head? I make kind of, you know, like, uh, if I feel different materials, I think of it as, like, different flavors, you know, like vanilla and chocolate, you know. Wow, you really got to pull some plugs and reroute things, huh? Yep. Jesus. Mm-hmm. So yep. You, 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 you feel material, but then you got to kind of equate it to things that you know, like taste and smell and things like that. Right. Boy, that is weird. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. And you want the number so you can uh, win. Oh, yeah. I would like to use that money right now. Oh, what, what could you use a, a grand for? Well, I'm going on a, on a trip to um, Rochester. And Why? I bought a ticket, and it's expensive. I'm seeing some friends. and I'm No, you're not. You're not seeing anybody. 
Well, I call it a seeing, you know, like I'm visiting. Well, what is, All right, you're what is, visiting friends. Why doesn't your family just turn you around in a circle for an hour and then go, here you are, you're in Rochester, enjoy. And then just get on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, why Why go anywhere? Oh, I, lo I, I go out, it doesn't matter, blind or no blind. Yeah, but, yeah. but why? You can't really well, see anything. You, know, you, you don't want to stay. Even if you have eyesight, you realize uh, that going from city to city, why bother? Yeah, why bother? Because it's the same crap. When we were growing up, it used to be cool to go uh, to different cities because you saw actually different things. You got to eat at different type of restaurants. Now it's one, the same strip malls in every city. They ought to take her, like, instead of taking her to place, just sit you on the porch and then oh, go no. vroom with a fan in her face. Yeah, vroom. Here. Ooh, yeah. yeah. We got the house. top down. I'd rather go out and do things like anyone else. Mm, yeah, well, well, fortunately. Yeah. Those yep. little windows to the world are a little dirty. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, you know, the world is, a, the world is you know. It's, All right, good. It's, it's, it's darkness and nothingness. So, I are you married? Nope, I'm single. Single. How old a gal are you? I'm 56. 56? Did you ever have a date? Well, I do have, I, I do go out with different guys. Yeah? Yep. Do you give it up? N nope. <laughs> no, what do you mean, no? Have you ever? No. You've you never ever? had sex? No. You what? ever ridden a horse with an elephant man face guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why well, haven't you had sex? I don't want to have it because there's too many diseases going around. Doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to see yourself falling apart. Why don't you just enjoy yourself now? Go out and get laid. You're 56. It's blind enjoy stalker it. Patty. <laughs> no, I just want to stay a virgin the rest of my life. Really? Hey. Are yep. you? Are do you like guys or girls? I I like I like. I, I like anybody, really. You, you should know, try it. You might, you might catch one in the eye, and all of a sudden I can see. <laughs> uh oh. Is there any hope uh, that you'll ever see? No, I don't. I don't know what the so. technology is all about. Are you a big oh, girl? Are you? Am I what? Are you a heavy girl? Slash fourteen. Oh, I love to eat. I'm about three hundred. Wow. Yeah. Are you lying or no? Huh? Are you lying or no? Yeah, down right now. She can't get up. <laughs> no, I'm not lying down. Oh, I'm okay. sitting right on a chair. Now, are you really three hundred pounds? Huh? Are you kidding? Are you serious? I'm not. I'm. Ki I'm not kidding. Three hundred pounds. So you eat a lot. Uh, Everything that won't get hey, up and walk. You ought to watch what you eat. Uh oh, sorry. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. How do you know you're not eating uh, like uh, rotting food or poisonous food? That's mm. just like having sex. I have a sense of smell. If it doesn't smell good, I don't eat it. Well, uh -oh. you should use that same uh, advice. No wonder she doesn't have sex. <laughs> you should, yeah, you should use that same logic when it comes to dating. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> All right, that's about that. Oh, you're fine. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the, the number for the contest uh, starting at uh, 7 o'clock. Right. Um. Mm -hmm. oh, you lost it. No, I got it right here. No, we, uh, we have it. Okay. 1-800. 1-800. N. And you mean the number six on the phone. Yeah, but I thought wow, I'd do it easy good. for you. N. Yeah. O. Oh. E. E is in everything? Yep. Yeah, which is yeah. what you eat. Y. Yeah. yeah. N O E Y. E. E. S. 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 S is in some. Leave the yeah. last S off for C. <laughs> All right, why don't you uh, uh, read the phone number back to me, please? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't understand that. Right. You know, like when it's letters, I gotta hear it in numbers. One eight hundred. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How do you? Hold on, hold on. How, how do you? Uh, how do you remember? Like, if, how do you just memorize a number if you hear it real quick? Is your memory that good? Um. Yep. Yeah. All right. One eight hundred. How do you yeah. do that? How do you do this letter? And, Wait. How do you do? Uh, one eight hundred. N. N. O. o E, e Y, y e, e S F S F Right N O N E Y S N O E Y E S S N O E Y E S S Right And we have a uh, we have an alt, uh, we have another number Yeah 877 877 C C A a N N T T uh, S 
S E E E. E. Right. Those are the two numbers you could use to win the contest. Oh, either one of them. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, N-O-E. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Y. Yes. F. Right? I forgot an E. e. Well, excuse me? You forgot an E after the Y. N-O-N-E-Y-E-S. <laughs> right? Yes. S. Yes. And is, that, is there another letter? No. no. That was it, I believe. And then what's the other one? Well, there's um, a, there's a third number, one eight hundred. One eight hundred. D. D. U. U. M. M. B. V. B. 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 Oh, D U M B. Um, C. C. U. Yeah, that number is a uh, private line. Op. N. I don't know if that's one, good two, anymore. three, four, five, six. Oh, that's I all. I'd rather use the first one. The well, no, this yeah. one's good too because I got the seven. It's a one eight hundred D U M B. Yeah. C U N M N N. Yeah. Yeah. That's seven. N. And that's it. You don't need the last letter because you only need seven. So that one's good too. Okay. What? You leave the last letter off for taking off the air. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, oh, and there's a fourth number if you're in Canada. You might want to use that number. What? One. One. Eight seven seven. Seven. P. What? P. 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 R. R. I. I. Z. Z. E. E. P. P. I. I. G. Did you say P I G? Yes. Yeah. One eight seven seven fries P I G. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, that's a need. That's easier. Of course. Yeah, that's an easy. <laughs> one. Use that one then. Right. One eight seven seven fries pig. That's it. Right. <laughs> I think I'd use that one. I bet you should. But you yeah. wouldn't use the others. Um. Well, I can remember them more better. I can remember that one more better. More better. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> More better. All right. The other, the other was, has too many letters involved in it. Sure. <laughs> More better. Oh, better. It's not more worse, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay, thanks a lot. All right. Or, or you can make it very easy, uh, Louise. Yeah. And just uh, call the number you called. I mean, um, <laughs> one, two, one, eight, seven, seven, two, one, two, K Rock. Uh, yeah, you could use that one that as well. That one might work. What? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I know. I'm. I'm ready to just gouge my own eyes out at I this know, point. You're giving me a lot of numbers. I think you're killing me today. No. Well, no, or no. you could just use the one you used. No. Or if it's easier, you could use. Uh, Prize uh, pig. Well, that's yeah. that's very that's that's an easy one to remember. But I would suggest you just use the one you called. The what? You mean the one? The one eight seven. Why is this happening? Shut <laughs> <laughs> up! I can't take this. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. You're torturing me. Do you have a redial on your phone? Yeah. Which in your case is one, two, three, four clicks down? <laughs> yep. Okay, well, why don't you just use that, man? Yeah, use that. I have a redial, yeah. Not a speed dial, but I got a redial. Why? All right. Why? Well, why? We're going to start the contest in a few minutes here, so good luck to you, Luis. Uh, Thank you. Do, do you listen to the Opie and Anthony show? I have it on right now. <laughs> yeah, you're uh -huh, yeah, not really a fan. But in general, do you listen, not just now? No, I have it. I have it on a lot. Yes. What do you like about the show? It's nutty. That's why I love it. Nutty. All right. <laughs> nutty. Yeah, that's how we like to promote it. That's well, nutty. At least, at least the uh, at least the uh, the bus signs are working. Because you know, <laughs> that's it. what we say. We're it. nutty. We're nutty, and it's got these guys like with, each with a handful of nuts oh. and their <laughs> eyebrows raised. Like we don't know what happened. Yeah. Uh, wait. Uh, You're nutty too. You might as well just have two walnuts in your head. <laughs> Dan is giving me painted a, blue or something. <laughs> that macadamia nut just <laughs> staring blankly out in space. <laughs> uh, Two lid covered macadamia nuts. Wait, well, I would call you an ice cream soda. That's what I'd call you. All right, listen. Why? Uh, Than is giving mm. me another phone. I, I, um, mm. Louise, I apologize. I'm getting another phone number here. Okay. One. One eight seven 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 eight seven seven one eight seven seven. Uh, the letter I. I. The letter A. A. 
Uh, letter M. Uh, yeah, letter M. M. Letter F. F. Letter A. A. Uh, let's see. What is? I can't read his handwriting. Uh, 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 letter T. T. And we finish it off with another T. There you go. Yeah. He said, I am fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to get it after 20 minutes. Jesus. All right. Well, good luck to you there, uh, Louise. Thank you. Godspeed. All right. Godspeed to you and your Louise. Yeah, Louise from wherever. Mm. We got to take a quick break, and now we didn't get to do our hybrid story. We'll do that after the uh. break. Uh, but uh, we're about to start the contest between uh, pretty much now and 7.30. Someone out there is going to win $1,000. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> You're checking out Opie and Anthony. I'm reading, nice. I'm reading Slash's book. Can't put the damn thing down. I think it's just called Slash. And uh, what I'm learning is that uh, when Guns N' Roses became huge... Axel stopped talking to the band. Really? That was it? Slash is admitting a lot of stuff in this book. Like, completely stopped talking to the band, basically. I'm at, up to a part. Uh, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 come out, and they barely had contact with uh, Axel. And they only wow. saw him on planes and on stage. And they held it together as long as they even did. Slash said, yeah, surprised. he was surprised how long they were able to hold it together. It's a pretty damn good book. He's being pretty honest with a lot of things in this book. What a tool. I wonder what the hell is wrong with him. Well, it continues to this day. Yeah. And then I, uh, he was talking about how Axel is very self-destructive. Well, of course. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, eh, maybe I should <laughs> pass this uh, chapter. Move on <laughs> to something else. No, don't talk. pass it. <laughs> Please read it thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wow. I can relate to this a little bit. Sabotaging his own success. And all oh, this stuff. And I'm like, was he? Oh, boy, maybe I should read that chapter again. Yeah. Maybe this would be a good chapter to read slowly. You should print it out in a huge font and wallpaper it on your walls at home. <laughs> uh, he's pretty much saying that Axel was just a complete dick. Really? Pretty much without saying it. He goes, ah, and then he's polite. He's like, I'm sure Axel has his own version of what happened that is just as uh, important as mine. But here's the true version. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's basically I'm what sure he's got at. his. Uh, let's say hi to Carol in Brentwood. What happened to Jimmy? Carol, what's up? Oh, he's in the bathroom. Aww. Carol, what's up? Hello. Hey, Carol. Hey, I'm here. Hey, what's going on, Carol? How are you? Well. I'm doing okay, just waking up, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was waiting for that funny kind of like weird sound on the radio so that I can call in for the, the book. Ah, right? big fan of the uh, show, I see. Kind of. What do you mean, kind of? <laughs> I can listen, I can. How long have you been listening to the show? With, K with K Rock? No, I've been no. Off for a long time. No, 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 no. Don't lump us into the whole K Rock thing. <laughs> Uh, we love being on K-Rock here in New York, but Opie and Anthony, we're our own thing for many, many years. How long have you been listening to the Opie and yeah. Anthony show? For a while, on and off, and then you guys were gone for a little while there and came back, right? Yeah, but are you listening more because of the contest? Y may I say yes? Okay. And, may I? And no, here's the big... Not. Carol, here's the big question. What? Uh, yeah. Contest is going to end soon, I believe. When the contest yeah. ends, what are the odds that you'll continue listening to the Opie and Anthony radio show? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. You guys are funny. Keep me going. Yeah. Get me up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you. We didn't play the sound yet. Okay, then I'll keep on listening. Yeah. All right. You do that. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah. Bye-bye. I, I really believe you. Bye-bye. <laughs> what station do you think she goes back to after this? Oof. Does she do a little wake up with Whoopi? Uh, no. I think it's more of a light. Does she listen to Jim Kerr, that bore? Mm-hmm. On Q104, classic rock that really rocks. Here's the news in between Zeppelin records. <laughs> and we might make a funny about Britney Spears. Yuck. Uh, hybrid uh, cars. Here we go. This is what we were supposed to play. And yeah. We got a little distracted. As average gasoline prices rise above $3 a gallon, drivers are turning to hybrid vehicles as a way to save money mm. at the pump. 
Hybrids now make up 2% of the vehicles on the road. Ooh. But before buying, drivers need to remember that hybrids cost more. High-end technology, like the battery, can add $2,000 to $7,000 to the price tag. And recent tax credits for these vehicles have started to end. Ah, see, we were just talking about this with uh, Bill Burr, who moved out there to Hollywood mm -hmm. and uh, got himself a hybrid vehicle, driving it around. And I don't know, I was trying to have a little discussion with him, but he gets a little, he gets a little edgy. Yeah. And uh, he gets very defensive about his well, uh, hybrid vehicle and how he's going green and saving the uh, planet and saving money on gas. Well, uh, you know, when uh, people first started buying hybrids, they actually were saving money. Yeah. Now, if you buy a hybrid, you're just doing the uh, the ultimate. You're trying to save the environment, but you're not saving yourself any bucks anymore. No. That's awful. <laughs> it really uh, is. It, it just, takes how long? What are uh, the stats there? Well, this is the stat right here. The Wall Street Journal and car researcher Edmonds compared hybrids to conventional cars driven 15,000 miles a year with gas at $2.79 a gallon. It found that it could take 17 years to make up the $3,700 extra cost for the best-selling Toyota Camry hybrid compared to the conventional gas-powered Camry. The popular Honda Civic has a hybrid version, but it costs nearly $1,500 more than the regular Civic. It would take four and a half years to make up the difference in price. So obviously yeah. you're not saving a damn thing because no one keeps their car for 17 years at this point. No. So. And uh, Steve from Bayshore, I guess, commenting on the, uh, there are 2% of them on the road. He says that the hybrid cars represent 79% of all vehicles parked in rest stops. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, where were you? Sorry. What happened? Just in the office. With the, the boys? Uh, no, just with Jeff to take Tom. it. Tom. Uh, just having a fun chit chat. About the, the, the fart word? Just silly. Just silly. Was it about that? Yeah. We're trying to do something that we think would be fun radio, but we have to change the name of the contest. Which yeah. Is just, just... Which is just so ridiculous and silly. Well, I. Well, I can't even be bothered with this crap anymore. We'll deal with it off the air. Yeah. We're just chit-chatting. <laughs> Let's deal with it off the air. Well, it's just a little frustrating, that's all. I understand. We have a great concept for a little trivia contest, but we need to call it what it is. I have a trivia contest. Who's the most ungrateful bitch on the planet? And the answer, Harry's girlfriend. God, does she suck? I don't know what you guys are on, but I'm just going <laughs> to smash her face. What's wrong with Harry's girlfriend? She dumped him. She's a, he's a prince, and she dumped him because he didn't want to do her birthday party. He didn't want to go to her birthday party. He went to a soccer match instead of her birthday he's party. He's going to run Soccer's England. Soccer's very important. Who gives a crap? God he's bless going to run England. Soccer, very important no, to them. No matter what they do, no matter what you do as a guy, so, it's never enough. For these bra, it's never. Uh, there's always wait something. You you are reacting right now like you are him, and and she just did this to wait. you. Wow, you really get caught up it in that. It annoys me so much. Wait, yeah. I, I gotta take her side. What's ooh? I'll tell you what's wrong. She's with being it. catty. He, it's he, not, he blew off her birthday. God, he's, he's a prince. There's, that's <laughs> he one could run England. <laughs> Is nothing enough for these chicks? He's, she could be a princess. He's never going to run England. Maybe he won't, but the point is, he's still, he's an heir Maybe to the throne. Maybe he can go to her Maybe he's not some royal, one of these people that loves the royals. Well, technically he's not because the Duke of Windsor has to talk to the Lady of Spencer. Shut up. <laughs> Who cares? It's all incest. And by the time it gets down to Harry there, you know, this guy, <laughs> Prince Charles is what, in his 60s now, and he, there's not even a chance he's winning it, you know, uh, going to be running England anytime That's soon. the Crypt Keeper just won't lie down no. and take the dirt nap already. How old is Prince Charles? That poor guy has been waiting his entire life to run England, and he's still running. No, they don't even run it. They sit there and, and, ruff, 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 and no one listens. They got a prime minister that runs things. I, you know what? I God bless this uh, bra that yeah. she doesn't go for the for that crap. She's a dope, and she's she's a dope because why is she a dope? She probably is, has some royalty in her own family or something. Mm, yeah, she's it, probably no slouch. It's just the idea that this guy, like the life you can have with this guy, and it's just like they always find something. What? It's not like he punched her in the mouth. The life she could have, hanging out with uh, an unfaithful old English uh, troll. And then being wrapped around a pole in a tunnel in France. That's what I'm talking about. 
I like it. Not enough with that anorexic too. Yeah. She's probably puking out the window. That's why she died. She was vomiting that nice dinner Dodie just bought her. I have to look skinny. We get it. We get it. Could you put your head back in? Your crown is sticking out. And stop strapping it around your chin. You look like an ass. We know. <laughs> the people's princess. We've heard. The people's princess. She was a weak woman. No, she was. I love how they make her look like she was this big, you know, strong she's so woman. Strong. Because she stayed in the marriage and stuff. No, you're you were a weak woman that just stayed, stayed with that. Stayed in the marriage for all those years. Must get rid of the landmines. Up. I love the fact that he was in a bar and he seemed to a $5,000 bar bill that night with a bunch of his friends. Well, good. He's a drunk. Good boy. Well, <laughs> love Harry. She Sounds was like Friday night. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> Prince <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> she was fed up with Harry's Playboy lifestyle and was miffed he had opted to skip her 22nd birthday party last month for a rugby match in Paris. What was she going to do on her birthday? What would have been fun? What's more fun than the jet setting lifestyle they Wait. live? So, mm -hmm. was you have cake for her? If you blow off your girlfriend's birthday, you expect her to completely understand? No. Oh. I'm Jim Norton. <laughs> let, let, me, let, let, me, let me explain the differences. Yes. I don't run a country. <laughs> I'm not a prince. He's, yeah. He's probably an ass. I'm sure he is. He's a rosacea-faced idiot. Those red <laughs> cheeks, it's like they're terrible looking. Yeah, it's very English. Yeah, just rosy red slappable yeah. cheeks. He's got very um, uh, Pink Floyd the Wall-ish kind of look to him. <laughs> However, the, the, to, to date that guy, it's like amazing how they always find something. No matter what place in your life you're in, there's always a woman who's just going to, hey, beep, 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 hey, beep, beep. they're going to find something that you're not doing. Which birthday was it? How old? Her 22nd. It's not even a, a, a oh, monumental Okay, I was thinking one. of a milestone birthday, yeah. 21. Who cares? Sweet 16. Ah, you should have blown off your chick's birthday. When you're you guys prince, are insane. What are you going to do? Take her out? To, he probably would have seen her after or whatever, mm -hmm. but he was always out of the country. Mm -hmm. Could you come back for my birthday? For what? What are we going to do? missed my birthday. Yeah. Up. A bunch of her and her dumb friends kvetching. <laughs> Ugh. Good for Harry. He doesn't like you. You leave him. Yeah. What do you think I should? And then she'll go after him. One of her friends. Oh, that's what he should do. He, sh he should run through all of her friends <laughs> and leave something on every one of their faces. <laughs> Go say hello to her. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. I would run through. I would actually get her. I would have one of my people steal her phone book, and I would check off everyone on that list that was female. <laughs> and even a few males if they were related to her, just to straighten them out. Okay, tell her what I did to you. Beat it. I say good for her that she's not uh, going for all that horse ass, all that crap. Nah, she's horse another, ass. Another example of a chick. No, it's not. Uh, nothing's good enough. And I can see if he was. A it's a birthday. You exactly. can't blow off your your chick's birthday oh, ever. That, whether you're like the in line to be the prince uh, or, He's the, or prince, the king, she's gonna have to get used to that because he does a lot work, of traveling. Or if you work in a deli, it's the same uh, thing. It's not. You can't blow off a chick. Why? Birthday, I, my ever. birthday's irrelevant to me. Who, I, I, dinner's nice. I agree with you. Dinner's nice. But he was out. It's not like he just went out. He was out of the country doing something. She thought he should not have done what he wanted to do in another country. And, and when he could have taken her out the week after. I'm sure he sent her a Rolls Royce or something. It's, who cares about her birthday? <laughs> like, what, what are we going to do on your birthday? Let's go out to dinner. Okay. And then what? Uh, I opened the gift that you got me. That's more expensive than any gift any guy will ever get me. <laughs> oh, good for you. How about I fly on the private plane somewhere? You want that? Nothing's good enough for them. No matter what stage of your life, they're always going to snivel about something. You don't do this. <laughs> wow, what happened over there? Absolutely just, nothing. Something yeah, yeah, going yeah, on, Had a great weekend you're in a good, my good, good place? Yeah, we were in a very good place. But we, if you decide you're going to, like, you know, um, go out with a girl or, or get married and stuff, there's just things you, 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 you shouldn't blow off. Uh, it's, I mean, you could live as a, as a single playboy, and then you, you could go do whatever the F you playboy. want. Playboy. But if you're, but if you're, yeah, if you're in a relationship, you can't blow off a chick's birthday ever. So he should have said that I can't go to another country and do this, which is what he was doing. Instead of say I'll take you out in a couple of days. Where, I look at my own birthday. I don't care about my own birthday. So why would I? Why not? Like you know what I'm saying? It's like it's not like if I expect you to be at my birthday, like just make sure you're there, and then I don't do it for you. That's different. But I mm. could care less if you're busy on my birthday. Right, we'll do it a couple of days. Right. It's a big deal. Just mm. a chick. Just just a chick complaining like a chick. That's you, Jimmy. And she's trying to show him that I don't care if you're the prince. Yeah, really? You don't care he's the prince?
She's going to go out not. with some soccer hooligan. Exactly. Uh, she'll move Next. On. Oh, please. She's just trying to put her dumb foot down. She's trying to show who the boss is, and he knows it. Him. Yep, 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 I don't want to. Oh, you got to come to the party. Let's go to Brent in New Jersey. Brent. Fellas. Hey. Look, I, I got to say, I agree with Jimmy on this one because uh, the match that he went to see was uh, the Rugby World Cup final. It's only ever. Oh, year. the Rugby World Cup final. Wow. Well, I didn't know it was Not that. I thought it was just the rugby match. Is that, like the, is that like the Super Bowl here? Would that be like the Super Bowl? Um. A little bit bigger. I mean, it's every four years. Big, no, the first... Year. Is, stop. There's nothing bigger than the Super Bowl. <laughs> well... Okay. The World Cup is way bigger than the Super Bowl. Oh, it is not to oh, us. Is it every four years they do the, the Rugby World Cup? Yeah. Every four years. Is that what he's going for? It's a dumb thing. See, us, us dumb Americans think that the, because it's an American thing that it's the biggest, but... I think the World Cup is bigger than the Super Bowl, and I don't know. Maybe this uh, Rugby World Cup is actually bigger as far as the whole rugby. world goes. Rugby. All right, Brent. Thank you. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? But you're it's gonna, rugby. That was a good one. All, All right, right, buddy. You're going to go to the Super Bowl or, or or your teams in the World Series, and you want to go to a game, and your chick is going, "It's my twenty second birthday," <laughs> and you're like, "This is the World Series." There we go. I didn't realize it was the World Match. It, this is the World Series. Yeah. But it's my 22nd birthday. I want to go to dinner. You'd want to spit on her. <laughs> Why can't we do it next week? I, I think it was the final straw, if you read the article. Oh, you probably oh yeah? Yeah, I mean, she, you know, the guy's obviously probably not taking, you know, their relationship seriously. Very seriously. And he's running yeah. around doing his Playboy thing, and this was the last straw, I'm thinking. Uh, what's up, Seabass? Opie. Yeah. What happened to you? What? You'll become soft after being engaged. You're defending Prince Harry's girlfriend? Yeah, because I think, I think that whole royalty thing is a, a complete joke. and it's, for real. it's nice to see that someone's not falling for that crap. <laughs> I, think, I think half a year ago you would have had a different story. You would have said F her. No, not really. I, I have always hate the, that royalty thing. Well, it's not even for me. And I love when these people get smashed in the face and something you know, goes wrong in their life. I agree with you. It's, but, but it's not about the royalty for me. It's, it's just simply about it, it proves that no matter where you are, no matter what you do, something won't be good enough. <laughs> Something they'll have to find and and poke their beaks in. <laughs> Something. No matter. Hold on, buddy. No matter what it is, their beaks will poke in the window. <laughs> Picture this: you're in your car, you're doing everything you can, and that beak comes in the window. <laughs> you're not doing this. <laughs> their beaks. <laughs> All right, guys. Punch it out. All right, All right I like when the, the royal family gets smashed. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the broad side. God forbid. Yeah, gonna have to uh, agree to disagree. Oh on boy, this do one. I, I'm totally disagree with her. Shut the back to him. <laughs> huh? I, and again, I don't like the royal family at all. It's not about him being royal. It's just simply, it just, it's, it's that pattern that, that you could do eighty things, and the one thing you don't is the thing they bring up. Time and time <laughs> again. <laughs> now, this is based on some, Jimmy. You're going to a deep place with this. <laughs> no. Yes, you <laughs> are. <laughs> more than that, old. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't want to share, and that's okay. But um, No, 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 no. It's not even about me. It's I've been sitting across from you for a while. I, I could tell there's a little personal... No! Personal, not at all. No! A personal punch to this saying, ranch. Hey, no, 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 not at all. I, I, I had a great weekend with my girlfriend. Um, all right, good. I, I, was, I, was doing the, I did the MySpace show Friday, then I was gone Saturday. So yesterday we had we a had nice dinner. Um, but it's just like, like, let's just say in my relationship, let's just say I do uh -huh. 80 things and mm -hmm. then there's that one thing that I'm not good at. Let's just say it would get brought up time <laughs> and time again. <laughs> what would this thing be if you were, I don't know. I don't know. It could be anything. It could be, uh, uh we spend too much time in my apartment, not enough time in hers. It could be that. All right. You've brought that up in the past. Yeah. Mm hmm that, that could be that. It could be anything. Uh, yeah. And I actually see it your way on that one, by the yeah. way, because your apartment's way better than hers. So why would you want to? Well, I don't even look at it like it's better. I just because she has roommates. That's all it is for me is the privacy issue. It's not about like I don't care if, if mine's bigger or whatever. I'd still hang out in her place. Yeah. I like the fact that she wants me there. Like I like the. You fact don't want roomies. No, but I like the fact that she wants to share a space with me and stuff. Like she said, like you know, I want you in my life and I want you in my place too, which I like. That she's not trying to keep me out of her. It is just simply the other people there. I've mm -hmm. lived with roommates before. It's it's fine, but 
If you could be alone or be with them, I'm very private. Yeah, you're be, you're past that point in your life. I just hated it. I just can I li- I lived with my family till I was thirty, and then I moved in wow. with, with Jim Florentine, um, and his girlfriend at the time, and, and so it was like you know for the first thirty four years of my life. Or 33 or 34. I couldn't walk naked around my, my place. Mm. What a sin. <laughs> I know. That's just a sin. But you know what I mean? So it's like now I'm 39. I've only been five years without just alone. Right, but it's right. just, you're, you're kind of just walking around noodle. All the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. I haven't closed a bathroom door <laughs> since, what is it, uh, 01. I haven't closed a bathroom door since 01. <laughs> That's fantastic. How cool is that? It's a good feeling, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, wow, people are split on this one. Yeah, I'm sure some guys mm-hmm. are going to see it the other way, but it has nothing. To, I'm, I'm Mason in the royal family just because it was such a stupid thing she's mad at. But this is, it, to me, it's no matter what stage you're in, there's something that they're going to harp on. Girls take their birthdays very seriously. Oh, I, and all they do is. I'm kind of with you. When my birthday comes up, yeah, I want it to be acknowledged. It, it would be nice to open up some or do something like dinner or something. But girls, man, they look at it completely different. You but, can't miss their birthday. But I don't care about their birthday. You're getting older. That's all it's going to do is make me not like you as much. But I'm just What's saying. What's the matter with you? Oh, jeez. But I'm just saying they do care. <laughs> if you're getting younger, I'd celebrate every year. <laughs> Look, I'm going to be 17 this year. Hoorah. <laughs> Let's go out and get you a pony ride, toots. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday's a biggie for women. I know. Maybe there's other things they don't care about as much, but that's one that... Uh, what? I'd love to know one thing they don't care about as All much. Right, well, maybe we can go to the phones after the break and find that out. Uh, hopefully someone will have an answer. Maybe somebody... Because, like, I mean, out. you're right to say that your birthday's not a big deal. Yeah. I'm trying to think the last time my birthday was a big deal. You went to dinner. Hey, it's my birthday. It's I wanted to be acknowledged, but yeah. past that, I, Christmas is not a big deal to me anymore. I think Christmas will mm-hmm. uh, mean something when I finally have kids. Birthday but I, I, I could nothing. give a crap about Christmas year after year. I actually like Thanksgiving over Christmas. Yeah, yes. That's more of hanging out with... Like the family and stuff, just you know, eating. the extended family, and just hanging out. It's you don't have the pressure of trying to figure out what to buy everybody, and the stress of going, you know, shopping and all that. Kind I, of don't, I don't have that pressure anymore. Gave up. Yeah. Gave up on it. Mm-hmm. Now, I just flee the area. Flee. Just leave. Go on vacation somewhere. Like uh, I'm just not around. I'm not available. What are you doing this Christmas? Don't know, but. I'm not. I'm not going to end up in stores trying to figure out what Grandma wants. So you're not going to buy it. Uh, will you be giving people uh, checks? I might. I might cut some uh, gift certificates or something, or uh, uh, some of those American Express the gift cards. The whole Kumia clan just turned up their radios. Oh God, what's his answer? Oh God. Uh, oh God. Is he getting? Uh, is he going to be giving the big checks this year? Oh God. Oh, please say yes. Please say yes. No, it got, it got, it for go either, years. It, it can was, go either way with the, the checks this year? For years, it was just going over grandma's house, and then everyone would be there, and, and everyone's got presents for everybody else, and it turns into this big thing, and it's a pain in the ass for months before that. And then they decide, I think, last year, uh, I think we, we're going to do, like, you get a gift for this person, this one gets one for that person. Sort of grab bag style. Well, Anthony must have been the one. Oh, my God. So I'll, look, I'll trade you three uncles and a mom for Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a big announcement to my family. We're too old for Secret Santa. Stop. <clears throat> you don't want to do the Secret Whatever Santa? Whatever sibling's going to start the Secret Santa thing this year, just stop. Don't it do it. sucks. We're all over 30 at this point. Stop with the Secret Santa thing, please. Why does it have to carry on to when you... Get older than like ten. I'm I'm more worried about what to buy your kids. I don't need to worry about buying a gift for somebody. The Secret Santa thing blows. I know it to get kids cash. Kids love greenbacks. They just love opening up a card and seeing a president staring them in the face. Ooh, they can buy whatever they want. I I like to give kids knowledge. Like uh, my nephew this year, he's eleven. He'll love this. It's a, it's a book on the history of the uh, of of that river in Washington, the Potomac River. Of course, the okay. Potomac River's history and all the historic things that have happened along it. I'm sure he'll cherish it. That's right. It's going to be a good history teaching. My <laughs> my nine year old nephew is going to get a book. Uh, <laughs> The history of spores. <laughs> to learn about spores? Yeah. Everything you need to know about spores. Spores for dummies. That's like kind of like fungus in a nutshell, which is what I got him last year. Yeah. 
to all figure right, out. All right, pop then up we get it. We got a break. I know. Break, 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 break. Uh, somebody won the thousand dollars, so you can stop calling. We'll figure out who that winner is next. Mm-hmm. It's Opie and Anthony. All right, I'm gonna be. Uh, hey, what's up? This is Bob Kelly. I'm gonna be at the Laughing Post in Michigan, Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, Michigan, on November 29th and November 30th. Uh, that's Kalamazoo, Missing Michigan. What the fuck are you doing? I finally got one right, and you fucked it up with your gay cell phone ring. I don't give a shit. The first time I ever did a fuck a, a dumb promo that came out correctly, and your stupid gay alarm. What? All right, now I want you to do it. Right, what are you gonna do? Ah, just go to my MySpace. This is Bob Kelly. Go to my MySpace. MySpace.com. Backward slash. Wow. Robert Kelly Live. Go now. Hey, good morning. It's all the veterans. Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Opie and Anthony with you. We got a winner. I don't know who it is, though. Don't know who it is. What city? What? This dude? All right. Hey, Steve, you want $1,000, right? I hope so. <laughs> Steve. Hey. Steve. Steve, where are you calling from? Hey, Harrison. What? Harrison. Where's that? It's uh, Westchester. Oh, Westchester? Yeah. All right, congratulations. You won $1,000. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. You me every morning. There you go. All right, thank you. We got to move thank on, you, though, man. today. So we got to go quick with uh, the winner today. Uh, Harlequin. She's a girl from Buffalo, New York, listening on the edge. The home of Shred and Reagan. She writes, uh, the birthday was the last straw. I mean, everyone is talking about Jimmy's rant. Hey, people are, some are agreeing with you as well, uh, Jimmy. It's, it's, yeah, unless they agree or disagree. Uh, Lisa came running in here and said, uh, you know, what did she say to you? She's like, uh, I think she asked if someone was hassling me, like, is my girl hassling me? I'm like, no. But it was, uh, and she's like, yeah, I'd probably go to the World Series with you. Like, I used the World Series rant. I didn't realize it was that big of a match even. Right. But it just, it just goes to prove that no matter what you're doing, you're going to bitch about something. I'm not giving you some Tom Likas rant like, ah, women are terrible. But it, it, <laughs> it's just a fact that no matter how much you do, it's just this. People talk about being henpecked, and that's why. Yeah. You shut up. Let the prince go. And, and wa- He's got death threats. Do you think people want to murder this guy? Yeah. He, let the guy go watch the game with his friends. I understand he's rich, and it's not just about that. It's the fact that he's going to have security for the rest of his life because people would love to chop his head off <laughs> because of his, com- his country's policies. Let the guy go, watch the game with his friends, and you and your dumb 22nd birthday, go have some cake with your other stupid hens and peck your beaks together. What, the- what else does he do? Peck, 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 peck. <laughs> stupid. Kvetching hands. <laughs> it really, it's it's kind of. This, this is going to a deep place. Oh, I, it drives me nuts. I mean, I I, I did see your point, um, but now it seems it seems a little more personal. But no, eh, I could be wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> Thanks, good. You want to just? I don't. Uh, well, Harley Quinn writes the birthday was the last straw for her. She didn't let the fact that he's a prince cloud her judgment. Of course, talking about Prince Harry, his chick uh, broke up with him uh, because he missed her twenty second birthday because he was at the World Rugby uh, Cup match in Paris. Right. Okay. Uh, if he's blowing her off while they're dating, what's going to happen if they get married? The things he does now marks what he will do later. Yeah, that's a- what Harley Quinn is saying in Buffalo. All right. Well, I'm sure Harley Quinn in Buffalo has a similar. Lifestyle and experience that this woman and the prince have, I'm sure. <laughs> her 22nd birthday, her husband was probably uh, uh, eating wings and then on the toilet for nine hours and couldn't take her out. That's probably why, because he's an alcoholic. All right, Melanie in Nashville, Tennessee. Melanie, what's up? Fun boy. Hey. He did what every other man in this world would do. Well, every other man that has the balls to do it. Yeah. If I was him, I would have blown her off, too. Look, it's, the bottom line is the birthday is nice. It's nice to go out to dinner. I, I, I think that's nice. And my girl's birthday, I'll, be, I'll always take her out to dinner unless I'm like working or something I can't. Yeah. 
But it's like, this is a guy, I know he's a privileged prince and the royal family sucks, but on the other side, there really is a, a 24-hour uh, a death threat mm-hmm. on the dude. And if that's one of the things he likes doing with his friends, leave him, just let him do it. Just so shut your mouth. Ha- yeah, I'm sorry. He could have a hot chick at the drop of a dime. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I like the fact too. That, get everybody else. I like the fact that she was sulking and he just went out and ran up a five thousand dollar bar bill. How great is it to know that you kicked and screamed your twenty second birthday and he probably replaced you within an hour? <laughs> Good. Exactly. He had a <laughs> Good for you. The game. All right, Melanie. Thank you. Let's go to John in Jersey. John, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Yeah, what's up? I don't think it's the fact that this lady likes to complain. I think it's the fact that she loves it. <laughs> she, dude, you are 100% right. She, linger, longer. Linger, longer. She doesn't enjoy complaining. She loves complaining. <laughs> her complaining and breathing have an equal sign in between them for her. <laughs> God almighty. Uh, I can't even find your, your uh, calming music today, unfortunately. So we haven't played upset. in a while. I'm not, I'm not I, 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 Jimmy, you know what? I just want a standing by just in case. Because you never know. You never know. I, it, ah, the moment has passed. But the, where is it? Just in case. And now my nose. Oh, I'm starting to get hooked on nose spray again. Is no, you're not. Because my nose is ruining my life. I can't, last what? night, I, was, I went to bed at 11 o'clock last night. The earliest I've gone to bed in nine years. Yeah. And, of course, my nose was so congested. So I had to I had to spray again, and now this morning it's itchy and leaky a little bit. So I'm oh, starting to get to that place where I'm going to be hooked on a nose spray again. I remember I you were spraying all the time. I, I want to put a gun on my nose. I don't want to kill myself. I want to shoot my nose and sinus. Well, Is there any way to put a bullet through your sinuses so it clears you out? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? You're going to get an operation? I don't know. I, I hear all these reports. I want to know who if I could find who to go to. The, a guy that's really good and is going to fix my nose. Is I would he reputable? To... You might lose that beautiful tone to your voice. A lot of people uh, don't get the uh, nose fix because they're afraid. There's a lot of singers. Singer, sure, Billy Joel. Uh, they don't want to do that, you know. But um, I think you'd be all right. Yeah. Well, what am I going to talk like this? Who cares? No Can you can... come out talking like this? Hey. <laughs> I just want my nose. Or like this. You got a beautiful tone, Jimmy. Don't mess it up. My voice is awful anyway. <laughs> How great would that be? Just to come in with a totally different voice. It's like I miss. Like, hello, baby. What's up? Uh, we got your feel good story. It's feel good story Monday. We try to find a, just a nice story that we all could just go, ah, and feel good about ourselves because there's just such awfulness in the world out there every day. Yeah. There's nothing but bad news all the time. So so we pick one story every Monday. We play it for you, and it's just that feel-good story of the day for this fine Monday. Are you guys ready for the feel-good story for today? Of course. All right, here it is. Wearing nothing but a gown because detectives took his clothes as evidence. Convicted sex offender James Walker is headed back to jail after serving a seven-year sentence. Mr. Walker came underneath that stall, uh, forced him against the wall, held him against his will, Mm. forcibly fondled him. Mm. Walker's 15-year-old victim stopped to use the bathroom while on his way to school. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Jesus, this guy just lost his mind. I gotta have it. Yeah, the perv switch definitely went off. Ah, he's in the bathroom. (laughs) I need it. There's a, y- stall. there's a young lad right next young to me in lad. the next stall. He's right there. I can't, I can't take it. I got to pin him against the wall. I'm crawling out of the stall. I have to. I have to. He just lost his mind. After the sexual assault, a grounds crew contacted police, capturing Walker as he attempted to run. What a grounds crew in between the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. This is what they do when they're not like uh, breaking out the big rake. <laughs> I didn't know the grounds crew was, uh, mul- were able to multitask like this. After the sexual assault, a grounds crew contacted police, capturing Walker as he attempted to run. I wasn't even over there, man. Why are you guys harassing me? Police say Walker had just been released from state prison in April after serving seven years on a 15-year sentence for sexually molesting yet another child. This evening, seven though, years. He's being held without bond in the blue. Why oh, is good. he out in seven years from good. molesting a child? Now he's being held without bond. Well, they showed him a uh, 15 year sentence. He should be in there for 15 years. You rob a bank, you don't get out for 25 years. Anything with property in this stupid country, yeah. you molest a kid, you're out in seven years. Yeah, seven is. years of a 15 year sentence. You know, the, oh. feel, the feel good part of that story, of course, is that the guy will now go back to prison. 
I just came to get something to eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> yeah, well. Why don't you take a seat over there? Poor guy. Unbelievable. So this is uh, the second time he couldn't take it. Right. Probably more than that. Perhaps more than that. But he, uh, he's right back at it again. There's people are like, the, the, the cases of, of, uh, recurring crimes when it comes to these creatures, it's just like a hundred percent. These guys get out and they go right back to doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Why the hell let them out? The, uh, the sterilization, mandatory sterilization. Yeah, I agree. Just clip, snippy snip, and you're done. A word, <sighs> democratic society. Yes, that's cruel and unusual oh. punishment as opposed to uh, ruining uh, a life mm -hmm. uh, because of what you did when they were younger. Very good job. Let's say hi to Robert. Robert, what's up? Hey, guys. How are you? Hey. Jimmy, I just want to let you know that I had two surgeries about eight years ago. One surgery on my sinuses. And I got worse after that. I went to a guy up in Mount Sinai. He drilled a hole in my head over my eye. And that thing, that, that thing hurt Jeffrey like... Jeffrey Dahmer? <laughs> Did he pour bleach in there? <laughs> Did it help? You're not... Jimmy, the guy put like this noodle, a straw, in my sinus. It used to leak out through the bottom of my nose. Oh. It was the grossest thing for six weeks. <sighs> and within two months, I haven't had a sinus infection in eight years. So what, uh, the one guy, the guy who drilled the hole in your head helped you or no? Yeah, the guy, the, the first guy did regular sinus surgery, and that's all, you know, it's all BS. It doesn't work. Why? It makes your oh, nose boy. bigger. It, it makes... No, I didn't get a nose job. I just got... I, no, I, no, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> I mean the, the, the passageways inside bigger, so you can breathe better. Yeah, yeah, but I, what happens is, what they don't explain to you, is that you end up, some people get scar tissue, and it just made my nose worse within six months. Okay. This guy, this guy went in there and took care of the scar tissue, and uh, it's really been a lot better. I mean, the guy's a whack job. He, he, the guy, I, I don't want to say his name. Maybe right, don't. The air. Yeah, the the uh, the guys in the uh, OR, they, they see Kyle to the guy before the surgery. He has this whole running joke with everybody in the OR that he's like uh, a Nazi. I don't care what is running. Good. Uh, I have, let, let Anthony uh, operate. Don't hang up. Give Travis your info or the guy's info. Yeah, I don't know. No problem. Thanks, and by the way, Jimmy, hey, hmm. Jimmy, I'm Jewish, and it wasn't fun to watch that happen before I went under. But he did help your nose. Yes, he absolutely did. Thank you. But he really would do that to, even, to a Jewish uh, patient? That's <laughs> He's a little... in Mount Sinai, for God's sakes, the Jewish hospital. Uh, all right. Well, thank you there. I, I don't. Can... I, he's on hold. I don't understand people that don't do their research. We had a story here in New York uh this woman went to a dentist in like Chinatown. This yeah. is a story that was, uh, it's about two weeks old now. She went uh, to this dentist in Chinatown. The guy obviously didn't really know what he was doing. And let's just put it this way she passed out because uh, I guess he gave her too much. I, I, I need more uh, details in the story, but basically something went horribly wrong in the dentist chair with the anesthesia. And he just. Put her out on the sidewalk. Yep. He freaked out. He put her out on the sidewalk and went back inside, hoping that someone would find her. Maybe it'll just go away. <laughs> did she end up dying? Yeah, I think she did. I think she might have died on the sidewalk. And the family's like, what the F? And they figured out that, you know, that on her planner or something, she was seeing a, a dentist that day. And the story goes that something went awfully wrong. And the guy, instead of, like, you know, maybe calling somebody or doing mm. something... He figured it would go away by just putting her out on the sidewalk to die. Hey, did you see the dentist footage? It was on, uh, I saw on the train yesterday on CBS or something. Had, uh, oh, that guy that lost his mind and uh, started pushing the uh, oh, woman. I, oh, I Wait, love what's this, this one? This dentist was trying to get into a parking lot and there was a car blocking. Do you know the full his, story? His, he was, his name was Dr. Moody. <laughs> was that? Oh, yeah. He was all Moody. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a Mercedes, apparently, and I can understand how you would get uh, pissed off at this. There's a Mercedes blocking the entrance with the hazard lights on and trunk up to a parking garage. So this Dr. Moody gets out and starts yelling at the guy. He's like, move your goddamn car. And he jumps in the guy's car to try to move it. And shoves him out of the way. And shoves him out of the way. So this guy is like uh, yelling at Dr. Moody. Uh, Dr. Moody gets out and um, goes to get into his car to, to leave. 
and uh, the the guy that owns the Mercedes, his sister or somebody else, one a relative, and it's a woman, comes walking up to Dr. Moody and starts uh, giving him uh, you know a little guff. Dr. Moody just mushes her and pushes her right down on the ground. Well, she touched him to shove her something, and he shoved her hard on the he ground? He pushed her so hard, she flew back on her ass. And the other guy punched him. The other guy yeah, the other guy punched Dr. Moody in the face. <laughs> Dr. Moody was subsequently arrested. He was a big guy, Dr. Moody, though. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Moody. Just a dentist, miserable with his job. Just all angry. Yeah. Dentists are a weird, weird bunch of people. They, uh, I think they have a very high suicide rate. They absolutely do. I don't think uh, a lot of them are very happy. Well, I, think I think they bring pain to people's lives. So even though in the long run it's good, nah. but I think they bring pain to people's lives I and they know it. I think it's the rotting smell of you think that, uh, that just get to them eventually. That does it? Yeah. Hey, here's the story. Brooklyn dental patient left on curb dies. All right. She was 71. Ooh. She was dumped unconscious on the 71. curb yeah. by a bogus Brooklyn dentist. The guy... Didn't even uh, go all the way in with his uh, education. Yeah, that amazes me. A lot of times these uh, uh, people are practicing medicine. They have nothing. Uh, this guy is accused of carrying the Manhattan woman to the sidewalk below his Coney Island. Okay, it was in Coney Island. Uh, oh, offices right. after she began foaming at the mouth and lost uh, consciousness. I did put her on the cyclone over there at Coney Island and just say, look, uh, she must have had a heart attack. She's no broad on the cyclone. Had she uh, not- that with like cotton in her mouth, <laughs> no cocaine. Her family saying, had she not She's went drooling. to that dentist that day, she would still be here with no, us. You don't yeah. know that. That's gonna hurt his practice. He doesn't have a license, and he killed somebody. Yeah, that could uh, that could hurt. He should put that in his hand. Only one dead. It'll probably <laughs> never happen again, folks. Can I can I comment on something Iraq did? Yeah. That that was like really ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, there was a special report that was on for a couple of seconds. And there's plume, a pl- big plume of smoke over London. And Something happened. They're saying it's not terrorism, by the way. They are? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know this. You know why? Why? Because Iraq, in order to maybe, because I kind of looked at him like, what is that? To get a better story, better angle on the story, switch to the CW11 news. Iraq. Why would you why? go to the, they're doing morning workout dancing. When the story came on, it was on Good Morning America, and yeah, then they flipped the, back to their, their interview. Exactly. Who off. cares about it? But you know where you go when a breaking world story happens? Tell me where you go. Fox News. Or CNN. right. Uh, CNN over Fox CNN News. CNN over Fox News. By the way. You, you ju- you, if you want to have a little fun, go to Fox News. If you need... <laughs> if you want to have a little entertainment to value. To know what's going news. on. Although they're all bad, but... That's where you go. I would say Fox is the worst, CNN is the best, and MSNBC is kind of in the middle. That's that's how I rate them. But if you want kind of entertainment, then you go to mm-hmm. Fox. If you want a little uh, mapping of Muslim communities supported, uh, community, do you support the mapping of Muslim communities? Yes. Yeah, sure. I support that. There's a great article where's, on the Post. Where's that? Where, uh, that's the, uh, the one in England. Is that England? Uh, yeah. See? See, Iraq? Look, I'm watching a burning England there. I'm watching England burn. And on Fox 5 News, uh, Intel to unveil a chip for improving Internet video quality. Interesting story. I like it. But I kind of wanted to know about that. And the CW11 is the last resort. I swear to God, if, if I saw Russian MiGs flying out the window bombing our building... I wouldn't go there if if every other station was off the air. That put the point across how I wouldn't ever go there. All right, go to the local channels. I'm going to see how they're reporting the London uh, story there. Local, local. Here we go. Yep. Like local is two, four, seven, nine, eleven. Do you watch television, Iraq? Why? Well, we don't need oh, HD. We, we don't, don't need, need HD. HD. Info. <laughs> well, Channel Four is doing shadow traffic. Channel 2 is a humidifier ad. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. Where else? Channel 7 is... Uh, Seventh is traffic. Oh, yeah, tra- trap traffic. And Channel 11 is uh, have fun out there. And Channel Whatever. 7 is a, oh, fat, a fat weatherman. And Channel 9, yeah. nothing. Channel 9 is actually doing sitcoms. They don't even do <laughs> CNN has England burning. Yeah. All right. Well, nobody cares. That's all. I just wanted to know. That's Fair. all. Let's see if uh, it might be some of that there, uh, what you call terrorism. Let's go to Mike in Pittstown. Hey. Where, where's Pittstown? Uh, Hunterman County. Hey. Oh, uh, yeah. So what do you got? Yeah. Uh, my old dentist went to jail for shooting his ex-wife who worked in the office. His name Ooh. was Dr. Rambo. No. 
Yeah. Jump fish blood. <laughs> so, so he shot his wife. His ex-wife still worked in the office, and I guess they had an argument. And he, and, and, uh, he's, he's doing some time. Doctor Rambo. Wow. How does it? How do you figure out in your mind that you know this is going to take care of the problem? It's just a moment of rage, I think. And you don't you just care. Snap. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I get it. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. boy, do I. Oh, oh boy. You got it. Oh, no. What happened? Nothing, actually. I'm actually in a really good place. How are your pancakes? <laughs> what pancakes? You like pancakes on Sunday. I do. I didn't have any. I was on a train coming home. Mm. No pancakes. That's why. That's why you're a little uh, little edgy. No, we had fun yesterday. Yeah. I, I uh, went out from Mexico. Did she boo you? Uh, boo. 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 Oh, joke. Boo. No, she didn't boo me at all. <laughs> all right. We had a wonderful <laughs> evening. And we had sex, which I did okay at. Oh, you, you were okay this time? I said, okay, not good. Oh, okay. If it was Rotten Tomatoes, like, what percentage? Good. Three. <laughs> Three percent good? Yeah, it's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> My performance. Uh, that's, exactly what was, that's exactly what I was trying to, trying to uh, make her feel good with, a rotten tomato. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, my failure. <laughs> and continue. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> Opie and Anthony. On your radio now. On your radio now. 877-212-ONA. Also got the Pal Talk cameras, the instant feedback. Very interactive radio show here. Plenty of ways to get in touch with the program. Uh, we did the football thing. Oh, for, uh, former President Bush goes skydiving again. That's uh, kind of a yearly thing he does on his birthday. Kind of getting a little creepy now, though. He's 83. You know what really looks uh, odd? That camera view of his face as he's plummeting. That's what you I'm know, getting at. Yeah, you get you get older and and wow, there's a lot more real estate to pull back. But he's uh, doing that every year until he dies, I guess. Yeah. What else is going on that anyone cares about? Oh, the UK man, yeah, who made fifteen thousand calls to women, asking them about their underwear. He's going to jail for two years. This two guy, years for that? This guy's great. What's the uh, what's the charge? Like harassment or something? Well. The underwear-obsessed telephone stalker's undoing proved to be the opening of a gym opposite the apartment that the 40-year-old shared with his mother. Detectives caught Paul uh, Kavanaugh, okay, on film, leaning over the balcony of the West London apartment just as he was peppering the gym's female receptionist with calls. Jailed for two and a half years Friday, Kavanaugh admitted making some 15,000 such harassing calls to women, asking them questions about their underwear. He posed as a clothing researcher and claimed to be gathering marketing data for a retailer. Ah, he had a story. Good. He'd, he'd been making Good the calls friend. for 12 years, usually starting off his conversations with seemingly innocuous questions about the women's socks and cardigans. Then he would move on to their underwear, making lewd suggestions to his victims. Just, how do people just not hang up and not bother with it? Oh, I'm glad I, he's I, jail. I, what a creep. 15,000 calls? Yeah, he's persistent. <laughs> but I mean, it's... Hope he's a good calling plan. <laughs> Your friends, family, and frequently harassed program. <laughs> I don't know. How, how, on average, is your bill a lot more or a lot less than you thought it would be when you signed up for your iPhone? It's, uh, I believe, a little bit more. Not a lot, but I, I don't do that stupid email thing, but it's a little bit more. Mine seems a lot more. Yeah, I thought it was AT&T. A lot more. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I I got a plan. They, they remember they said like there's the two plans or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. One was for something, and then a hundred bucks a month for another plan. So I got that one, figuring that was like good. And I read through everything, and it seemed pretty inclusive. But every month I'm getting a phone bill that is over two hundred dollars. But why? I don't know. These stupid surcharge, usage charge. Dude, the charges on these bills have usage charge, tax on the usage charge. Uh, equipment charges, taxes on that, and then there's excise tax, and a tax for a tax tax. They tax the crap out of everything. They How tax about, the crap out of tax. Yes, they're taxing taxes. How about Elliot Spitzer, Governor Spitzer, does mm -hmm. something about that and the way they are raping the public Ugh. instead of worrying about if a radio guy is going to see Van Halen at the Garden. How about Yeah, where he got that? his tickets from. Well, you got to explain. Yeah, they really messed up radio, and uh, every ticket has to be uh, you know accounted for now if you work yeah. at a radio station. That's, that's what Jimmy's...
Because I, I asked for Foo Fighter tickets. I wasn't allowed to have Foo Fighter uh, tickets because then Elliot Spitzer's office would be suspicious that some kind of plug all of things going on. How about mm-hmm. Elliot Spitzer and then do something about these disgusting charges, these thieves in the phone companies are, are putting on you. Yeah. And they're thieves. Because we talk about politicians all the time. That's that's tough stuff to do. It's easy to go after the soft uh, soft uh, subjects and soft uh, topics out there. That would be that would be pretty intense. That, that'd you, be huge. If you and went after the phone company and said, what the F are you doing with all these extra charges every and month? Isn't that something that people could kind of get behind? You know, of course, it, that's not like one of these b- stupid things that p- some people get behind. Most people don't care about. That's something that people go, yeah, you know, something. This would cut down on my cell phone bill, but no, they never go after that. What is a usage? A usage charge? That's my phone bill. That's my phone bill. I'm using the phone. There, I pay it. I don't think oh, you, they're pigs. I don't think your sh- your cable bill should be up to two hundred dollars a month either. What is that about? Well, there's no hidden charges in that, I don't think. Like at least I, I mean, yeah, I, I haven't seen any. I, the, when I get a huge cable bill, I look and it's you know I get all the, ch- the channels and yeah. movies and stuff like that. Oh, I think it's way too expensive. It's way too expensive. But, it's you know, ridiculous. They pretty much got you by the uh, right there. Yeah. But the phone thing is this: you read through your phone bill, you have no clue what those charges are, a- and there's no explanation for them. And then I don't even understand why. It's so much for the uh, for the iPhone above what my plan was for. My plan is for a hundred bucks, and it was supposedly unlimited data and yep. a transfer. And, and then I'm looking, and and I, I'm paying a hell of a lot more, and I don't understand why. AT and T. I hope I hope Apple understands that AT and T has been an abysmal failure as a carrier. They have been an abomination as far as. A carrier. Mm-hmm. You understand? You get a photo texted to you, a photo sent to you. It's like when I had Ver- <clears throat> I had Verizon, and the way it would work with Verizon is I still couldn't get fo- photos from my my BlackBerry, so I would have to go to the site. But you have an account, and you could save all the photos you have yeah. in your account. You sign in, and there's the photo. It's a little inconvenient, but it was doable. This stupid AT and T. You get a text. It has a different code num- password and code number for every, every photo time you get. You get and a it opens photo. in a small window. You can't save it to anything. It is despicably you can't bad technology. Look at it full size. You got to look at it in this postage stamp little little size. It really is ridiculous. AT and T is horrendous. Well, yeah. horrendous carrier. We got Greg on Long Island talking about AT and T. Greg, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh let you guys know that when uh, when you go into a dealer to sign uh, sign up for AT and T, AT and T basically in in one way or another forces the dealers to put add-ons that you don't know about, add-ons such as uh, towing, things like insurance. Towing? What? <laughs> hold on, hold on, towing. Wait, did you say towing? Yes, I did. Like towing your car if you are to become disabled, they add stuff like that onto your bill. Uh, I was speaking with a gentleman yesterday. I am completely lost about the towing. Towing? Thing. What are you talking about? Is there like a tow hotline for AT&T customers? Like insurance, like a double A, triple A, whatever that thing is. Right. They have that for your cell phone so that you're insured through AT&T. Oh, okay. Oh, like the, the GPS thing? Right. It tells where you are. They add on to your bill. That you don't normally look at or wouldn't even realize. A lot of times, it's putting an item code, so you don't know what this code is and what you're being charged for. There's uh, one guy that I was talking to said that he had uh, the three separate instances where people came in and their kids had that insurance on their phone, and they were only uh, 12, 13 years old, so they weren't even driving yet. They were paying a monthly fee to have that insurance. You know what AT&T should put their resources into? Putting some towers. On the west side of Manhattan, so calls are not constantly dropped. Hmm. How about that? How about that is where they put their efforts? A lot of times what happens is, is people don't want the towers by them. And, and, and they go out and fight the lobby to not have the towers put by their houses. And usually it's the people that use their cell phones that are complaining. Well, how does Verizon How does Verizon and Sprint do it? I don't know. I, I, I um, it, it, it's two different types of technologies on, on how they actually operate. Um, and, and what happens is, depending on who has the phones where, how many people are uh, 
congested in one single area is what's going to determine how many people can talk and how clear it will be and whether or not you're going to get drilled. So if, if AT&T has too many customers, let's say, on Long Island that their system can't handle it, Verizon may not have as much, therefore their service is going to appear better. Well, Verizon, here's the thing. I think they're the biggest. So they have the most everywhere. They have the best coverage. And I'm not shilling for Verizon. I mean, their customer service is as awful as anybody's. Shill. Yeah. But... AT and T service has been such a disgusting disappointment. All right, let's go to Roland in Tennessee. Roland, hey, what's up, guys? You have this towing thing, this towing charge. Yeah, I got Sprint service, and uh, if you run out of gas and break down, you just call it, and they'll come out and give you some gas to get you to the station, or they'll come out and tow you to a shop. Do most people know they have this? Or most but but is it on everyone's bill? No, I had to. I had to select it. I. Went to the store and looked at the sheet, and okay. I wanted a towing package on it. All right, that guy's claiming they just throw that on without you even knowing about it. Maybe they do. And it. you'll never use the service because you had no clue you had it. All right, thank you, sir. Let's go to uh, Mike in Westchester. Mike, what's up? What's up, bro? How you doing? Hey. Dude, listen, I bought the iPhone when it first came out, right? The yes. The first billing cycle, I had a $3,100 bill. <laughs> Why? Dude, I, I don't know. I had a $3,100 bill. <laughs> I started getting all these recalls on the phone and everything else. I called up uh, AT&T, and I had Tourette's syndrome. I was cursing everybody out. What yeah, I got, a, I got a huge bill when I went to uh, the Bahamas for roaming charges. I understood it was oh, going to yeah. be a little more than usual. I'd taken phones down there. I'd had it on roaming and you know, you pay extra for that, but you it know was so ridiculous. It was it was something like $1200 I had to pay in a phone bill, which I've never paid that that much in a phone. You bill. said something interesting there. You knew it would be a little more. Uh, most people have no idea. You go out of country and all of a sudden your phone is just on and it's roaming. It's when it says off. roaming. It doesn't just mean, "Hey, I'm just going to roam yeah. around. You stay here. I'm going to hit the beach and the bars." Right, right. Uh, you go out. It's not just roaming. It's it's costing you extra money. They're getting the phone companies Dude, are just getting away with murder. Huh? I wasn't even out of the country, bro. Why was it so much? I don't know. What happened was I called up. And they said to me, I was in roaming. I drive a truck. I, you know, I, I, I live and work in Westchester County. The farthest trip I go to is Dutchess County. So they turned around and told me I have a $3,100 bill. Must That's be one dead area that you're roaming in that you keep going through. It's just <laughs> disgusting, man. They're just they're thieves. It's, it's sick. It's sick. It's crazy. And the funny thing about it is, I think the president who owns or who works for AT&T got raped with with by monks with hoods on their head. They, they're raping all the people with phones. <laughs> okay, I all right, didn't well, quite get your point about the right, you monks check, with hoods how do you on their check head. your bill on the iPhone? Uh, let's go to Brian That's in Pennsylvania. Brian, what's up? Hey, good morning, Check guys. our bills. Hey, hey. A little, a little bit off subject, but in, I, I have a late nomination for uh, line of the day within the past hour. You guys were talking about the... The, uh, the the birthday and the the prince and everything and you guys blew right past Anthony's line when he said I can see if it's a landmark birthday twenty one sweet sixteen and then he goes nine <laughs> yes I, I did oh, that's okay I, oh no did you just check your bill no no, no 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 what's wrong what's wrong oh nothing oh usage let's see um just check the usage oh Jesus of course he is well then how about helping us out. Wait, what happened? Exactly. What happened? <laughs> Here it is. Um, I, I don't. I don't know how to. Uh... Oh well. There you go. Of course. <gasps> uh, Matt in California. What's up? What's up, boy? Hey. Hey, I was just uh, calling. A uh, caller earlier said <laughs> Never talking passed. about insurance on your phone bill and said something about a thirteen-year-old that wasn't even driving. It's not car insurance. It's insurance on your phone. If you break it, you call them and they send you a new one. I know, but you think, right. I think they send you a used one. All, comp all really? the phone companies have that, and you'll get a refurbished. That's the word they'll uh, use, refurbished. Refurbished. That's used. Like it's, it's furbished again. I've never gotten anything <laughs> furbished. I don't know what it I, means. I just wanted furbished. Did I have a furbished <laughs> phone? No, no, don't <laughs> furbish it again. <laughs> How do you furbish something? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tim, put this together from earlier. Anthony Cumia's seminar for a greener planet. I uh, completely believe in global warming now, and we have to do something about this because we're doomed. Yeah.
Reichel. Join Anthony in his fight for a cleaner world. The second ice age coming if we don't watch out. Anthony Cumia's seminar for a greener planet. The ice caps are melting, Opie. The ice caps. Ten years, Europe can be frozen. Armageddon is right around the corner in your lifetime. Make the world a better tomorrow for your children and your children's children. I'd say by the day after uh, tomorrow, we're pretty much uh, done. The Anthony Cumia seminar for a greener planet on the Opie and Anthony Show. It's the end I, of the world. I was taken out of context. No, you weren't. That's what you said. I there. was taken out of context. Some of, some of those words were indeed mine. No, you're in, you're now officially an environmentalist. But, but for the most, I'm an environmentalist. Yeah, that, that, Oof, that'll be the day. It says it right there. I am not. It says it right there. Let's go to CJ in New York. Oh. What's up, CJ? Yeah, what's going on, man? Hey. 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 Quick question for you, man. I listen to you guys every fucking morning. You guys aren't hilarious. Ooh, hold on, you're cursing, sir. That didn't go out over the radio. Just yeah, we want a lot of people to hear what you're saying, so try not to curse too much, okay? Not a problem. All right, go ahead, CJ. I listen to you guys every morning. You guys are hilarious. I caught uh, Jimmy Norton's Monster Rain on HBO. That guy, he just, I mean, I don't know. He had me falling over, you know? Thank you. But everybody's whining in the morning about these cell phone charges, but you get these people that run around and all they do is talk on their damn cell phone all the time. We're not... And then they, so hold on. We're not complaining about being charged to use the phone. And this is not just AT&T. Every company does it. I, I had it with Verizon, too. That there's these, and now we talk about hidden charges. They, oh, they find reasons just to continually raping you. They can't just be square with you as, as a consumer. Oh, they anally, they anally violate you every time you turn around. They get you coming just, and they get you coming. But you, you need the service. You, you want the service. It's a convenience factor, you know, because nobody sir, can use their home phone. Y- yes, you're right. Again, I'm not complaining about the service. What I'm complaining about is when they put on charges like a usage charge and a, a tax and, and this and that and this that you're not supposed to have to pay. That's my complaint. <laughs> they tax you on the tax. You actually get the ta- they tax you on your tax that you that they charge you on your damn phone, you know? They owe all the taxes eleven dollars and twenty seven cents. Well you gotta tack on another seventy cents because you eleven dollars and twenty seven cents equals seventy cents in tax. But it seems to me Governor Pataki he don't care about that. What the, he has no he has no stake in that. It's the gas prices that he cares about. Governor Pataki? Governor Pataki. CJ, I'm I, calling from another time. This is fascinating. CJ, when are you going to get to the your your you want to say who gives a ass gas prices are worse? That's right. Gas prices need to be adjusted. Yes, they do, but they're not mutually adjusted. Yeah, maybe we could just adjust them. Okay, ten dollars a barrel. <laughs> you can do both of these things. You don't have to make a decision. <laughs> gas or cell phones, folks. It's up to you. Can't why pick and choose. If you were on a desert island. Uh, here it is. My current balance. Last payment received, $215. Uh, current balance, and this, I'm not even closed yet, $200.39. For what? This is four, over 400 bucks for two months of service. Dude, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I have to call and ask questions. But calling is a pain in the ass, too. Just for, oh, they Any got all, type of customer service you got to deal with. They got it all figured out. You have to call to find out the answers, but we all know that's no a one calls. Nightmare, so yeah. just continue. You know that I, I still pay for AOL. I haven't checked it in two to three years because I know it's going to be a pain in the ass. That's what I did to call them and, and just cancel the dumb it. thing. Dude, call seven years, seven years. I had AOL and I never used it. Two accounts. Just get boom, boom every month, every month, and then finally I'm going through my bill. I said, you know, I'm going to call them and cancel. It took hours to cancel, and I got one of those guys that was ju- just wouldn't let you cancel. Well, look, we'll leave you signed up. We'll cancel the account, but you still have like six months free. And t- I go, no, I don't. Just cancel it. Completely cancel it right now. Uh, you do understand we have these offers that ca- – holy Jesus, just cancel the goddamn service. I joined a gym recently, uh, a new gym, and they're going to take, you know – my fee out monthly from my credit card. And I'm like, oh, you're doing that because you're going to get so many people that are going to like pay for two, three, four, five a year before they go, wait a minute, I'm still paying I'm for paying the gym for membership that. and I don't go there anymore. And then they finally cancel. I'm like, this is a, a wonderful revenue stream for you guys. You you know if, if you take money out of someone's credit card month after month that uh, you're going to get a lot of people that aren't going to be paying too much attention and they're going to be paying for something they're not using anymore. He goes, yeah, you're absolutely right, but you know it's corporate policy, and what can I tell you? I'm just, I just work here, but you know what? Yeah, yeah. Between me and you, you're absolutely right. That's why they do these things. They figured out little revenues, you know, streams. They they know the percentage of people 
They probably do their research. That will not cancel the service uh, right away and will uh, allow a company to continue taking out charges uh, from their credit card before they mm-hmm. finally wake up and go, wait a minute here. Yeah. Just a scam. Because they try to make it sound like it's easier for you that we just take your fee out uh, monthly. Yes there, Jimmy. Current balance. Uh, hold on. $169.73. And uh, I'm supposed to have the $100 plan too, right? Yeah. So where is this extra money going from? I don't know. Shouldn't use... a $100 plan mean? Be $100. I hate that crap. Like a- any anytime I sign up for a phone and I have like a, a plan, you know, wh- whether it was $39, $49, $59, whatever it is, that was my bill. So I really never went over anything. I, and I, I always uh, signed up for the whatever I could uh, unlimited whether it's d- data transfer or whatever. Yeah. And I'm noticing that I'm paying twice what I'm supposed to be paying, is, at least. Is it $100? Now, this is, I saw a $40 thing, too. Is it $100 for unlimited phone and then 40 for additional uh, unlimited data? Maybe that's the thing, like with texting. I don't know. I, don't, I want somebody I who knows this. Got to read, gotta read um, your contract. Can someone print out a contract? Read your contract. Can someone print out an AT&T contract? Where is it? Good luck. Huh? Good luck. Another one. Exactly. I went, I went and got a camera recently, and they had a special or whatever. And they said, uh, I don't, know, I don't remember exactly, but just follow me. You'll understand. It was like let's say four hundred ninety nine dollars. I'm like, ooh, four hundred ninety nine dollars, perfect. Right. Uh, plus tax, uh, warranty. Then we got this guard thing, and then we uh, do this, and then we get you know for an extra twenty bucks, we'll give you this and this, and then and, and all of a sudden they just threw so many charges at me. I'm like. That that camera that that is like advertised four hundred and ninety nine. I'm walking out like seven hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, what happened to the four hundred ninety nine dollar? Doesn't camera? exist. Why Doesn't th- exist. I would love a company to go look. Here it is. This camera right here is going to cost you exactly this. We ain't going to mess with you. By yeah. First of all, make it prices uh, prices four ninety nine because four ninety nine sounds like you're paying you know in the four hundreds for a camera. No, right. it's five hundred dollars. It's five hundred bucks. But it looks right better to, to see. With. It looks better to see four instead of five. Yeah. When you're trying to save a little money. They do that to you every time. And and I never take any of the uh, warranty ec- extended warranty things. Never. That's betting. You're placing a bet. That what you just bought is going to br- break. You're hoping it breaks so you uh, can get uh, your dollars worth out of that plan. And I think like, they'll give you a refurbished one anyway. They won't give you a new one. All right, refurbished. I'd like one that has been furbished again, please. Furbished. Here you are. Uh, can you? Um, what is to furb something? I don't know. This is furbished. <laughs> you move that out of the way. Thank you, E Rock. Jesus Christ. Why would you put up the iPhone terms and conditions and then like decide you need to instant message someone over the thing? Because he's E Rock. Just move it to the side and then you can you can do both things at one time. Uh, let's see. Uh, cell phone company uh, imposes monthly regulatory cost recovery charge of up to one twenty five to help defray costs incurred in complying with state and federal telecom regulations, state and federal universal service charges, and surcharges for customer based and revenue based state and local assessments on AT and T. Uh, these are not taxes or government required charges. International messages not included. Charges for international messages sent from the U S are twenty five cents for text messages and fifty cents for picture slash video messages. Additional charges for premium messages and content apply messages over 300 kbs build an additional 50 cents per message <laughs> terms applicable. thank you for clearing that you, up you, you jumped over something what it said not these are not government charges yeah. or taxes yeah so what exactly are they well this is how what, they, what? this is how they get you You're like this is like trying to like read a foreign language terms applicable to Nation Family Talks GSM plans credit approval required. Subscribers must live and have a mailing address within AT and T's own network coverage area. An early termination fee of a dollar one hundred and seventy five applies if service is terminated before the mm. end of the contract term. If, oh, if phone is returned within three days, activation fee will be refunded. If phone is returned within fourteen days, in like new condition with all components, early termination fee will be waived. Service may be canceled after fourteen days, but within thirty days, an early termination fee will be waived. But equipment may not be returned. All other charges. Wait. Apply. 30? Some dealers impose additional fees. Uh, minute increment billing and usage. Airtime and other measured usage are billed in full minute increments, and actual mm-hmm. airtime and usage are rounded up to the next full increment at the end of each call for billing purposes. Days? Uh, charges a full uh, phone company charges a full minute increment of usage for every fraction of the last minute used to each 
uh, on each wireless call. I mean, some of this you pick up, but most of this is like you, your brain starts to explode. Minutes will be depleted according to usage in the following order. Night and weekend minutes, mobile to mobile minutes, anytime minutes, and rollover minutes. Calls placed on networks served by other carriers may take longer to be processed, and billing for these calls may be delayed. Those yeah. minutes will be applied again against your anytime monthly minutes in the month in which the calls appear on your bill. Unanswered outgoing calls for 30 seconds or longer incur airtime. You may obtain usage information by calling customer service or using one of our automated systems. Pricing, taxes, no pro, uh, proration. Uh, final month's charges are not uh, prorated. But Prices why is my bill two hundred dollars? I'm getting to it. Prices are subject to change. Prices do not include taxes. Activation fees: thirty-six dollar activation fee for each new line. Twenty-six dollar activation fee applies on each additional family talk line. Nights and weekends: nights are nine p.m. to six a.m. Weekends are nine p.m. Friday to six a.m. Monday, based on time of day and switch providing your service, including long distance calls, can be made from the fifty. Oh, oh my God! This, I have to go all the way down to here. This is like 20 pages. This is calls can be made from the 50 United States, uh, Puerto Rico, and U.S. Virgin Islands to the 50 United States, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, and Northern Mar- Mariana that, that's Islands. Terrible. I'm sorry. Roaming charges do not apply when roaming within the service area of land-based networks of the 50 United States, Puerto Rico, and U.S. Virgin Islands. International long Stop distance rates vary. Additional charges apply to services Stop. used outside the land borders of the U.S., Puerto Stop. Rico, Quiet. and U.S. Virgin Quiet. Islands. Unlimited voice services. Quiet. Unlimited. Voice services are provided Quiet. solely for live dialogue between two individuals. Stop Unlimited it. voice services may not be used Stop for it. conferencing, calling, call forwarding, monitoring it services, sucks. data transmissions, transmissions of broadcast, Hello. transmission of Hello. recorded material, Hello. or other connections Hello. which do not consist of uninterrupted live dialogue between two individuals. If a t finds that you are using an unlimited voice service offering for other than live, Turn it off. for other than live dialogue between two individuals, uh, the whole company may, at its option, terminate your service or charge your plan to one with no unlimited use in comments. Phone company will provide notice that it intends to take any of the above actions and you may terminate the agreement. International roaming. Substantial charges may be incurred if phone is taken out of the U.S. Even if those services are intentionally used off net usage. If your minutes of use, including unlimited services on other carrier networks, off net usage during any two consecutive months, exceed your off net usage Shut allowance. Up. Phone company may add its option Shut terminate your service. Up. Deny your. Continue use of other covers or change your plan to one imposing usage charge Bless for off net usage. Over, your off net usage over. allowance is equal to the lesser of 750 Shut minutes of the of the anytime minutes included with your plan. Phone company will provide notice if it intends Shut to take any of the above up. actions and you may terminate the agreement. Oh, caller ID blocking your billing name may be displayed along with your Good. wireless numbers on outbound calls and other wireless and landline Bueller. calls. With caller ID Bueller. capability, Bueller. contact customer service Bueller. for information on blocking the display of your name. You may be charged for both an incoming and an outgoing call when incoming calls. Can you dig that? Or add it to voicemail it even if no message is left. See wireless service agreement for additional <laughs> conditions and restrictions. Family talk. <laughs> Who the F, dude? No, no, no! no. Okay. Oh, E-Rock. We didn't even get all, all into rollover minutes, mobile to mobile minutes, term application to features, voice dials, wireless data service terms and conditions, general terms and conditions applicable uh, to the phone company, data service including but not limited features that may be used with data service and wireless content. I just wanted to know why. But keep going, keep going. Look at how long this thing is. They do this on purpose. Look, yeah, it's a, that's they, what I'm getting they at. Know no one's, no one's going to read it. Eh, who cares? They, they know that, to me, if you unravel this, you can probably have charges knocked off, but they know that you're not going to because it's only a few bucks a month, but do that you know, times five million customers and you make a lot yeah. of money. So I'm, I'm just going to have to call and what? ask, hey. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Mm. Go to the top of this. I know this is a visual, but maybe we'll try to, I mean, okay, all the way to the top. Okay, we're oh. on the internet. Watch this scroll by. Who the F is going to read this and understand, like, a part it's of this? teeny, tiny text. That keep, it's keep going. Still it's scrolling. Str- it, E-Rock's been scrolling the whole time. Still scrolling. Keeps, yep. It's scrolling, like a mortgage. Scrolling. Yeah. It would ha- honestly, it would probably take me... A minimum of a half hour to read this whole thing at fast speed on the radio. A can, minimum. Can we have Probably longer. A word count? Do you know you can put that in a word document? I'd love to see how many words that contract is. Well, look at the bottom of this thing. Uh, pulled. Hold on. Hold on. Go to the bottom. Go to the bottom again. Uh, a little further up. I just saw something. 
pulled data connect plans. Hmm, that might be it. <laughs> and then they talk about no additional uh, kilobyte charge. Ah, see, that's the problem. Additional kilobyte charge. Do you know what a CRU is? Yeah, I do. That's right. what, what's a CRU? It's married to one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know, but I know what that first word is. All right, there you go. Foundation account. <laughs> do you know what a foundation account is? Sure. Uh, you do. What yeah. is it, Jimmy? That's the, when the foundation decides that they need to make calls, they get an account. Yeah. All right. Of course, the account that. upon which other accounts are built. <laughs> well, let's not forget, guys. See our, here, go to this down here. Upon which? <laughs> right, don't forget, too, by the way, CRUs on pool plans and CRUs participating in a... Legacy pool data connect plan pool created prior to February 17, 2006. Uh, uh, legacy pool cannot be in the same pool, but can be within the same fan. That's the do with pools. End users on non-pooling uh, plans may be included in the same fan as CRUs on pool plans. However, mm -hmm. these non-pooling end users will not receive the pooling benefits or contribute included usage to a pool. I don't know what that even I means. rest my case, Judge! People are asking, is the pool heated? 6,707 uh, words. How many pages does that come out to? 11. 11 Six pages? 6,000 word contract. And you're supposed to sit there at the phone store while you're waiting to get the phone, <laughs> phone. read that first. Wait a minute. Can I have my lawyer go over this paragraph with you? I want to know. And Oh, you, you read this. And the first I did? Paragraph, I don't even know what I read. <laughs> and, and I don't think this take is exclusive break, to AT&T. It's, it's the one thing here. AT&T, and again, this may be Verizon and all of them, also imposes a monthly regulatory cost recovery charge up to $1.25 to help defray. What does defray mean exactly? Uh, it's like defer. Only fraying. Defray means recapture <laughs> costs yes. incurred in complying with state and federal telecom regulations, state and federal universal service charges, and surcharge for customer-based and revenue-based state and local assessments onto AT and T. Like they're just. So like in other they, words, they have to it's like this. we have to pay this, but we don't want to. Want so you're YouTube. paying it. <laughs> That's pretty what much are they what that doing? means. I want. I would love to do that. Look, uh, I'm gonna have to charge you more. Because I got, I got like, bills to pay. <laughs> All right, listen, we got to take a break. We went okay. real late. Uh, we should talk about contracts in general after the break. Yes. yes. they got to make contracts easy so we can start well, lawyers again, need Instead a... of just uh, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. It's Opie and Anthony. Hi, this is Adam Ferrara. Where am I going to be? Well, I will tell you. November 14th through the 18th, I will be at Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio. For tickets, call 216-736-4242. 736 Four two four two. Hey, it's Rob Bartlett. December fifteenth. Rob Bartlett back at the brokerage, Belmore, Long Island. The big fat Christmas show. The brokerage, Merrick Road, Belmore, one five one six seven eight one. Laugh. And that's L-A-F-F. -F. Because you know why? It's wacky to spell it that way. And of course, you know, the one is only if you're outside the 516 area. Code. You're coming in from Suffolk or, you know, from Jersey because you have nothing else better to do on December 15th. The big fat Christmas show at the brokerage. Show. Something big. Kind of like that log you left for your girlfriend to find. Ah, getting ready to play What Did We Learn on the Opie and Anthony Show. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything today? We never learn anything. Did ya? Yeah, they learned my whole thing on Earth. Ooh. Right? I learned that somehow uh, my words got twisted around to turning me into an environmentalist. Yeah, we learned today that like Anthony that. is now an environmentalist. I don't believe in I, uh, warming. I explained why, like, the seasons are changing. 
It's called my woo 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 theory. It's where it twists and tips over. Yeah. Did, did we do any ringtones today? That's the only thing we didn't do on the show today. We got a lot done, but uh, I think you could probably uh, cull some ringtones. T- t- yeah. Ding. Uh, just from the audio of the show. Okay. I think there was enough funny little lines that could be used as ringtones. Uh, we need the sound for tomorrow. We got this thousand dollars a day contest. Mm-hmm. We play a sound between seven and seven thirty. And if you're the tenth caller after you hear the sound, you win a thousand dollars. Just for listening to Opie and Anthony. So easy. I got tomorrow sound. Yeah. You ready for this one? Please. This is what you're listening for for tomorrow. Okay. What? I just gotta put my headphones on. Oh. oh. The Negro. <laughs> What the hell is that from? <laughs> That's from that uh, old school. <laughs> My uh, baby is oh, black. All right. Is that going to be too short? Is it? Because if, it, if it's too short, then we could use. My baby is. Well, we don't want to confuse people. Is that too short? I don't think try, it's too let's short. Try the other one, though. My baby. Negro. That's perfect. That's not too short. Yeah. What do you think? We can't change it now. Sure, we can. It's in the rules. <laughs> But no, the it's rules, in the contest rules. Did the rules ever say we had to do it the day before and say it only once, or we have to do it? No, we, we, we can sort it out. Yeah, we're sorting it out. Well, let's go with this. Tomorrow between 7 and 7.30, uh, we'll be playing this. The Negro. That will be your like cue you <laughs> to call and be the 10th caller. If you right. are, you'll win $1,000. By the way, uh, all these sounds are on onandaradio.com. Just in case maybe you, you can't linger longer and you don't. You know, pick up on the sound. You could just go over to onda.radio.com. It's listed pretty much right there on the top, top left, I, I believe. All right, let's, goody good. Let's play. Uh, what did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show today? It's uh, Gary in Missouri. What's up, Gary? Uh, not much. I learned today that Jimmy lived with mommy and daddy till he was thirty years old. Yep. <laughs> I know, dude. It's awful. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> That's what I deserve. Thirty. Is that worse than? Than me, I I uh, moved out at eighteen, came back at twenty eight, and then had to live with mom and dad after being out of the house for ten nah, years. Is I mean, that worse? It, what you dealt with might be more frustrating, but no. What's worse is at least you had ten years and hit a rough spot, and then came back and left again. I had from the time I was eighteen twelve more. I used to get hookers. I would put up the sun visor in my parents' driveway so a mother couldn't look out the window <laughs> oh, and see no. her son humiliate himself. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we're, lear- <laughs> we're in the middle of what did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show, and I just learned that a- Oh, yeah, I'm going to say it. A doozy! You got prostitutes in, in, in the driveway? Many times. What? And I had a visor. What a safe place. The sun visor that keeps the sun from heating up your car. I would pop the, that up. The big ridiculous one? Yeah, the big pieces of like tinfoil or whatever you put in your... Oh, uh, those things. Yeah, those things. No, no, yeah, the, what are they called? Sun blockers. Yeah, yeah. It's you like put a, them in your car and you go to the beach so that, that they keep the sun from beating down yeah. <laughs> onto your seat. So I would put that up in the front so if you walk by the car, you couldn't look in the window oh, and God, see anything. You're, you're awful. Do we have Jimmy's mom's phone call? We haven't played that in a while. It might be uh, a great way to end today. The, did they have any idea? Dad had to know. No, they were in bed. But I just didn't, you know, I'd park in the driveway and have a one. Why would you park in the driveway? Safe. Just safe. Sa- safe. Cop can't bother my own driveway. Yeah, that's true. The sun visor up. That's a great place to go. Did you ever see a light come on or? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think so. Yeah. Wow. Do you think they knew it was going on? I don't know. Any point? I'm not sure. When they'd, when they'd walk in and maybe, you know, the front of my pants would smell like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they assumed that somebody had, had yeah, drugs. Yeah, could have a problem. <laughs> uh, cocaine dribble. Let's go to Jeremy in Cleveland. Good afternoon, Cleveland, by the way. Jeremy, what's up? Hello, b- b- boys. I learned that Anthony's going to convert his house to solar power. Linger longer. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Uh, let's go to Polk. Is it Polk in Connecticut? What's up, Polk? That's right, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Uh, today, I learned that uh, blind people are way more dumber than humans. Linger longer. Linger longer. Oh, Jesus. All right. Hey, we got, uh, can we play your mom's voicemail? It's been a while, Jimmy. If we have time as we're walking out, yeah. As long as I don't have to listen to it. You don't like listening to it? Oh, I don't mind. I've just. But you took her advice. That's You found a nice girl. You you hit the gym. You settled down. Why it's don't the, you settle it's down? It's all the things she said in this voicemail, if you think about it. it. did. So it's nice to look back. That is true. To reflect, as we say, I uh, mm. I did settle down. I did meet a nice girl. Jimmy's uh, nice. 
Jimmy's mom, you know, listens to the show, and she, are you all right with this? I'm not. I don't want to do oh, this. Oh yeah, not all right fine, of course. Okay, and um, she was kind of bothered with some of the things Jimmy was discussing on the show, including uh, uh, his his life with prostitutes. Yeah, and uh, well, she left this very very awkward voicemail on Jimmy's. Uh, machine there and i actually put it as the final track on my second cd oh, that's mm. right. so everyone can hear mother and mother. Hear her lovely little voice mother here it is hi sweetheart it's mom how are you jimmy i know this is a little awkward but everyone's fine here but I, we heard the radio show we love it by the way and you were talking about giving up you know the ladies of the evening um, which is a wonderful thing. But you know what? Dr. Phil always says replace something with something. So I was thinking, you know, you have that nice gym downstairs. And, you know, just for like 20 minutes to half an hour and you would feel better. Use that. And also there's gyms in New York you could go. You could exercise and uh, you would feel a whole lot better. You'd lose a little weight. You'd tone up. And you relieve, you know, tension and stuff, and you'd be meeting other people. I don't know, honey. I just thought it might be a good thing. I'm sorry. I'm interfering. I know. I just i am thinking of you. Nobody knows I'm calling. So uh, don't get offended or think I'm strange, but I am a mother, and I worry about you. You're doing so well. Everything's falling into place. This might be just one of the, you know, the health thing. It would help, it would help you, sweetheart. Well, anyway, that's it. I'm not going to go on and on. I know it's not my business. But anyway, I love you, and I feel I can interfere because I'm your mother. I'm taking special license. But anyway, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you at Christmas, and I really hope you can make it. And uh, anyway, don't be mad at me, okay, sweetie? I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. It's my favorite part. Don't be mad at me. Like yeah. Jimmy just comes goes over there. Why did you say this? Yeah, why would I be mad? Start punching her. Did she read your book? I don't know. I never asked, and I don't want to know. Hope not. Wow. Of course I'm you sure read they it. did. I'm sure they did. Of course you read it, Jimmy. Oh, I thought there was something going on over there, no? Okay. All right, guys. That's where we'll leave today's show. Yar. Hope you had a good time. We did. Yeah. We're going to go over to another joint now. And, uh, and the not, festivities continue. We're going to go curse. And if you're not uh, <laughs> joining us, well, you know, have a good day. And, and, ah. Uh, and yeah. love one another. As you would have. Ah, screw it. And don't forget that Anthony is now. An environmentalist. Congratulations yes. for going green, Ant. I'm going green. Congratulations. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Amen. Bye. The Opie and Anthony Show. Opie and Anthony. Rire. Hey there, father muckers. Wah, wah, wah. Ah, that's better. Here we are. XM Satellite Radio. The future of radio. The future. Right? It entails rocketry and man-made objects in orbit in outer space. 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 Yes. It's truly the future. I was feeling it. Had an uncomfortable uh, look from, from Tom on the way out. Ah, it's all right. We didn't know. In the end, we didn't know. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. All right, what are we doing over here today? Well, somebody brought up Atlantic City. No, we didn't. They did. Uh, the Borgata. I hear there's going to be a very funny comic. How long are you going to talk about that? There. Who cares? January 18th and 19th? It's irrelevant. My Borgata shows me nothing. Forget them. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> Just forget them. But Martin Luther King's birthday I wanted to discuss. That happens to be the weekend I'm going to be there. And oh. I, I think it's important that we discuss uh, the great Dr. King. Yes. Happy birthday. Today? No, no, in January. Oh. In January, <laughs> See, of course. Not, no, not today. When he's going to be there. January 18th, 19th. That's his weekend. I think it's the Monday is his birthday. I yeah. Don't know. But they celebrate... 
But everyone takes Monday off. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I think the only named person we get a holiday off for now is Martin Luther King. Lincoln's birthday, Washington's birthday became President's Day. Yeah. Uh, I believe the only person's name that's a day off is Martin Luther King. Hmm. Really? I believe so, yeah. Very interesting. I think so, too. It's amazing how the uh, tides have changed. So, uh... Amazing. We're trying to do fart trivia this coming Friday? Yes, but we cannot say fart trivia on CBS, so we have to go some other way to say it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for some reason, they don't want us to say fart trivia, so what? it's going to be called what? Cunt lip. Uh, it's so <laughs> weird how they <laughs> settled on that. <laughs> you have some water, please? <laughs> Why, are you me. are you parched? Yeah, I just want water. Yeah. All right, let's uh, get Jimmy some water. So, wh- how do we get the people for the fart trivia, Than? How do we get them? Yeah. If they're interested, they can email. Oh boy, the mic isn't on. Do we have a prize? I don't have that. Uh, they're working on. Where's Steve? I hope they have our- a prize. Well, let's see what the prize is. We had some stuff lying around the prize closet. Which- where's, where's Steve? Here he is. Where's nope. Steve? Wow, That's this. Eric. This list is getting shorter every day, huh? <laughs> which, one's, which one's that? This used to be two or three pages. <laughs> oh. The O&A commercial radio station list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, That's still pretty impressive. Just under 20 it's stations fine. still. Where, uh, where's Steve? I don't know. He's probably uh, scrolling. Scroll, 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 for a hundred bucks or one hundred fifty bucks, and then a whole bunch of uh, stuff that's in, stuff that's in the prize closet over at uh, the other place. Which is what? Yeah, oh, which you know, is like what? The best of Christopher Walken on Saturday Night Live. Uh-huh. So basically, we got a hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate. Yeah, is to that get them? Is that it, Steve? Yeah, as far as uh, as far as the the prizes, without going to a sponsor. All right. Yeah. So why don't we just say we have no prizes? <laughs> hundred and fifty bucks. I'll cough that up. Yeah, not for for this, but for other things. Hundred and fifty dollar prize we have. Ooh, wow! Hmm. Line up, folks. I think we're going to need some more initiative. Yeah. Well, uh, more incentive. I mean, uh, to have these people show up. Uh, or, for or fart just, trivia. Or, or we'll just cancel the contest. Who gives yeah. a shit? No, but I wanted to do it. I, it I wanted to be fun. I wanted to be called fart trivia. Simple as that. Not what is it now called? <laughs> Trivia? Uh, fart trivia. by any other name. Oh my god. Yeah. That's funny. Would that was still so smell awful. like fucking hot garbage and sizzling. Thank you. <laughs> See, I was trying to make a point that it really doesn't matter what the name of the uh, the contest is. I agree. Um, if we call it something ridiculous, I like the noise because it's so stupid and it's so obvious that we can't say the word. All right, can we get pro- uh, promos together for <laughs> trivia? Of course. But right, working on that right now. All can right, we? Because to to change the wording of it, because they won't let us say fart trivia. To change the wording wouldn't make sense because then it sounds like you're trying to tap dance around fart, which is what you're trying to do. And it's just like it's gonna be too cute, you know. The, you know the uh, the gas. I know so it's gonna sound like it. we came up with a, a wacky name for it yeah. when we just want it to be straightforward. Yeah, fart trivia right. says it all. I think we need better prizes though. To be honest, I think if we're gonna yeah. get people in. We need more than a hundred fifty dollars. Gift certificate. Is the problem that no one wants to sponsor this? Is that what no, we're getting? No, it was really just the, they wanted to focus on the other big things we have going on in December. And What? Like what? Homeless shopping spree. <laughs> <What? eggnog. laughs> we can't do that in drive time. <laughs> what? <laughs> they wanted to focus their 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 uh, their their energy on those and uh, those. Just, you, what you said was a that. Yeah, and they're not, not focusing energy Sorry. on that. <laughs> it was a that. You okay. said the the homeless shopping, shopping spree. spree and uh, and eggnog. <clears throat> what did I say? I just heard homeless. Yeah, homeless shopping spree and eggnog were the two other ones they wanted to focus their energy okay. on, so they didn't have to. So, uh, what do we have prizes for that? Uh, we were waiting. We have cash prizes and other like <laughs> vacations. I think you don't have any vacations left to sell. Okay. Well, what about um, 
For, what, what do we have for, for uh, the eggnog thing? Like, what vacations to where? I think one of the one of the prizes for eggnog is a Colorado vacation, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm surprised they didn't have something to do with one of the affiliates. A flight to Cleveland or a, a bus <laughs> yeah. ride to Boston. A <laughs> ski trip. It's like an all-expenses paid ski trip. A flight trip, to Cleveland on Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you gonna, just, yeah, that's what you want. You get a, fucking, a ride down to, to fucking D.C., but only between 10 and 1 in the afternoon. <laughs> On the uh, a cellar. <laughs> all right, well, when are we doing home shopping spree? When are we doing eggnog drinking contest? Let's set some dates right now. Get the planner out. Let's go. I thought we had dates we already. Dates. And uh, do we have a venue for eggnog drinking? Uh, uh, we're doing it out for the people this year. Yeah, we. I think we almost have a date, uh, uh, a venue. Uh, Hard Rock. Not, yeah, of I course. Think so. it, it was going to be that. That, that is that the only one. venue in New York? No, City? they they looked in the. We other love them. Trust me. We, no, great, we no. love them. We uh, adore them. It would run, be nice to just maybe do something a little different. Are we doing it in the morning now? Yeah, we are doing it in the morning. Why is it going to be harder to get people there in the morning? No, not for eggnog drinking challenge. Eggnog. I'm sorry. No, these fuckers are going to come out of the wood. Work to no, see no, the eggnog would, drinking no. contest live. I was thinking about the uh, the, the, the homeless. No, homeless is that's a whole other. No, because uh, what uh, we can only get 500, 600 people at the Hard Rock. That we'll fill that up right. nice and early. We did when we broadcast live in Philly at that venue. They were lined up around the freaking uh, corner at four thirty in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. So we'll we'll be fine. That's easy. Homeless shopping spree. We're going to do on a Saturday. On a Saturday, like we did um, last year. Mm -hmm. Do we have a date for that? Uh, we're looking at December 15th. December 15th, homeless shopping spree. All right. We got to start talking to the homeless guys. Mm -hmm. And eggnog drinking contest is yeah. usually like right after freaking uh, Thanksgiving. So it's uh, we're looking at the 7th, I think. It's a Friday. Yes. November 7th? No, December, 7th. December 7th. I mean, December 7th? Yeah. yeah. That's right, man. Obviously. Okay. What is that for? Eggnog. Eggnog. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Great. <laughs> Just trying to figure it out. Why? Don't know. I'm just wondering. All right. All right. And we'll uh, start promoting it. So we got to start getting people that want in on the eggnog drinking contest. Is Pat from Minaki uh, showing up again this year? Yes, he is. The current uh, does, champion? What else does he really have to do? It's his day, really. It's, not, it's, it's not Pat Minaki day. It's not Who are you cleaning. <laughs> we want some real competitors this year. Are we getting, uh, are we getting a dude from uh, Nathan's that won this year? Remember he wanted in? Joey uh, Chestnut? Oh, uh, that's the thing. Is he part of that scroll, ISOC scroll, scroll, thing? Scroll, 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 scroll
Why don't we get you into a, like a real moving company or something that will give you a yeah. real nice vanner? You ever think of working for someone else, working for the man? Ooh. No, I huh? kind of like my freedom. I'm an independent contractor. Yeah, but how freedom. do you get your calls? On my, uh, I got a Nextel uh, radio. <laughs> they just call. I, I let them know I'm available, and then they, Bring. we got some wings. Great, uh, work for you. And how many hours <laughs> a week do you work there, Pat? Uh, I, I put in a good eight-hour day. So it, it, when I, when I'm like listening to the show, and I'm lingering longer in the morning, right? I'll work later at night. I was I picked up at the Hard Rock uh, last Friday night, like uh, ten o'clock at night. There was something I had to come back to Jersey. They're doing some kind of event, and I had to pick up like uh, lighting equipment. Ah, yeah. all, right. all right. So you're in. Eggnog drinking challenge is going down. You're in <laughs> <laughs> December seventh, which is a Friday. <laughs> oh, God. I think we're talking what four weeks away at this point. I'm in shrink. Oh, and my eating organization, yeah. they stink. Wow. Uh, they had a, uh, a tournament that they have, and they usually have the top people, and they build it as having the top 16 eaters, and I'm ranked 16th, and they skipped right over me. Why? Because I'm being uh, discriminated against, because I'm fat. I'm like the last fat guy in the organization. Oh, they're trying are to show really? that these are thin guys and they're athletes They're trying to show now. that they're athletes. Stop yeah, it. They, they said, it was something that was aired on Spike, and then they said, uh, they said, oh, we tried to get you in, but it was all Spike. And then the next event they had that was an invitational, they did the same thing. Well, how is it all Spike? If, if they're the ED organization, how does Spike TV... Because, Make, because the producers and whatnot, they approve. The, that's what. That's their story. So but I ain't buying it. Well, uh, well, then who's who's discriminating against you? People at Spike because they want fucking athletes. Uh, yeah, people who look like athletes anyway. <laughs> but, but maybe but, they but didn't. I'm ranked 16th, and they build it as the top 16 eaters in the world. Pat, maybe they just didn't notice. Sure wasn't 15. It's more of a round yeah, number. Yeah, what is it? Top 16. I Why don't know 16? What do they have to gain by like making sure you're not in on that? Maybe it was uh, just... Because they're trying to get characters. You're the biggest character. Well, He's fat. You do that fat waddle when they call your name at uh, the, you know, hey. the, the Nathan. <laughs> you could be the goofy David. guy. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. We, why don't we get somebody from the eating organization on the phone, Pat? I, I would like to straighten this out. Of course. Me too. Well, can you call one of these people? Uh, uh yeah, sure. Well said. <laughs> hey, Pat, you want to drink, like, uh, sugar-free eggnog this year so we don't risk you losing a toe? I got, I got nine left. Still has I nine after how many, right. how many eggnog challenges have we done? All right, Pat, hold on the line As for a, a second. Trooper. Yeah, you know, Pat, puke it up. Pat City will be uh, defending his title this year. It looks like December 7th is the official date. Tony in Philly, what's up? What's up? I was wondering when that contest is starting, so I want to sign up. Uh, December oh. 7th. You think uh, you can handle it? Uh, I've been practicing, actually, the 60 shots the other night. Everyone's so cocky. Did you really yeah, do 60? Yeah, I've been bragging. Yeah, 60. Wow. It's double shots, right? Double shots. Double shots. Yep, so that can't, it was 30 regular shots, so it's 60. But that was just the first night of messing around, so. So what? You just sat around with your friends and said, I got to try this? Well, they did Jaeger bombs. You did 60 Jaeger bombs? Stop. No, no, no. They just did regular Jaeger bombs, like, just hanging out. Oh, they were hanging out watching you just do double shots eggnog every minute? Yep, sitting around watching Fargo. We were bored. Okay. Well, What's should we... With that? Should we get... Should this guy just be in? Uh, yeah. Unless you know, you Tony, to it's, I, are, you, are you serious? You really did 60? Yeah. All right, you know what? You're in. It was that easy for you. It's not going to be All that right, easy well. for everybody else. But Tony Philly, hold on the line. You are a contestant in the eggnog drinking um, challenge this year. All right? Sounds good. All right, hold on the line. Uh, Pat. Pat. Pat died. <laughs> Pat. Oh, boy, Pat died. Pat. Pat. Yeah, he's dead. Yo, Pat. All right, he's gone. <laughs> he was dead. Pay my uh, phone bill. Let's go to Matt in Queens. Matt, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, um... Hey guys, uh, I went to Jimmy and uh, Bill Burr's shows this weekend. Yeah. So, the first of the last week and two free shows, but both of them killed, especially Jimmy. Thank you. And I want to say to you guys, it's really cool that both Jimmy and Oak can be down to earth and, you know, talk to normal people, even the guys that are real fancy people. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah don't. Nice to know that you can walk right up to you guys. And, 
Yeah, don't let others know that, though. I want to keep that uh, between oh, you. Yes, I have a reputation as a, yeah. as a gentleman. Yeah. A fancy oh. gentleman. Oh, well, you were a fancy gentleman the other night. Thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. That was a great show. That MySpace show was very funny, Caroline. Yeah, there was... Um, Thank you, man. There was uh, a gentleman who had gone down and seen Jimmy's show on uh, Friday and uh, said he met Opie there and Jimmy. And then uh, he just happened to be walking through the bar that I was in and turned his head and went... Holy shit. Oh, wow. It was Anthony. Could you sign this? <laughs> when he looked down at the floor, he started <laughs> happy to see you there. Close. No, he's a little too early for that. And I saw someone being escorted out, and I said, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> was, the, was, the, was the drinking a good one on Saturday? That was Friday. I mean, Friday, was it yeah. good? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Guinness and Jägermeister. Breakfast of fucking champions, my friend. Yeah. Than was there for a little bit. How'd you do, Than? Oh, good. Wasn't that good? Well, I stopped at two because I had a radio show the next day. So. Ah, that's true. And you, you were being responsible. That was true. He said he had a radio show to do. How did that work out? The big Than Sam uh, Ron and High guys. Society uh, radio off. Oh, we pwned. Did you? Oh, yeah. And this was determined between me and Sam. <laughs> I thought so. You guys did good? Yeah. How'd they do? Yeah. Uh. Just stunk up the joint? Yeah, you know, they tried hard. Really, really hard. Made for effort. Was it good or no? I don't know. I went to bed. There he came on after us, so. Well, did you hear any of the Bronx Johnny and the, who's the other guy, Pepper Show? Yeah. Sam, did you hear any of that? Well, <laughs> I heard like the first hour because I was driving home. Mm -hmm. and they spent a lot of time talking about us. Well, naturally. Did they? they didn't have. And I guess I read the message boards and the highlight of their show was that Jay Moore called in. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jay yeah. called it, so they well, had a celebrity. Who was your big celebrity? We don't need celebrities. We are the celebrities. Oh, boy. That's, that's, right. that's what some would say if they felt slighted. You guys are celebrities. Yeah. You're who celebrities the, in your own right. They had Jay Moore. Who was the biggest celebrity that called your show? There had to be somebody. Struff. Struff. From <laughs> the Sam fan club com. The Struff? Struff. Yeah. Oh, that's a biggie. Oh, all right. He's hard to get. That's yeah. strong. Yeah. All he, right. He didn't call into high society, so. Yeah. Uh, Pat's back. Uh, oh, alive. wow. Pat's Pat. back. We, we must have been disconnected, damn phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, that guy did 60 double shots of eggnog first, uh, first time out. Bring it on. He's practicing, and he's already done 60 double shots. I've heard it all before. How many did you do last year before you You're fat, decided stupid, to puke? <laughs> irresponsible? Your father I left. believe it was no, 75. <laughs> <laughs> That's 75, I believe, was the number. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. Now I'm getting uh, intel here. David L. from Philly. He said 30 regular shots, so that's 60. Yeah, that dude's an idiot, and you didn't even catch it. Yeah, well, he, he did, did catch it. He did 30 double regular, shots? No, 30 regular shots. That's 15 double shots. Oh, yeah. shit. That guy's done. Uh, get that guy back on the phone. I'm going to have to, you know, tell him he can't uh, be in the competition. Well, he might be an early puker, which would be good. That, wait, so if he did 30 regular shots, Jimmy's right. That's only 15 easy double shots. Easy out, easy out. Pat did 75 double shots? Yep. Can bring in the outfield. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> no batter, no batter. Yeah, Pat, I don't think anyone's going to beat you. Although I thought uh, Joey Chestnut had a shot, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, I don't think he can make it. Why? It's different than hot dogs. Uh, no, no, I'm just hoping he can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. He wants to emerge victorious. All right. Hey, we got a, a big crowd today. and they want They want to promote something. Do they? Do they? Do they? Who's the spokesperson out there? Who's the spokesperson for your for the Who speaks for you? Who speaks? I know this dude. Hey, How's doing, guys? I see a big, uh, big sign that says XM Radio Gold, the fans board. Wow, what is it? <laughs> yeah, a new uh, started last week. A new fan site. Get on mic, bro. This is the it's, big. You got to sell your site. All right. We're going public today. We huh. started, uh, you know, last week developing it. Google. And it's uh, the fan board. <laughs> Google. You know, huh? it's the board where uh, the fans are going to be. But that's what every board it's says. It's the fucking kiss-ass board without freedom of speech is what that is, motherfucker. <laughs> well, I was on another board and was told if I didn't like it to leave, so... I Let me tell you something. So now that's going to be some... fucking run by the radio station because fucking... 
Shut up. <laughs> so, not you. I'm so kidding. they said you could leave. So you decided to start. Uh, I, I'm not in on this whole political what's thing it, that's going it, on uh, out there. What's it but called? It's, it's called it. XMRadioGold.com. Oh, XMRadioGold.com. Yep. Okay. And this is going to start as a fan site, and then it'll morph into just no. another <laughs> website <laughs> that bitches yeah. about the fans. show. We're the fans that left a certain <laughs> other message board because uh, we're sick of the ruler. Gotcha. So, okay, this is the new board. XMRadioGold.com. Yep. And you're going to try to keep it more positive and negative. Definitely. That's positive. all I ask. I understand you know what? I understand there's negativity associated with every single fan site out there. I get that. But when it uh, comes uh, to the point where it's way more negative than positive, then I, I can't look at it as a fan site anymore. Yes. That's all. That's all. That's 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 my rules. That's how I look at things. We have, uh, it's, and it doesn't mean we can't be disagreeing with. There are plenty of people that disagreed with me, like on Whackbag about the Jericho situation, and plenty of people that agreed with me. Uh, I didn't like the way some of them took a certain tact about it because they, they were just wrong. I was sitting mm -hmm. here. And by the way, BJ Shea in Seattle fucking rules. Why? What happened? Because he had Jericho on, and Mister, I'm over it. First thing he says about me is like, "Oh, yeah, that guy's an idiot." So it's oh, like, do we have audio of that? Uh, I have it somewhere. I, I think I it's on. It. Actually, you know, I said that knowing I think we do. Well, I'm not really sure. Which is fine. I saw a YouTube video from BJ Shane and said Chris Jericho. Yeah. So that must be the audio. Of the, yeah. Look, can we get that? But BJ was just me and cool. BJ worked uh, together back in the day with Brother Weez. He's he's a he's just a stand up really guy. Is, man. Man. He's a great guy. It really is. So, uh, but but whatever. Plenty, plenty of people disagree with me on that. Eh, whatever. Well, you know what? Even though I've been jaded on a lot of message boards, when I go home. I will go, and I will register. Thank you. And uh, I will scope around a little bit and see uh, I uh, see how that is. I won't wonder what name I'll use. I'll support by mm -hmm. that. I won't register. All right. I've never Thanks registered for a fan know. site. Little known fact about, about me. <laughs> never had an official name. Well, I did for maybe a week, and I posted once, and then it got slammed. and said, all right, I get this. Well, I, I can't be part of this. If you don't <laughs> register, you can't become a super admin and boot people off for not seeing things your way. What I love is when people, I love when people <laughs> love that one. are ultra critical about like pal talk and other things. And when you see they have 15,000 posts or 12,000. Oh, I know. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not saying there's anything even wrong with being a part of a message board community. It's fun. You fucking hang with people. You're talking shit. But it's like when you trash one way of communication and you spend that many hours doing it, like, how do you come off trashy one? But like yours is fine. Look who Silly. you're talking about. Good you point. Know? Look at the, the the ilk you're talking about there. All right. That's how. XMRadioGold.com. Thumbs up out there. Thumbs down. What's going to be the um, the official uh, gang sign of that no, site no sucks? So I'm done with that. Because uh, that was always a good one. Hmm? <laughs> were there other names you guys were thinking oh, of? Oh, there were Every, gang signs. The number one name I wanted <laughs> to do was Linger yes. Longer, but it's taken. LingerLonger.com. What do you think? Everything's taken. I want to say hi to my Linger Longer pals out there. I saw that. I saw that thread. Oh, what Linger? I, I wouldn't even know what that is. Is there? Is there actually a, a site? <laughs> no, a thread. Mm. It's some type of like uh, I don't know bed company or something. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, the actual yeah, LingerLonger.com for like a few years. So I don't think I'm, I don't think we can get that. Well, there you go. XMRadioGold.com. Doesn't. And will you be squishing bugs every once in a while? If somebody needs to be squished. Uh, ooh, I like that. I like that. I like that in like, <laughs> let's give us a few months. That fucking XM Radio Gold yeah. site. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, they all start oh. out really, really cool and nice, and we get excited, and then we're like, oh, boy. Well, I'm kidding, of this course. One. This is the fans board. All right. I'd like to cool. hear that. All right. So it's XMRadioGold.com. Up yep. and running today? Yep. Yeah, I see like a uh, total of... You're up to 10 posts. That's, That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I just start slow. I'm just fucking with you, man. So, uh, this weekend programming, Opie and Anthony, Ron and Fez, general discussion, big boy made a duty, <laughs> <laughs> off topic, very good. There you go. You'll get a, a few hundred people signing up today Opening now. up a new store. Thank All right. You. There you go. Speaking of go-to bits, we have, here's the go-to bits. Right. Why are you here? And one of them is Jared Skith. Jared has been gone. For months, why is he still on the go-to bitch list? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, go to Bruce in Louisiana. Uh, Bruce, what's up? Yeah, your uh, radio zoo host Nathaniel there is delusional. If he hold on, who's George Shea? Oh, yeah. uh, hold on a minute. Hold on, Bruce. We'll get to oh, you in a second. Hang up on that guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> George. Yes. Hi, George. 
George, we're doing our eggnog drinking uh, challenge once again this year, and you might remember Pat from Minaki. He's uh, the star of the thing and the uh, the reigning champion. And uh, Joey Chestnut, who won the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest this year, wants in on uh, on the eggnog drinking challenge. Are you going to have a problem with that? I don't know. I have to explore it. Did Joey Chestnut, explore. you know, because the eggnog is so much more, how would you characterize it, volcanic than right. regular food. Yeah, sure. I mean, has, you know, Joey's capacity has got to be, I mean, just enormous relative to Pat, I would think, but, but keeping it down is so difficult. That's not the question I asked, sir. Right. Are you going to stop us from having Joey Chestnut in our competition? Because supposedly there's some kind of, like, IFOCE uh, problem with this whole thing. Well, I haven't even spoken to Joey at all. I, I would no. have to check with him first. Well, how about, okay, well, we're well we can you. talk to you. Is, will there be a problem? Is there a problem? Well, I have no idea. You guys just called me on the phone. I haven't spoken to him at all. Well, I mean, who I'll came in and said there might be a problem? Like Hillary. Steve? I'm sorry? No, I just... Uh, uh, hold I, on. We got Steve, uh, George Shea. No, I just spoke to George. He's going to look into whether or not we can get some of the competitive eaters this year for... Well, looking into... Oh. George, is George the boss or kind of the head of it? George? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, what now, What it, would you be able to... Uh, get us possibly somebody from your organization or have somebody from your organization participate in our competition. What's this rumor that you guys want money for that? No, I was just talking to your producer. He, you know, he, I didn't know what he was talking about. Typically, when we go, you know, we do a big event. It's 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 a paid event. But I recognize the the uh, the reach of Opie and Anthony. I understand you guys have a great platform. I just haven't even explored it at all. Okay, and our pal Pat from Munaki. Um, yes, more importantly. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, well let's uh, have Pat, let's uh, Pat talk to George. Oh, Pat, yes. Good. Uh, Pat from Minaki, you're on with George uh, Shea, the what, CEO of IFOCE or whatever? The president. President. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Pat, what do you got for George? Hey. Oh, hi, George. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Pat. How's it going? <laughs> I don't think Joey can make it to that eggnog contest. Say it again? He's busy that day. What? He's busy that day. Joey. Pat, you're panicking. <laughs> <laughs> That's every day. Uh, oh, what? Hello? Oh, my God. Yes, Pat, no, 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 Pat. Pat. What you wanted to talk about, about Spike oh. and, you know, 16. Spike and being slighted. Here's the guy. Oh, Ask him oh, personally. I, yeah, I, I felt a little passed over for that uh, Spike. Uh, I was passed over. It's the way God wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm smart. Not like people say. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, Pat feels, since he's a nervous Nelly right now, that the top 16 people were being done for the Spike TV thing. Pat feels like he was stepped over. Why was Pat stepped over if he is legitimately number 16? I don't think it was the necessarily the top 16. I think it was more like an invitational, and it was not obviously entirely in our hands. When we did the last one that we did, we did top 32 and top 16, uh, but... I don't. I don't think it was. Was it top sixteen? I don't believe it was. Well, it was uh -huh. in the press release as the top sixteen eaters in the world. The press release says it. Why would there be top sixteen? That's such a weird number. I, it was like you know, drop it down, you know, like cut in half, cut in half. Oh, they run it like uh, March Madness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. So was uh, Pat slighted? He's saying he was ranked sixteenth. I don't dispute that. Pat was not slighted a lot. I mean, he's the widely recognized and hailed as the eggnog champion of the world. Ooh. There's no no one would ever slight him. But I, I don't know. I don't believe that there was any, you know, uh, bias in the selection. I just don't think they went by the top sixteen. Um, Pat. Yes. Do you feel that, that that they did or didn't? Uh, well, I saw the press release. I I have uh, there's a thread on Black Bag. Uh, where, where I uh, put a link to the press release, and it said the top 16 eaters, and, and that's how it usually was, like the last Alka-Seltzer thing that they had a couple of years ago. That was the top 20, mm. and then they never skipped over before. Right. I mean, I, 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 wasn't, I didn't personally do the selection, Pat, but I think that there was, uh, uh, what was his name from... Um, El Toro from Las Vegas was in there, and he's ranked like 40-something. I think that they were picking individuals out and that it wasn't the top 16. They may have positioned it in the press release as like, you know, look, watch the, um, you know, the, the, the yeah, world's greatest eaters. But. So basically, were they picking people who were not fat, George? Oh, on the contrary. They were picking people they felt were uh, charismatic, although I feel that, uh, you know, obviously uh, Pat is very charismatic. Of yes, course. he is. So why wouldn't well, Spike like, pick Spike him? Spike didn't think that. Well... 
All right, well, Pat, how about the other event you said you thought you were passed over? What was the other one? Oh, that was the next one, the noodle one. Where that, that was just an invitational. That wasn't necessarily the top people, but they skipped over me again. Well, Pat, was it the top 15 and then 17? How did they skip over you? They, yeah, they had 17, and then they had, I think, 23. So you weren't the only one skipped over then. If it was top 16, they had 17, 23. Who else was skipped over it? Uh, no, no. Pretty much they have the top people, and then when they got to me, they kind of leaped over me. No, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I understand why you're uh, sensitive, Pat, but there was, I mean, I don't, not certain that's the way it went. You know, they're, they're, these, things are, these things are picked by people who look at the, you know, at the uh, rankings. They say, well, I want this guy. You know, he's got crazy hair. Or I want this. You know, it wasn't, it, it's not like you're being uh, stepped over. Yeah, but aren't the rankings the rankings? If it's 1 through 16, and Pat is 16, it, he should be in it. Not, you know, skipped over for some guy that looks a little wackier or something. better hair. Yeah, what is that? Right, but, but I, I know what you're saying, but no one ever said that they were going to, what they were going to do is you take the top-ranked people. And we have done that in the past. And Pat was involved. You know, we did the we did. I think the top thirty-two. I, I, Pat, no, were you in that one? No, back then. No, I, I wasn't ranked then. That's when I first started. And then they had the year where they didn't have the sponsor, where they didn't even have it. So I, I mean, Pat, like, Pat has been to Coney Island, the greatest contest in the world, without doubt, the greatest uh, you know event of the world. <laughs> well, well, show without on TV without doubt. <laughs> well, you you got a few ahead of you there, yeah. George. Maybe yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. Where Cup. would you guys place it? Honestly, it's definitely Oscars. Up there. It's, it's above Wimbledon. VH, uh, above Wimbledon. Sure. Above Wimbledon. I put mm-hmm. it, I, I'd put it above. I put it between Wimbledon and the Westminster Dog Show. Yeah, I, it's, <laughs> it's somewhere between the Super Bowl and Planned Parenthood dumpster diving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you are just the just ahead of WNBA basketball, the finals anyway. <laughs> but barely. That's a real event. It's a really a uh, famous event. Yeah, yeah. I like to see that. <laughs> Curse splat. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we didn't get much done here, George. That sounds like an a sounds belly like, flop. <laughs> sounds like most of this is in Pat's head, mm-hmm. and he wasn't uh, slighted on a lot on of purpose. fat. Uh, George, you're going to see if some of your guys can compete in the eggnog drinking challenge. It's, it's, it's early December, right? And this is the deal I make you, and it's simple. I don't want to hear nothing else. Huge exposure for your organization. That's it. Okay, so let me let me check into it. Of course, it's in a slightly divergent. This is drinking, but of course, I would think that would fall under our uh, mandate. Not drinking alcohol, mm. obviously. It's just you know eggnog. Eggnog without the alcohol. Is there a record? Because I would I would guess that Pat's. Last effort might have been disqualified, right? I mean, is there is why there, is why is his uh, disqualified? What didn't it didn't it, didn't he have a reversal of fortune? Oh, he uh, did that. He did that on purpose after he had uh, won the event. What was the what was the uh, how much did he drink? Seventy five to seventy six double shots. Seventy five. Seventy five. Seventy five double shots. Double and shots. is he is it a one and one? Does he come back to defend his title? Yeah, he's won two out of the three. All right. Well, I'll this will be the fourth it. year, I believe. Huh? I mean that. I mean that seems to me to be uh, something to be seen. And Badlands uh, Booker won the. Yeah. Um, Badlands Booker won the one that Pat did not win by literally a oh, half a shot half or a whatever. Shot. It was that half close. A shot. Yeah. Yep. And what was his number? Was it above seventy five? No, the, the, the it was like seventy one or something. Yeah. The, the official that. record is seventy five double shots eggnog that uh, Pat last did last year. Standing rule. Yeah, and this year we're doing it in a venue there, George, in front of a lot of listeners. No, I remember. I mean, you guys know this. Shut this, up. Everybody, everybody uh, was talking about it last year. Well, we would like to have Pat involved. No, Pat will be involved. No, not no, this in our event. Involved. But Pat's... I hope we would have been invited to this one. I'll cry if I'm not. You'll cry even if you are. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, Pat's bit. George, this is Pat's big day, so. All right, well, listen, let me, let me check in. I'll call Steve. Thank you. Okay, All right, thank, thank you, George. Yes, scroll, Good scroll. luck. He'll, he'll be right now. His hand is scrolling. Scroll, 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 scroll. upload, scroll, upload. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? Are you the guy we just gave a uh, invite to? Yep. Tony, you did thirty shots of eggnog. Thirty double shots. My first night, just hanging out. You did do thirty double shots. Okay, oh, I think you did thirty single shots. I might have. I might have been nervous or something. So but you, we did thirty double shots. Right, so that would that shot. would be sixty shots like now. But we're we're all we used the double uh, shot thing. So but Pat did seventy five double yeah, shots. Yeah. So you're not even close, Tony. You have to do another forty five double shots. Double shots. I'm practicing. You're so gay. 
<laughs> all right, well, uh, 30 double shots eggnog is pretty respectable. So, uh, all right, you're still in. That's all right. Uh, we were thinking you might have done only 15. That would have been even yeah, no, pathetic. No. We really want some real competitors this year. All right, Tony, thank you. All Pat, right, later. Pat, yeah. we got to go. We got to take a break. Okay. Hey, all Pat, right. if you can't be good, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Eggnog drinking challenge goes down December seventh. I think at the Hard Rock Cafe, somewhere around uh, six. A date that will live in infamy. That's right. We do it live this year in front of everybody, so uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting. All right, Pat. I miss Pat. All right. Yeah, I haven't had him on in a while. We haven't seen him in a while. All right, Pat. All right, Pat. Get Bye. down here. Uh, I well, we have to uh, talk to Iraq. What's up? He did, Why? Iraq. Iraq did his sleep study. Remember? Oh. He was having all kinds of trouble. I guess. Okay. And uh, he had his sleep study. And I just want to know what that entails uh, with the Iraq. All right, we'll do that next. I'm thinking driving into work, uh, taking his position behind the desk. Uh, you know, everything he does here could be used in the sleep study. <laughs> All right, we'll see what uh, went down with that next. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> The Opie and Anthony show. So, E Rock uh, did a sleep study. Yeah, he was having problems. He came up with all these medical problems all of a sudden. One day he's uh, down in the dumps, as we uh, like to say, down in the dumps. And we asked him, What's wrong, E Rock? And out of nowhere, he came up with this. He's got some fucking medical shit going on. And uh, for one of these things, he had to go for a sleep study. What was the other shit you had? I'm pulling the name some kind of. Show nerve thing where, where your hand would go numb or then your mind would qu quickly follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing they think I might have is autonomic peripheral neuropathy. Nice. That, uh, what does that mean? It means uh, my nervous system is having a hard time uh, regulating my body temperature. Oh, right, the temperature, because yeah. then you, 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 your temperature goes up and then down, and yeah, it's it can't just regulate it. Well, how is that? Your your body like kind of senses the things you do around here and is interpreting you as a glacier? <laughs> <laughs> Long way to walk for a lazy joke, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's really so, it's a, uh, <laughs> Glacier, laugh every time. Because yeah. <laughs> they're huge. Oh, I, 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 not oh, unlike e -Rock. I meant slow. Ah, not slow and no, slow mean, and huge. I didn't mean big. I meant that you you move like a glacier. <laughs> like, I wasn't saying that. I honestly was not a fat joke. I was saying that you're more of a slow okay. piece of shit, not like a no disrespect. <laughs> so so you get none taken. Don't worry about. It. So you get uh, uh, like high temperature. How high does it go? Um, ninety eight point six it, is normal, it's right? Averaging around ninety nine nine a hundred. Oh, and then that's like a little at, fever. At certain times, I'll I'll hit one hundred one for no reason. And then other times it drops below. Like I'll be 96, 97, and I'll be freezing. Jesus. Yeah. And, so, and, and they told you what this might be? How long does it take to figure out what it is? Um, for the first part, I go in tomorrow afternoon and to get some of that, uh, the results for that, those tests. Yeah. The sleep study, I won't find out for 10 days. And th what did the sleep study have to do with this? Um, they... Well, there was this issue, and then they thought that it was being aggravated by the that I might have sleep apnea, so I'm not getting enough oxygen while I'm sleeping. Right. So, um, the problem was I, I was waking up in the middle of the night like I, I was burning, and they think that I that I'd stop breathing during the night, so my body would just start pumping adrenaline. 
to wake me up. So it, your body thought you were dead yeah. and had to react so accordingly. You shoot out of the bed feeling like you're burning and you can't calm down. Like you, you need to run around for a while just to, to get all of that out of you. Do you feel like you're hot, right? Yeah, constantly. How about putting a fan on yourself? It doesn't yeah, how matter. about that? What about a cold what, shower? What happens, Eric? I have to throw back the electric blanket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. To get the uh, hot water bottle off my head. No, it's it's usually the air conditioner's on full blast right yeah. on me. Even or, in the winter. E- or in the That's winter, the I windows sleep. are always open. Windows are open. No oh, heat on. Windows wow, open. that is freaky. So now the sleep study. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go in. Uh, and what are they? They put all kinds of sensors on you. It, it looks like an as, an asylum. You walk in, it's all white and gray. Uh, that's what I pictured. It looks like a loony bin. It's only a couple blocks from here. Oh. And um, you walk in. They have to escort you from the elevator to wherever you go. You're not allowed to be alone at any time. Yeah. Why? This is. Their it's policy. an insane asylum. <laughs> he he went to a crazy house. <laughs> so they um they escort me to my room. And you get into the room, there's a bed with like a million wires just laying all over the place and cameras and some other machines. So you have to wait there for the... It's like saw. You have to wait there for the technician to show up. When he shows up, it took 35 minutes just to get all these wires on me. How, wait, how, what do they do if you have to piss? Um, well, this happened later uh. after the wiring went on. You have to take everything with you and go to the other side of the building. But you're sitting there with the technician, like in shorts and a t-shirt. Wow. They, um, <laughs> they apply all these cables to um, y- your chest, your shoulders, all over your head, your face, your legs. And then it all gets plugged into this um, like green electronic box. It looks like an old phone switchboard. Great. Yeah. So then the, bo- the little green box gets hooked to the wall, which now all that information is being transferred to some remote computer. No, it's room. not. It's just an empty box going to wall. Yeah. We, we were just fucking with you. But uh, they have to apply all the stuff with some kind of, um, it's almost like cement. So you've got these these blotches of uh, gray, t- like pasted all over you to hold everything in. Your little wires, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I, but how do you like, how do you go to sleep with all that shit on you? You have to lay down, once they get everything in, you have to lay down on the bed. Then they add a few more wires to you while you're, you're laying down straight on the bed on your back. And then they tell you to make cumsies, <laughs> and that puts you to sleep. Then they, they hook your entire body into the system in the wall. So once it's hooked into the wall, then the cameras that are um, on the ceiling facing down Wait, at the bed. do you have to sleep on your back? For the most part, I yeah. could never do it then. How is that a fucking test of the way somebody... Sl- I can't sleep on my back with wires on me, much less. No. Yeah. What a shitty fucking system. I know I have apnea because I wake up every 10 minutes gasping for air. Do you? Test fixed. They tell you you can't, like, sleep on your side or um, your belly you're or allowed, any of that? You're allowed to turn your head to the side, but you're not allowed to turn your body. If you, oh, that's great. While you're sleeping... Well, they're not going to get an accurate freaking... Yeah, who the fuck sleeps like that? Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be the wake I, test. I don't even start sleeping <laughs> until I go on my side. I might start falling asleep, but I can't sleep that way. Will they drug you at least? No. Oh, then fuck that. Right, so, so you're on your back. So you're on your back, and you have all these wires on you. Now the cameras are going... And they also have the night vision, so they're watching well, everything you do so, while yeah. you sleep. The cameras are going, and then there's a speaker that they don't tell you about that's behind your head. All of a sudden, somebody starts talking to you, and they're like, Eric? Yeah? I need you to blink five times. So you're blinking, and then you're moving your eyes in every direction. Show us how you grind your teeth. Show, you, show us uh, uh, flex your legs, flex your arms. They're getting a read of every possible movement. Before you go to sleep to see how you are Before you, you're out cold Eat a BLT <laughs> Yeah, exactly <laughs> So you're laying there And then they go, okay, go to sleep The technicians leave They shut the door It's pitch black All you see are the, the these this red circle from where the camera is And what time is it? It's about 10.30 10.30 at night so you're ready to go to it sleep. Sucks. All right. So so they tell you go to sleep. Now, how the fuck long does it take to go to sleep? Well, he, I I don't know, but they survey you through the whole time. So I'm sleeping. I think about an hour. Then they come in and they wake you up. Oh, that's fun to see how you are. I guess like a nap kind of thing. Well, how did you sleep? How did you fall asleep like that, dude? I, I honestly I don't know. It, I know it took me a while. Did you? But I was in there. I did a little later on. 
Um, so they come in and they wake you up. Yeah, you have to get up now. So now they unplug me. They put the wires around my neck. So I'm now I'm carrying the the little green box where all the wires are connected to, and the rest of the wires over my right. Were side. Were you wearing a little gown with your hiney sticking out? <laughs> no. Um, so they make you get up and walk around for a little while, for about ten minutes. So I'm walking around the place. This is, I guess, to to see how you are when you're napping. And then you, you come back, and then they put you back to sleep again. Oh, they want you deeper sleep. Yeah. And then, how so do now, you fall back to sleep, Eric? I don't, I don't know. And then I lay down in bed. They hook you up again. Go to sleep. So now you, this is supposed to be the long term. So I go to sleep. I remember getting woken up the first time. A guy came in, I guess, because I turned, and some of the wires moved, so they had to fix it. They push you back down on your back, and you have to go back to sleep again. Push you down. Like he, you sure he was part of the test? Yeah. <laughs> he was an orderly. And they put this big thing in your mouth, and you have to sleep while they pump the uh, tube in and out of your mouth. So, um, so I'm, not, I'm laying on my back again. I'm, I'm falling asleep. Then all of a sudden, I'm hearing something through that speaker where they're calling my name, and I finally wake up again just as somebody comes flying through the door goes over to this machine to my right and puts one of those little um, oxygen masks over me because apparently I, I stopped breathing while I was sleeping. Oh. So they have to, they, my heart rate dropped so low and then it just seemed like I wasn't breathing at all. So they had to put this mask on me for a while until I fell back asleep again. Holy shit. You're <laughs> fucked up. You got the apnea, huh? You have to probably we'll yeah so then um, you're gonna have to sleep with that dumb mask I guess while I'm sleeping somebody came in again took the mask off because the next time I woke up I didn't have it on but now this time it's around 3 a.m. and I'm burning like I can't sit still I gotta get up so I, they're telling me I can't so I can't get up and, and walk around so I say I have to go to the bathroom so the technician comes in unplugs everything again wraps it around me now I go into the bathroom <sighs> trying to cool down I'm sitting there just running my my uh, my my hands and my arms and my face under the water, just trying to cool down, and wound up having to go back to bed again. And next thing I know, it was seven in the morning. And you don't know yet what this. It doesn't sound good. No. I got it. I'll tell you that much. It doesn't sound like they're gonna go. Well, that's fine. That's ah, sleep apnea, and you got to get that dumb mask, and then you'll never have sex again because you're gonna look <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but you'll sleep great. <laughs> it's supposed to help you sleep, but. How do you sleep with that mask on? Get a picture of those masks. They're ridiculous. I can't I, I where I saw it. Was it your dad? Yeah, it was in the Sopranos too, Uncle Junior. Oh, that's right. Okay, I knew I saw it somewhere. I can't fucking... I hate sleep. <laughs> and my nose. Yeah, you just got to get your sinuses fixed. You know what I have apnea too? <laughs> 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 fucking cowardly lion. <laughs> You know who does a great impression of that? Oh, Twitchell, I wish he was here. Hippopotamus. <laughs> who can actually look at him when he's doing that? I can't even think of him. No, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of it now. It is so cringeworthy when he goes into that fucking awful impression. Because he really does it. Oh, he's spitting. His face gets all contorted. You just want to punch him in his stupid Tourette's face. I know, and then he does that stupid impression. <laughs> <laughs> there, There's a mask. Like it looks like a pig's oh, nose. There it is. How the fuck do you sleep with that thing on your head? It looks like you're fucking you're you're, you're a pilot in fucking in the Iraq War. <laughs> Should be sucking a dick at the Shining, uh, the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> Screw the sleeping part. How do you get laid ever again? Just Here's put a, that on her face and pump fucking like little sleep gases in there. <laughs> there you go, Iraq. That's your future right there. Well, there's there a it is. I was Can we Photoshop around. your face in there? I want to see what oh, you're going to look please. like with the pig nose mask. Get that on the uh, boards immediately. I was walking around. There's a different mask where it's it's a plastic tube that goes in your mouth, so it keeps your mouth open the whole oh, night. That's while what you're my dad sleeping. has. Oh, that's what wonderful. do you mean a plastic tube? It, it forces you to, Shaped to like breathe a through your mouth instead of your nose. <laughs> oh, what is God. it? Hollow. Uh, yeah, it's... Me Peter Frampton? <laughs> wow. Well, you grow... Wah, 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 it keeps your mouth open? Keeps yeah. your mouth open oh and my forces God. air in and out, so you, you, you're you forced to your breathe Your girl's your gonna mouth. have a great night of sleep with all that bad breath that knocks her out. <laughs> oh, oh shit. no. <laughs> Poor ear. Well, that was uncalled for. Uh, knock her right the fuck out. Hold on. Is that a tube? Can't you choke on the tube? No, it's attached to something. Yeah. Oh, it is. It, it's yeah. a whole get-up. So, a whole get-up. Yeah. Uh, look at these masks. That's your oh future. Oh my God! That's how no. you have to sleep so your heart doesn't stop. Wow! I'm serious. You got you got the sleep apnea. All right. Well, there's your E Rock update. Well, that doesn't uh, 
Did you feel like you had a good night's sleep? No, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> Nightmarish. I, Nightmarish. How'd you doze off? To, I can't comprehend. I, I honestly don't know because every time you woke um, in, sorry, in the morning when you woke up, they give you a survey. How long do you think it took you to fall asleep? How long, what do you think was happening think. while you were sleeping? How about sleeping? you know? You write this in. Fill it in. You were watching me. Everything was a survey. What do you think you did? What do you, uh, how do you think this reacted? It, you're monitoring me. I have no... Do you no think they got it. video of you touching your wee-wee <laughs> at night? Maybe you did a little? I don't do that. I'd love to. <laughs> you don't touch your own wee-wee? You What's touch your you? wee-wee? How often do you jerk off? I don't know. Average amount. Uh, give me <laughs> average, a average, 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 average amount. Please say 12 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is average amount? He made a cock ring out of the wires. <laughs> What's an average amount there, you're off? Probably at least once a day. That's not that bad. At least once a day, and you got a girl? <laughs> What's Oops. wrong with you? Are you a quick comer? No. When you fuck? No. Do you talk dirty in bed? Sometimes. Say something Ugh. dirty. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Come on. Are you, are you more dominant or submissive? Um, if the sandwich fell on the floor, I'd still eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even kiss it up to God. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Either or, depending on the dude. You jerk off more than once a day. No, I said. And you're getting married like once a day. No, it's good practice. At least once a day. You said at least once I, a day. I, I, more than once right, a day. Well, that means at least seven times a week. That means probably much closer to ten care times of, a so week. I don't need. What's that? that? I'm nah, pretty much taken care of, so I don't really need to. Ah, uh, you know what? That would have been nice if you said it before you. Yeah, said Yeah, now you're backpedaling. <laughs> you idiot! Don't you know what a backpedal is? How about this? Say something dirty that you would say in bed like that. Like, like not necessarily with this girl, but any girl. Like that, that you're dominant. Say something dominant. I want to hear dirty talk of your eye. All right, All right close your eyes, Iraq. What would you say? Everybody close their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and ears. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's it's uh, it's a little angry. <laughs> Fucking cunt! <laughs> Fist in the face. No. No? What no. is it? Not that angry? Sometimes, um... Fuck Opie! <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to know what he's thinking? I'm not even looking in that direction! I made you hero number two on my list! <laughs> uh, sometimes it's, um, it's like... You know the 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 typical, you yeah, you like that? Do you want me right, to hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright. Hold on, we need an order. Yeah. Or or some some porno music or something. No, we need orgasm. Like, w give me one that's a little long. <laughs> we'll make believe we're in the middle of you banging some broad, and then what you would say to get her like really going over the top. <laughs> Do we have a e rock sleeping mask? <laughs> it's one of those Hulk Hogan Halloween masks. <laughs> Where's a good orgasm? All right, here we go. Let me try one here. So it's either this one. Voice. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. I was, it's funny, but that's no. He was he was just going into his dirty talk. Yeah. All right. Ready? So, so you got the person going. Uh, what would you say to him? <laughs> what's wrong? You're working it, and you, you you start. You know, you got your rhythm going. Yeah. And uh, you're just kind of looking at her dead on, like you're almost looking through her, kind of thing. Like oh, yeah. you like that? Yeah, you like that? Do you want me to, you know, you start grabbing the hair and holding the face a little bit? Oh, oh. Wait, so you, so here's a, you just right. made love to a dude, bro. You, you uh, <laughs> why'd you fall for that? <sighs> wow. You clench your teeth? All right, here we go. All right, yeah, here's sometimes. the check. Here's the check. We got the porno music. Close your eyes. You're in the middle of it. Go ahead. What do you say to get this over the top? Go ahead. You're on E. Okay, come on. Um, are you pulling the hair at all? What are you doing? I'm pulling the hair a little bit. Sometimes you're holding the face. Yeah. Almost like uh, the hands over the face, like gripping it like a mask, kind of. Oh, that's comfortable. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you like that? You like that? Is this doing it for you? Yeah, keep going. Keep going. You gonna come for me? You gonna come for me? <laughs> Do it. Wait, keep going. And keep, going. keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And so her, what do you do after you say you come for me and she says no? Well, here's her, her response. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of violent, bro. 
And it's yeah, all the time. It, it, it's well, you're a grabbing her face it. and stuff. No one likes a hand over there. She has to smell your hand. She's got like fucking. It's not like this. Yeah, it's over her face. No one likes that. There's a fine line between getting a little rough with your talk yeah. and like grabbing her face. I'm coming, you <laughs> dumb bitch. <laughs> what the fuck you have mouth? Hey, what about the cheeks of my ass? I'm gonna come down your throat. You fucking well better swallow it all. You let one drop spill and I whip your ass so hard you won't sit down for a week. Stop oh. talking and start sucking. <laughs> Do you like that? Is that doing it? Do you actually say, is that yeah. doing it for you? Do you grit your teeth like that? Yeah. Is, is that doing yeah. it for you? I have apnea. Is yeah. that doing it for you? <laughs> Do you have a pet name? No, not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. It's, it's, I don't know. He calls it's a girl dumb. hot pussy and she calls him incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not coming. Stop. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Kevin in Minnesota. Kevin, what's up? Yeah, I use one of the machines like E-Rock was talking about every night. Uh, the, the, the mask thing that keeps your mouth open? Nah, I've got one that fits over my nose and my mouth. Are you married, sir? Oh, yeah. Is it a little awkward to put that mask on every night? Oh, yeah, but put it on after, after, um, activities. No, do what you should do is put the mask on and make her suck your dick and look at you while she's swallowing your load with that well, stupid mask I, on. And then say, I pay the mortgage. That. Huh? We tried that. It works. Hmm. It's just like I feel like Darth Vader when I'm doing that. But. I think I would rather die in my sleep. <laughs> Let's give that a whirl. No, I'm being no, Darth Vader's better. I, I'm being serious. I've thought about this. You, you know, you're gonna start getting older, and uh, all of a sudden you gotta go to bed with apparatuses and stuff. That ugh, well, how, no. How long are you supposed to to wear it? You know, like uh, forever. You no, know, you gotta wear it all the time. Yeah, Total every night for the rest the of your life. It's gonna take I was, the. I was I was stopping the breathing about 180 times an hour when I took that test. You rock. Just just die in your sleep. <laughs> have some, no, no, I, and I'm, no, I and I love you, and I swear to God, I'm saying because like have some pride, because she thinks of you as like her man, and now you're gonna be this like dork with a mass sleeping every night. I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't go down that road. Is that doing it for you? Do you like that? Yeah. yeah. Wait. Here's we got a little audio of uh, you in the bedroom here. You can get a doggy style, you can get a ling on your side. Those are your only choices. This is my well, house, and I get the same. Fancy, fancy talk. Fancy talk for a whore. See, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me a bit. Doesn't well, bother her either. You know what? God bless you, Kevin. I'm not even trying to make a joke. That I, I wouldn't be able to bring weird apparatuses to bed to make myself oh, make better, sleep and shit. Show me how you suck a guy's cock. The last time I'm going to ask you. I can see it, I can see Rock talking dirty in the middle of it. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Getting some oxygen in no, between sessions. No, because the more sleep you get, the more better sleep you get. More gooder, uh, listen longer. Um, yeah. Uh, more more red blood cells. More red blood cells. You're falling apart, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really not making this sound good. All right. Yeah, your your heart rate's dropping here. That's I wouldn't right. mind a sleep right, mask. Kevin. I just couldn't go through the test. This one go get a mask. Like, get me one. <laughs> really? Just, just assume I failed. Well, if Beat's not sleeping. I mean, my, my shitty sleep wrecks my life. Do you understand how bad my nose is? I can't breathe. It's yeah. fucking horrible. Well, maybe you just need the nose job. They'll ream out of the nostrils or some shit. Are you Are you going to get the surgery? If I can find a good doctor. Uh, yeah. We got one. You, you do? One. She's going in January for it. So how good like, is this doctor? Ooh. Apparently pretty good. Yeah. Thanks. That's apparently. A, that's a great I've never job. met the guy. Apparently, she, she wanted. She just texted me to recommend the doctor to you. All right. Let's go to Jeremy in Wisconsin. She wants me to go first, so if I die, yeah, she'll no find kidding. somebody else. Jeremy, what's up? What's up, guys? Hey. Yeah, I have uh, sleep apnea. I went through all that shit too, and it's pretty fucking weird, especially sex too, because I don't know. I used to take it off in the middle of the night, but uh, yeah, she woke me up before and. Having sex on it with it on is. She, oh my yeah, god! Having sex with Darth Vader. Yeah, your woman looks at you. That's like the worst this. call we've ever gotten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He not only was falling apart, but then he took the other guy's Darth, the Vader, Darth Vader line. line. We got it. There's other people right. with masks. All right, can you figure out one other person with a mask that you can use? Exactly. You're like uh, the Obi Wan. No wait, C three P. Boba Fett. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ! We got a celebrity on the phone. You can oh. use this, uh, Than, for the next Stan and Sam show. 
They had a big celebrity. You guys need a big celebrity. We got him. Sure. It's Matt from Queensbury. Oh, Matt from Queens, big celebrity. I got to meet Matt when I was up there. Matt's a big guy. Yes, I'm a Very, big guy. Like a linebacker. How, how big? Just solid. Uh, well, I was a wrestler my whole life, and now that spent a few years in the gym, now a few years out of the gym, so I'm a. Uh, Probably would be solid at 250. <sighs> he looks like he looks like a power lifter. But I'm oh, really? up to the three area. Who the fuck pinned wow. you? What a big head he had. Who <laughs> pinned you ever? I know. Well, even even worse was back in high school. I uh, wrestled at about 167, 177, <clears throat> and then spent a lot of years in the gym after that and uh, bulked up a hair. You think Chuck Liddell could tap you? Uh. Well, with the uh, the tap out moves and the chokeholds, you know he might be able to. But I think if I got a hold of him, he might have a hard time getting away. Really? Hmm. This guys, talking some shit. How about yeah, Kevin I mean, Randall? As long then? as it only lasted like thirty seconds, after that, I might need to take a rest. But. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, that being said, I do have one of those apnea machines. Hey. And as many bad things that can be said about them. The good they do is just amazing. I mean, I had severe chronic obstructive sleep apnea, which meant I was exhausted all the time. I would uh, sometimes take a nap at red lights. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've done that, but it hasn't been from apnea. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Ooh, I like work, that. <laughs> I'd sleep at my desk. Every time I had a break, I'd sleep, go down and sleep in my car. I could fall asleep immediately at any point, at any time. And then when I got mm. that machine... As silly looking as it is, it was like the best thing that ever happened. How does your machine work? How do you put it on? Like, is yours the what, the mouth tube or? No, it goes over your nose, and you don't put it on and then say to your girlfriend, "Hey, uh, you want to watch some porn and hook right. up?" You, you know, you put it on the second before you're going to go to bed for real. Where How uncomfortable is it? Uh, it really didn't take much getting used to, just because it was just such an amazing thing to finally be able to sleep during the night and as far as the sleeping on your side sleeping on your back you can move about but most of the time when you move when you're sleeping it's because you're uncomfortable and usually i fall asleep on my back with my hands folded on my chest and i wake up that way i don't even move at all during the night well i have uh i get dizzy if i lay on my back too long mm -hmm. But do you have did you have bad Poor sinuses? Guy. Jesus, are you yeah, a mess? As a matter of fact, there's, my sinuses still aren't that great. But with the forced air through the the nasal passage, they clear out while I'm sleeping. So you know, I breathe through my nose all night, not through my mouth at wow. all. And the other hey. thing about the mask too is, oh. you, you, usually if you have apnea, you snore like a son of a bitch, which I did. Wait, man, how do I get one of these? How do I get a mask? <laughs> well, normally you have to the you. Whole sleep clinic thing, but. I mean, you can find machines on eBay and stuff. Are you some you used know. machine? No. No, no. <laughs> mucus in it. You can find a used or oh new machine, God. but you can get all new. <laughs> what does it look like? Darth Vader? <laughs> yeah, you can get a new hose and a new. Oh, baby. my God. Enough about the apnea. <laughs> well, the thing is. I'd rather read my cell phone contract again. <laughs> no, but in e rocks defense, if you have sleep apnea, yeah. it can cause you to gain a lot of weight. Ah, uh, well, there you because go. Because it screws yeah. up your metabolism Start eating and so again. on. Now, right. also, enough about uh, the uh, apnea. I do want to thank Jimmy and Kenny for hooking me up with the show up here. It was mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy's new material is amazing. Oh, well, thanks and for coming. Uh, anybody who hasn't seen him, I urge you to go. We had a great time. All right. And, uh, All right, very good. Thanks, very thanks, good. Sir. All right, let's go to Vinny in Pennsylvania. Vinny, what's up? Good morning, boys. Hey. Let me get, let me get this straight. You're supposed to wear this mask while you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. And these people are calling in talking about having sex while wearing the mask. Do we see a problem here? Well, I don't think most of the people are having sex while wearing the mask, but I think... Uh, well, these guys are saying, oh, it's like having sex with Darth Vader. It's like, I, yes, it's like having sex with a sleeping Darth Vader. And you're wondering why... why well, hold on, hold on. I don't, now, when two Darth Vader lines in a row bomb, <laughs> what made you think that if you put a sleeping Darth Vader in, that was going to knock it out of the park? <laughs> By the way, all I'm saying is uh, I think it affects your sex life if you're wearing all this weird shit while you're sleeping. I think your I woman think wants to look snoring. at you like you're like some fucking, you know, stud. Not hold, you hold on a minute, I got to put my sleep mask you. on. I'll tell you what affects your your sex life. It's your wife staring at you in the morning. Do you have any idea how loud you were fucking snoring last night, you bastard? As if you're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it would affect your sex life because again, you're gonna fuck before you put it on. My, my girlfriend doesn't look at me when I'm sleeping and think anything probably except look at this lump that I've been fucking. <laughs>
Well, I don't think my girlfriend. You know, there's magazines out there. There's <laughs> magazines out there of people wearing all sorts of crazy masks while they're doing it. I right, mean, Darth yeah. Vader. Well, from the <laughs> of course, we get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Like Darth Vader doing a handstand. Luke, I have apnea. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Uh, any, any the Imperial though, Emperor call. likes to sleep comfortably, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> just a cavalcade of crashes with a Darth Vader reference. I, I can't breathe. It's like I'm wearing a wearing a Yoda mask. <laughs> uh, oh, here he oh comes. Boy. <sighs> Butcher, right on cue. And 18 lines in. <laughs> All right, Benny, thank you. Luke, bye bye. Give me the mask. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> this isn't funny at all. <laughs> No matter how many times the caller calls in with this, it will not be funny. I look ridiculous. My wife doesn't want to have sex with me. Wait, my accent isn't even right anymore. <laughs> Fuck. Tim H. from Columbus, Ohio. Holy shit, is this dull. Are you going to talk about menopause next? <laughs> Uh, enough about the sleep apnea. And the, but hey, the phones fuck are Tim H. Like, fuck you. But the phones fuck are ringing. Fuck him in his fuck Exactly. A lot of people deal with it. Tough fucking shit for Tim H. I don't sleep good. And now Oops. we're talking about it. And our own E-Rock has been dying a slow death every <laughs> night. <laughs> All right, one more. Detroit, Jake, what's up? <clears throat> hey, guys. Good to hear you. Yeah. Hey, E-Rock, listen, I had the same problems that you had exactly. Went to the clinic. I mean, it was, it was you know, horseshit trying to get to sleep, but I've got the mask on. I've had it for about 10 years, and it is awesome. Let me tell you something. For the guys that don't know out there, keep in mind that the hose that goes from the mask to the apparatus is ripped. My wife and I have had plenty of fun with that ripped hose. No, you oh, haven't. no. Oh, my God. No, you haven't. You know what's even better? Having her straddle your colostomy bag. Exactly. And just pump away on your shit bag. <laughs> can, can the women call and, you know, prove my point that it just takes the sexiness out of the whole fucking thing if your guy's wearing some weird thing to bed? Well, that's yeah, but if you're going to sleep with a thing on, like if you're sleeping, it's, it's like once you're sleeping, you're sleeping. Like, yeah, but she yeah. turns over and sees you applying the mask, and I don't know, man. <laughs> well, if you're a fucking woman, is that shallow that she'd rather have you dying in her sleep? Just fucking jerk off in a <laughs> prostitute's mouth anyway. <laughs> if your woman is that fucking shallow that she... I don't want you to live. I want to look at you while you're sleeping and think you're hot as you're leaking shit all over your pillow. <laughs> None of us are sexy. We get eye gunk built up. Our fucking eyes are closed. I, uh, uh, oh, I have to fuck that. Uh, I understand, but... Uh, I don't know. Shit, any fucking woman... As much problems as they have with their pussies, I tolerate you sticking that plug up your cunt Dude, every they, fucking Monday. They hide that shit from you, though. It's not right in the open. It's all over the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, there's a fucking bloody thing. I hey, did you commit a murder or are you on your period? <laughs> I told you, different bathroom saves relationships. We learned that years ago. <laughs> different bathrooms completely? Yeah. That's oh, odd. Yeah. yeah. We learned that back in the day. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't we uh, move on? Thank you. We got uh, the Chris Jericho audio from BJ Shea. Oh, cool. You want to go down this road? Well, I don't care. I just say I, I was just saying that BJ Shea is a, a, a definitely a stand-up guy, man. Well, the Chris Jericho video is getting a lot of views on YouTube and Break.com and uh, a lot of discussion on the Chris Jericho, Jim Norton thing. And I didn't trash him or that Monday. A week, week or so ago. That Monday when we came back, I didn't bash him on the air. Just... No. What's that? Well, that's interesting. That's the... Fire drill. Nothing outside. Oh, this There's is a fire drill? Oh, There's a fire, guys. Don't worry. We got everything under control. It just keeps it. Learn not to burn. <laughs> Wait, are you shitting me? Yeah, they can hear. Wow, the Jews are running out of this building. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought he was one of our guys making it. No, this isn't a joke. No. Turn that it's just a test. <laughs> Your possessions will arrive. <laughs> Please get on the trains. You will be kept together when you get to the family camp. We are asking for all your clothing to be put in one pile just in case there is a fire. <laughs> I really thought that was someone fucking no, with us. No, no, Holy crap. All right. I'll beat Bach free. 
Uh, so here's uh, Chris Jericho went on BJ Shea's show out there in Seattle. And this is how it went down. We just don't want another Opie and Anthony thing. Is we're just trying to make sure we understand each other because I don't want to pitch you off un- unintentionally. Oh yeah, or intentionally like that guy. That guy was an idiot, man. Oh no, absolutely. See, our problem is mean, Jim Norton's a really right good there. friend of ours. So that's why they're right there. Oh, Jimmy, you're an idiot. No, no, but like or intentionally, like right there. As many times as I explained, I did not know Chris Reeve was a friend of yours. And I explained it nicely. I said, I'm not trying to be a dick. That's the conclusion he draw. Fuck him. Ooh. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I, w- I would rather have <laughs> him sitting... Seriously, I would rather say that to him while he's in the studio. That is, is the conclusion he came to, or intentionally. Hey, sorry, I'm not a part of a business where I cut my fucking head with a razor and smash people with chairs. Sorry, I don't have the entertainment integrity that you do in the business you're in. <laughs> Sorry, I don't blow myself up in a limo. And, uh, hey, that's funny. Again, unless, of course, you're a soldier in fucking Iraq who's been killed by a car bomb. Then I guess not so funny. You want to go down that road with humor? You will never win this argument. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling at you. Oh, I really, really annoys me. All right. Really annoys me. Like that, guy, that guy was an idiot, man. Whoa, no, Absolutely. See, our problem is, is Jim Norton's a really good friend of ours, so that's why, you know, we, gotta, we, we, we sure as heck can't, we can't go on the side, and we think you're a good guy, and you've been good to us, too. So we're in a tough position where we got two guys who we have a lot of respect for who kind of don't like each other right now. I'll just tell them not to make paraplegic jokes, and we'll be okay. Yeah. It was a quadriplegic joke, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Big difference. And uh, why, again... You, you see, don't make paraplegic jokes. Okay, fine. But in wrestling, you can... And speaking of paraplegics, no one has ever imitated my job and smashed themselves through a table in a backyard like backyard wrestling fans do. Mm-hmm. No one has ever emulated what I do and, and hurt themselves or, or injured themselves terribly. Sucked little children's dicks, but... Well, that, that's true. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you want to hear more of this? I, I've heard it already. It doesn't matter to me. I, just, I, I, I was just pointing it. out, like, that's how he starts out. It's such a crazy experience um it just the, the, the room just went black when all this stuff went down but it was it was fun you know that that was makes exciting radio it's better than asking the same questions over and over again by the way i got a lot of respect for you because you're right it was great radio and a lot of people don't realize that that look you know you're doing a show you're entertaining people and like you say you have to answer the same dumb questions all the time when you're on tour and it was memorable and i got to be thinking that probably people who may not have wanted to come see you might have come see you because of the whole drama Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, BJ definitely uh, definitely stuck up for me in the situation, which I appreciate. It was nice. He didn't just sigh with the, with the guy who was on the show. Well, the thing is too, and I, I think that Jimmy realized this. Like I was playing a part too. Like we were acting and playing a character when you're doing these these radio shows because it is fun. I mean, you, you turn up the heat a bit and people get interested. And it's like, well, is this really? Is this, Is he really mad? Is he really doing this? Like so that's why. I, people, See what well, I'm saying? Wow. Um, Chris, you were mad at me. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, let me jump in here, Jimmy. He was absolutely mad at you. And then maybe somewhere, somewhere down the road, he was playing a part. I don't know, but I'll tell you right now, he was as mad as they come, man. And this is what I meant when I was talking about what pissed me off. It wasn't that he even got mad at me. Mm. It was that it's like, come on, Chris, stop saying that you're playing a part because you had, you got, I didn't pretend I was playing a part. I was pissed off, but... You're not playing a part. You are angry at me. He didn't want to come across and say that he was pissed. Yeah, it's like, why not just admit that you were pissed off? It was Mm. a genuine thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's like you can't have it both ways. Oh, I was pissed off. Oh, no, well, he was an idiot for saying that, but I was playing a part. No, you stop trying to have such control over the way you behave. Stop it. You were pissed off. It's okay. I was like, well, is this really? Is this, Is he really mad? Is he really doing this? Like, so that's why I, people liked what I did. Whatever, it may be wrestling or acting or, or with, with a band or you know whatever it is, you, you, you're entertaining. It's show business. So no, yeah, that's, that's I, all part of it. So, uh, am I thinking then the the paraplegic line really didn't bother you? You just thought this is how I would be bothered by it. I, I'm a little confused because hmm. I really felt like you were bothered by it, but you're just saying you were just you know doing some no, entertainment. No, no, no. I, I was bothered by it at first more. more more than anything, because I, I told him not to say anything about it. Thank you. Pause it right there, it, please. Don't make a bad joke. Right there, and I said this. What bothered him was that, uh, as an alpha male, he told me not to do something, and I did it. And therein, <laughs> therein lays the problem. I did something he told he me told not to He told you not do. to. Yes. 
told then me not like, to. I, I told him not to say anything about it. And I said, don't say, don't make a bad joke. Friends or friends, he still lie. had to say the joke. And I thought lie. that was very disrespectful to me um, because I told him not to. I asked him not to. Said that Christopher Reeve and I were friends. See, well, it's a right there. Maybe, I'm not even gonna say he's lying. He's probably just actually not remembering it correctly. Um, it was you know a week ago. But he, but I'm, no, but I'm saying he's probably. I don't think he's intentionally being deceitful there. Um, he did not say we're friends. I said to him, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know you were friends. Mm -hmm. And then he just went, I told you not to do But he's painting it like I said, hey, Jim, don't do it. Chris and I are friends. And, and I you blurted the anyway. line out. Do you see how people remember things? What bullshit that is? It's bullshit. Yeah. It is, I agree. It's not the truth. So anyways, when it first happened and when that was first said, it did kind of bother me. But then when, when I, I said whatever I said back to Jimmy, I could tell he was bothered back. So when he was bothered back, that's kind of when I started to stir it up a little bit more. Like he would have said it and then that was it. That's it. Fine. But when I, I mentioned what I said back and kind of could tell that his feelings were hurt, that the Ugh. tables were turned on the, you know, the shock comedian uh. that's not used to ever having that happen to him. <sighs> That's when I kind of started needling a little bit more. Really? And that's kind of where I was talking no, about. Pause this, please pause this. I'm not going to listen to this fuck. Really? The shock comedian who's not used to going up against the wrestling brilliance of you? Do you understand? I have been fucking going back and forth with Patrice and Colin and Keith and Bobby and fucking brutal guys like that for yeah. a long time. Do you understand that? <laughs> what do you think? You're the first one to ever say anything unpleasant to me? He got you. That's what is driving me nuts. And, and the shock comedian, what was so shocking about that line? Again, that's your perception of comedy. I don't look at it like it's shocking at all. You know what's shocking to me? That you need to entertain people. So what you do is you hide a razor blade and you slice your head. That to me is shock entertainment. You slice your head and then smash another human being with a chair. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. The shock comedian? What's so shocking about my dumb line when you have to fucking cut your head with a razor and hit people with a chair to entertain them? I no, I wasn't used to having to such him. a... being up against such a tough warrior. Gee, I've never had that before. Somebody say something unpleasant. How about making a joke about um, paraplegics uh, aside from uh, being maybe in an occupation where people are made paraplegics constantly <laughs> and then just thrown to the wayside when it happens. What, what I'm saying, and, and I'm not knocking wrestling, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, I am. with that at all. <laughs> oh. But to, to be, like, to have that fucking elitist attitude about something because I said something you don't like, when you do that to entertain people, is my, and, and the way wrestling parodies everything, mm -hmm. they make fun of everything. They make fun of retards, uh, uh, the two black guys that are crim. They fucking goof on everything in wrestling. Midgets, they've been making a living kind of teasing midgets for 25 years. Yeah. So it was kind of really starting to lay it in thick. And well, started, yeah, okay, I, 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 tell that we, I could tell that we had struck something that was a little bit different than the norm. Let's, let's work with it for a bit. All right. I think BJ finally uh, explains your side of this to him. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying to you, Chris, because you're an entertainer, and this is where I get aggravated at people who are in the business of entertaining. This is what Jim Norton is supposed to do, and I don't think you, if you're an entertainer, you're selling your book, you want people to interview you, those guys have a job like we have a job, to put on entertaining radio, and I think you took it too personally. And, and I, I think as a guy like you who's as professional as you as an entertainer, I think that was a mistake, because this is what Norton does, and this is what we all do to entertain. I mean, it was a funny joke. It wasn't a funny joke. It was a bad joke. And I, well, see, I disagree mad. with that. I, and you, well, and, see, but, well, but comedy is comedy. It's the like beauty is in, yeah. in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, hey, hey, and the point is, you see, I think you were on two completely separate wavelengths here. In the fact that, I mean, you're taking a stand for Jimmy. I've done O and A like. Ten times. Anthony, Open Anthony are great, great, great guys. I, I Three love times. Show. We've had some ridiculous experiences. I've never met Jimmy Norton in my life. I Lie. didn't even know who he was. I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying, listen, when I sit down with someone, we're coming, I'm coming to Open Anthony's studio as a guest of theirs. I'm having a great time. When he said that, I, I was like, well, listen, that's very, it's kind of a little bit disrespectful. When I said, just, I said, I just said, please don't say that. But Chris, joke. first of all, I have, I'm not angry he didn't remember, like, because I was here the last time. That he yeah. came on the show, which is fine. I mean, he, you know, that's he guy does a million interviews. That's fine. I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with his wrestling either. I know who he is, but not his career. Uh, but that's irre the fact that you're ignorant of what goes on in the show is not my problem. Like, mm -hmm. you're, you're ignorant to the day to day workings of the show doesn't mean I'm going to change what I do. I don't understand where you're coming from with that. 
I think BJ continues here. Yes. I'm just telling you, Chris, so to give you insight to the business, uh, we, us radio I guys. I know the business, man. But I've we hate it when someone comes in. As you have. I'll tell you, I well, had, I hate I hate smart ass radio DJs who think they own the damn world, dude. We're just having a conversation and discussing things. I don't even know, like, is Jimmy Norton? Are, are you like his lover or something? What's the deal? Oh. Now, see, now I want to now, now, Chris. Crazy here's the that. thing. Now you just taking a shot at me, the, and I've been very respectful to this. You have I've been. Of course I have. You have not been respectful. No, what have I said that? What have I said that's disrespectful to you? Wow. What have I insulted about your career, about your book? Have I said anything at all about you as a performer? No, I have not. Yes, I just you have. Yes, what did you I have. say? No, I, mean, I don't know if I can talk to you anymore. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I can talk to you anymore because I'm not disrespecting you at all. But you know, Chris, I think you take things way too personally, which is probably why you got into that whole thing with Norton in the first place. Wow, bravo to my old friend, Holy BJ Shea. Do you, do you, BJ Shea is a nice dude. And, and even said to him, I respect you as an entertainer. I think yeah. he took it to... He's not attacking Jericho. This is a guy who is so used to having his ass kissed and having everything he does. Uh, he, he's just used to a man who's used to being listened to and dictating what other people are going to do. Yeah, and when you pull those shenanigans... I told him. Oh, my. Did you fucking hear that him. shit? I told. And then he says, I told him, me and Chris, you did not say that, dude. And when I said you should have told me that, you said, well, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah, that never works well with us when you say, I, and told, the joke I told was you funny. not to go down that road. He might not have found it funny, but it was a funny joke. And, and, I yeah. did, and it wasn't even that rough a joke. No. It really wasn't. No. I've, I've heard you do much worse on, on the subject. <laughs> we got the final clip here. I'm done. Would you, would, can you, would you let me finish? When the thing with Norman was done, Opie and Anthony were totally like, uh, we, we, man, we love having you. You're a great guy. Please come back. That was great radio. That was a, that was a, like our little thing on Open and Anthony. Yeah, but you, you saw it on the video camera or whatever it was. It wasn't the Jimmy Norton show. It was the Opie and Anthony show. All right, fair enough. Okay, and, and Opie and, Open and Anthony were on my side. Or not on my side. Anyway, so Open and Anthony were very respectful, as they always have been. Jimmy Norton, I don't know if he's a guest host on the show. I don't know if he's on the show every day. I, is he just another guest? He's a member of the show, yeah. Okay, but to me, I'd never seen him. They never explained anything. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Now, if Opie or Anthony were talking about it, it's a different thing. And they wouldn't say it either oh, because they're respectful oh. of their guests. No. Okay, there's the another Jimmy line. Norton show, he can say whatever the hell he wants. All right, okay, the there's Jimmy another Norton line. Show. Hey, Chris, we do have to run. And uh, you know what? I, I, I think you make some good... <laughs> no, no, we do. I mean, we have to, but you make no, good no, points. Right, another lie, then. Okay, so it was the opening of the show they could say what they want, but I thought the problem was that it was a bad joke. So I hope somebody else can at least understand the horse shit he is spewing about this. Yeah. All right, well, we should get... Uh, well, Joe. that'll make a few wrestling message boards, and then uh, people will bash you. Who cares? And, uh, I don't give a fuck. I know you don't. But let him. Let's go uh, get Chris Jericho back on the phone tomorrow or Wednesday. If he wants to come on, yeah. I would love to hear that explanation. It's the open. I understand that. It wasn't like I took over the interview. I fuck. I'm not a wrestling Ugh. fan. I said very little about that. Mm -hmm. And after after he, this is what really annoys me. And Opie and Anthony were very respectful. Afterwards, I even talked to him and said I, I would never have been disrespectful about your mother if I had known I was not trying to do. That. I was very uh, right. cool with him about that. I was not uh, arrogant or a douchebag to him in any way, shape, or form. But he doesn't mention that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't listen to the alpha male. Sorry. Sorry. Let's say hi to Shane in Tennessee. Shane? Hey, boys. How are you? Good. Jimmy, I don't think it was the point of it was a bad line or anything, because it was a good fucking line. The thing is, I think that he just got mad that he told you not to do it. The little guy smarted off to him. What shit he could do about it? So he got his panties in a while, and he just can't get over the fact that a smaller guy said, you know, what, he, what you did say to him. Very shit he can do about it. He's not used to that. He's a cocky fucking jock like they were in high school. And when you smart off to him in high school, they could beat you up. Not anymore. This is the fucking real world. So he can go fuck himself. He's How probably he's probably wrecked guys like you. Of course Just he has. Them. Of course oh. he has. He's a fucking douche. <laughs> and the problem, Frankus. <laughs> And, and again, it was, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what it is. He has wrecked guys like me. Of course he has. And he could now if he wanted to. I'm not coming off like I'm standing up to Jericho. Believe me, if he wanted to smack me in the face, I would shut my mouth. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Let's go to... I don't want to see that. Because I, I couldn't either. help. I don't either. And I wouldn't expect I would, you to. I would give the old, leave him alone. I wouldn't expect you to jump in. <laughs> Let's say hi to LJ from Boston. LJ. Hey, what's up? Hey, LJ. Um, I was just calling about the sleep apnea thing. I used to sleep oh. with a guy in college that had one of those creepy fucking masks. And, and what did it do for the sex life? 
Uh, nothing <laughs> at all. Did it hurt it? Well, no, like we would have sex and be like, okay, like go to roll over, and then uh, he'd be like, oh, what's I gonna put my mask on? And it was just creepy. Like you don't want to sleep with somebody that's like hooked up to a machine. Feel like they're like who? If you could describe the mask or who it might have looked like. <laughs> oh, what, like Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh, that's a funny one. Yeah. Uh, he just, I don't, it was just, I feel like he should have been like 80, not 22. Yeah, I, like, I'm, I I'm with LJ, man. It just seems weird. It is a little. That's why I don't want to get older and all of a sudden you like freaking have a colostomy bag or something. You're still trying to bang broads. <laughs> well, there's a well, big that's difference a different between story. a yes. little mask to doze off and but a shit saying, bag that you lug around to events. But I'm just saying, as you get older, there's other things that come into play. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like my dad <laughs> has a mask, and there's no way. Like, I, I don't. Know. I got out of that one pretty quick. Yeah. All right, LJ. Thank you. All right. Thanks, boys. All right, crazy, crazy show today. Than and Sam, Ron and Fez uh, doing this on theirs. Uh, this is kind of their storyline, or what? Sure. It was Than and Sam versus what? High Society. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just asking. Is it going to play out on their show? Where's um, Where's uh, Bronx Johnny? If yeah, if they come in today, we're ready to take them on. You never know if they're going to show up or not. No. Well, there was that a show. Oh, well, there he is. Okay. Bronx Johnny, what's up, bro? Hey, Pimpin. What do you got? So the big uh, the big showdown happened on Saturday on 202? Yeah, we showed up. Yeah, we did our thing Saturday night, man. All right. That went uh, pretty good. Is Ron and Fez like playing this out on their show? I don't know. I figure as such. Because you guys did more. <laughs> they did more on it on Friday, right? Yeah. Okay. Because the deal was, like, we asked uh, Than and Sam to come up with their five minutes of uh, Radio Gold, and you guys got five minutes? Yeah, no, we're doing that right now. All right, so Just it is going to play out on Ron and Fez probably later today. Ron and Fez, noon to three. Noon to three. three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. damn! Me too, man. <laughs> huh? Beat me to it. Noon Again? To yeah. Again? That should have been the first thing you said when you sat down. Dude, I'm so smoked You should have opened out. with that. I'm so smoked out of my mind, I barely know where I'm at right now. <laughs> I always don't remember that. Are you high? Not not high, just enjoying shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shout out to uh, Jay Moore, who does uh, his thing on Fox. Fox Sports. Sure. He, he called your show. He called the show yeah, he up. he called up. That felt real good, man. Was he was he giving you mad props and respect? He liked the show. I don't know if it was respect, just he liked the show. <laughs> <laughs> Take what I can hit. Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Sam, not impressed. I'm not I, here nah. to impress Sam. I'm here to impress fans and shit. If you go to the message boards, we got that. So Well, it all depends on which ones you go to, I guess. You got that <laughs> yeah, You go to basically all of them. We took that. Yeah? Is yeah. that true, Than? No, I, the only message board Sam? that we go to is uh, fanandsamfanclub.com. <laughs> <laughs> we swept it, so. Yeah, yeah they're pretty yeah, smart over there. Yeah. Five votes to none. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But th these guys did do something pretty funny because it started off with Than and Sam doing their show. And then at the end of their show, they made it sound like uh, the channel was going off the air for the night before, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. before High Society could, like, uh, do we have that clip? Yeah. Yeah, this is what these guys did at the end of their show on Saturday night. Good. Thanks for hoping, Anthony and Rana Fez, for bringing uh, our radio war in to the spotlight. Um, unfortunately, yeah. the, the channel is going to go dark after our show. They have to do some maintenance on the satellites or something. And after the performance that the High Society kids had on Ron and Fez, they didn't really want to go for it, so... They lost a lot of confidence. So unfortunately, uh, there will be no audio... Yes. ...going over this channel. <laughs> so there's probably no point staying tuned in. But thank you for listening to us. Thanks a lot. And see you next time. Wait for it. This concludes Wait for Saturday it. Night Virus. <laughs> you went with the tone. <laughs> oh, that's it, horrible. He was only on for 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> it's long enough. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure you got a few people <laughs> switched right away. Oh, you should have went for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really fuck him up. That's pretty funny. This concludes though. our broadcast day. All right, well, that's going to play out a little more on the Ron and Fez show, Than sure. and Sam versus High Society. It's really their thing that they started, so uh, tune in at, at noon to see how it plays out today, okay? All, All right. right. Are we ready for line of the day? Yes. I don't know. Are we? Hope so. Line of the day is brought to you by BodogFantasy.net. Free life scoring, stats, bios, and news that will help you win big this season in fantasy football. All at BodogFantasy.net. Here is a runner-up line of the day. 
Oh, this yeah. one's good too because I got the seven. It's uh, one eight hundred D U M B. Yeah. C U N M N N. Yeah. 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 Seven. N. And that's it. You don't need the last letter because you only no. need seven. So that one's good too. Exactly. Not it was good. good. You just, you know. That was a good line. Everybody was trying to figure out if it was going to get dumped out of it. <laughs> yeah. so. That's true. Yeah. yeah. BodogFantasy.net. Here's another runner up line of the day. I've heard it all before. How many did you do last year before you You're fat, decided stupid, to <laughs> irresponsible? Your father I left. believe it was <laughs> your father left. <laughs> Had to throw that one in, didn't you? I didn't. I just was adding to the list. Yeah. Hey, no drinking it. challenge, uh, December 7th. Mark your calendar. Uh, time for line of the day. Here it is. Here comes line of the day. Line of the day. Wait, are you shitting me? Please, it's God. Anything known, you see or hear. Yeah, they can hear. Wow, the Jews are running out of this building. <laughs> Wait, I, yeah, you like that? You like that? Is this doing it for you? Yeah, keep going, keep going. You gotta come for me? You gotta come for me? <laughs> Do it! Oh, God! Do it, do it. Yuck. Do it, oh, he do it. stinks of talking dirty. Yuck. Why is Flea's mom on the phone? Flea's mom, what's up? What? Um, I just wanted to say that people don't remember what you show or know what your show is about. And you've done jokes on miscarriages and I've cringed. And you made Jewish jokes and I cringed. You've cringed because you should have had one. <laughs> See, I, I even cringe when you make fun of my son. But I have to tell you that off the air, you guys are really, really nice. And people Thank you. don't know that. And, um, and we like, like your to- son. We like Flea. Your son. You're not, supposed, you're not supposed to say that on the air. Nah, right? I see he's a good boy. Nah, he's all right. Thank you, but thank you. But I just, I just get annoyed like when people like Chris Jericho or 